Welcome to Big Vile Opinion. Moderators, with my permission, any negativity in the chat should be hidden from this channel. This channel is a negativity-free channel, drama-free channel, and we are here to push the message out. We will not be distracted. So with my permission, any negativity in the chat should be hidden from this channel. Welcome to Big Vile Opinion Platform. And I just really want people to know, I don't, I, I, I appreciate anybody that's helping me. I appreciate anybody that's helping me. A lot of people have been, been there for me. I just don't want people going back and forth it's going uh, show. being mad at each other because it's one person show. did this for me and another person did that for me. That's what the devil wants. He wants to cause confusion. That's what these people want. They want to cause confusion. <clears throat> and confusion ain't going to do nothing but keep me in here. But the, the, but, but the, the real thing is... Awesome. Lifetime. As far as quick on lifetime. As far as lifetime is concerned. There are real people. Real women out here really being abused. Really missing. They're really missing. They're really chained up in basements. I've been in here four years. I haven't seen one person that was ever chained up in a basement come forth for anything. But I tell you one thing, before Lifetime came out, I was minding my business. I was in the studio. I was working with celebrities. I had tours. But when Lifetime came out, all of that went away. Meaning, before Lifetime came out, I had no charges pending against me. Nobody had went to a radio station or had went to, uh, I mean, a police station. It took a year to put together Lifetime. If all of the things they said I did on Lifetime were true, it only take a minute to go to a police station. But when there's a crime committed, you don't go make a movie on it. You go to the police station. Nobody had done that. Yo, 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 yo. What it do, what it do, what it do, man. Welcome to Big Vile Opinion Platform, man. And today we going live. We're going to dive in, man. Y'all see the title, R. Kelly Surviving the Hanker Surviving the Hankersons. Barry and Jomo, man. Barry and Jomo Hankerson. Also, man, we got people that's this this starting to jump ship when it comes to this R. Kelly fight. And uh, one thing about people that's been over here, uh, <clears throat> one thing about the people that's been in this sector, man, we we understand a lot of what has taken place in this sector. We not uh, we're not jumping on the bandwagon now that you know. Things are looking like it's turning. You know, we, we're not no bandwagoners. You know, so I want to uh, make that clear. So let's get let's get in here, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all hit that share button. I can feel this club, yeah. I can feel this drink, yeah. I can feel a good vibe coming over me. Oh, I, I can feel the party, yeah. It's somebody's birthday. Happy birthday. I can feel a groove, yeah. 
I feel the DJ. I can feel joy. I can feel trust around me. I can feel people. And I can feel the love. And it's all in the air tonight. And it's all in the air tonight. It's all in the air tonight. It's all in the air tonight. I can feel a high, yeah. and I can feel a shot, oh, I feel all the ladies in me, looking so hot, oh, I feel them on top, yeah. just like a good day, oh, it feels like everybody is happy, and it makes me feel great, oh, and it's all in the air yeah. tonight, yeah. and it's all in the air tonight, yeah. It's all in the air tonight. It's all in the air tonight. Oh, so come on, let's stop all this hate and let's stop celebrating. Life is too short for this drama, pain, and bad things. Let's have drinks and party up until we see the morning. And let's make a toast to change, cause I feel it's coming. It's all in the air tonight. Oh, it's all in the air tonight. Oh, it's all in the air tonight. I can Yo, 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 man. Shout out to everybody that's in here, man. Shout out to Jerico. What's up, Julia? Sir Miguel, what's going on? Bree, what's going on? The Bullies got it show 2.0. What's up? What's up? K baby, what's up? CC Black, what's going on? Renee, what's going on? Oh, yeah, man. Hopefully, today, you know, hopefully, I can bring y'all a good show today. Um, we gonna uh, we're gonna take a look at we're gonna take a look at some stuff, man. We're gonna take a look at some stuff. And uh it is a lot of it's a lot of people, you know. They're starting to look at this case, you know, quite different. It's a lot of people starting to look at this case, uh look at uh this case quite different. And the latest phone call from Mr. Kelly. The latest phone call from Mr. Kelly got a lot of people. Uh, it got a lot of people talking. It got a lot of people talking, man. So as y'all know, uh, as y'all know, hip hop uncensored. As y'all know, hip hop uncensored is a podcast that we've seen. Andrew Wyatt on uh, plenty of times. We've seen Andrew Wyatt visit uh, Hip Hop Uncensored. We we seen Andrew Wyatt go over there and get those guys interviews uh, multiple times. We see Andrew Wyatt go over and get those guys interviews. But the thing with me with Hip Hop Uncensored, those guys when all of the stuff first came out about R. Kelly, that platform was one of the platforms that. I feel that were that were really talking about you know Kells in a negative way. You know, I feel like there was one platform that was one of the platforms that was talking about uh you know talking about Kells in the situation with these ladies, you know, as if he really didn't have a chance. What's up with it, Angela? So, um, what I'm gonna do is, you know, I like to go back, you know, and it's it's no, it's no, uh, it's no, it, it it's no malice intent about you know about it, but I just want to show people that there are people out here that's that's changing their viewpoint. So to say,
<laughs> there are people out here, you know, changing their viewpoints. What's going on, Miss Cookie? And this is why, this is why it's so important to reserve judgment. This is why it's so important to reserve judgment when it comes to certain things. Cookie, what's going on? Darlene, what's going on? This is why you reserve your judgment because if you don't, because if you speak too soon, if you speak too soon about a situation that you hear, just like what we're hearing with P. Diddy, like if we're going to be out here saying, you know, free one person of uh, these accusations, and then when we hear accusations about another person, we're going to be saying lock that person up. It's kind of like, you know, you, you, it's like a double-headed sword, you know, it, it, it just, it just doesn't, you know, we, we stand on, we want to stand on the facts. We want to see the facts laid out. And even when we hear the accusers talking, just because the accusers are speaking, doesn't mean that the accusers are speaking facts. It doesn't mean that the accusers are telling the truth. Just because they come out and speak, you know, you still have to use your common sense, as Robert say. Use your common sense. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Use your common sense. Um, we look, we gonna we're gonna take a look at Joe Mo Hankerson. We're gonna take a look at Barry Hankerson. You know, because a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff, man, when you look at Barry Hankerson, man, that Barry, Barry Hankerson, I'm telling you, man, when you look up, when you look up a lot of information regarding Barry Hankerson and a lot of people that Barry Hankerson has worked with, when you look up the information, man, Barry Hankerson has, he has messed over a lot of people. He messed over a lot of artists. I mean, he wasn't even a good manager to his wife. You know what I'm saying? He he messed over his own wife. Like, this guy has literally, like, most of these artists that he worked with, like, he, he was really, you know, blackmailing these artists in order to take control of their careers in their finances this guy was really black ball he, he was blackmailing his artists so that he would keep control of their finances man do you think kells was the only artist that you know he tried blackmailing do y'all really do y'all really believe that kells was the the only artist that he blackmailed like that but Kells was probably the only artist who was willing to stand up against him. Kells was probably the only artist who was willing to say, you know, fuck you, I don't want to deal with you. Kells was probably the only artist who said, I don't give a damn, I don't want to fuck with you no more. But I believe the the, the, the way that Barry came out to Kells, I believe he came out to a lot of his artists in that fashion. Some of these, a lot of them artists probably didn't want to deal with the backlash that come with standing on your, you know, standing on your own, standing your ground. So they just gave in. What's up, Miss Carla? So the actions of Barry Hankerson wasn't no what they, they weren't new tactics that he were using. He were he was using tactics that he was used to using, but he was just used to people. Uh, you know, being submissive, you no know, giving in, giving up, not fighting back. R. Kelly was the artist who said, "You know what? I'm not gonna allow you to hold me back. I'm not gonna allow you to threaten me. I'm not gonna allow you to intimidate me. I'm gonna stand up for myself." And and Barry, you know, he he couldn't he couldn't deal with the fact that R. Kelly was one of those artists that he didn't intimidate. You know, you hear about the artists talking about, you know, him burning up their cars and threatening them, different shit like that.
but you don't hear, you know, I I've heard that him and Kells had a, a fist, a fist fight. You know, they got they got they threw blows, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Kells wasn't Kells wasn't afraid of Barry. And Barry understood that. So it seems like Barry said, Well, you know what? I know I can't beat you in a physical fight. I'm gonna beat you in a mental fight, you know, a legal fight. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you legally, you know what I'm saying? And and this is this is something that Barry did. Yeah, man. So I hope everybody's having a good day. Hope everybody having a good day. No eclipse today. What's up, Miss Carla? How everything going with you? Cookie, how everything going with you? Everybody in the chat, how how's everything going with y'all today? Hope you all having a blessed day out there today. <clears throat> but let's take a look back at this is around the time when Mr. Kelly was first going through when Mr. Kelly was first going through some of his troubles legally. That's right, man. Get ready. July 10th, the big three is back. Make sure you guys go check it out. You already know where to find it at, man. CBS, Triller, and FI. T E shout out to the big three, our newest sponsor here at Hip Hop News Uncensored. All right, let's jump right in to the content today. We all know about R. Kelly, how long he's been in prison, and what he's awaiting right now. Well, he got some really, really dire news today. It's not good at all. Well, one thing may be good. They're actually pushing his trial back to august the 18th it was supposed to actually get underway very very soon they pushed it back so another you know what a uh, month you know some change you know he will be you know going to trial and pretty much on trial for his life man this, this might be the end of r kelly i really don't see him getting out you know of this situation here also as if that wasn't bad news they hit it with even worse news the judge slammed down the hammer and once again, denied R. Kelly's request for bail. They're not going to let him fight from the outside. Now, Judge Donnelly denied his renewed attempt at bail, arguing that R. Kelly still is a danger to the community and they consider him a flight risk. Now, that's a crazy situation. Now, if you guys remember, though, remember the lawyer, Michael Avenatti, who kind of got this thing popping and rolling again, where he said a lot of accusers came to him. He was actually sentenced today in the federal prison to 30 months for defrauding Nike. So that guy, you know, who came out, you know, um, on R. Kelly, you know, and kind of got, you know, the snowball tumbling downhill, you know, did get his sentence today, and he's going to do 30 months, 30 months in the feds. That's kind of a slap on the wrist, if you really think about it, um, considering what he did, but... I don't know. I, you know, this one's going to be rough. And then when you know, a lot of times when you get into the system, when they want you and they got you, they got you. But I'm interested to see, you know, the defense that R. Kelly's team puts up. And uh, we're going to keep you guys covered through that whole situation as it goes down now. They pushed it back to August the 18th. And that was per request of Kelly's legal team. I guess they need some more time to kind of get some documentation, get some things together and um, try to set up a W and try to win, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think in the comment section about this? You think R. Kelly wins this time? It's, it's two times again the charm. You know, one time was the charm. He won, you know, back, I think, in the early 90s, um, or late 90s, early 2000s, but I, I don't think he's going to have that luck again. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys listening to Hip Hop News Uncensored in this special. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. He say, <clears throat> I don't think, he say, I don't think he's going to have that luck again. He say, I don't think he's going to have that luck again. How is some someone winning a case considered luck? You know what I'm saying? You win a case. You win your case. You win your case based off of the evidence. You win your case based off of the facts. 
You win your case based off of evidence and facts, not luck. Man, do people understand? Do people even understand what luck is? What do it mean to have luck? You know, you don't have luck inside of a courtroom. You know, it's, it's either the facts going to show that you're innocent or the either the information is going to show you're innocent or the information is going to show you're guilty. I mean, it ain't a such thing as luck when it comes to the system now the way that this now the way that the system operate it depends on you know you know it's it's it depends on you know certain certain elements that's involved who you got representing you what type of judge i mean but to say this man got lucky his first time how did he get lucky the first time now answer me this how did he get lucky the first time in the first trial? And then they brought the same charges back in 2022 in Chicago with Dale McDavid and Milton June Brown. And he got found not guilty again on obstruction of justice. So how is that considered luck? How is that considered luck? But hip hop uncensored is a platform that we frequently see Andrew Wyatt on. But these guys early on, when the allegations were coming out about uh uh Kells, they were like they they was dead set that you know the man did these things, you know, he was guilty of these things, you know, he wasn't getting out no time soon, it was over with for him, you know. You know, they want to interview anybody who knew him. They wanted to interview anybody who was close to him. They want to interview the person who took out R. Kelly's trash. They wanted to interview the person who walked the dog. They wanted to interview who dropped off the groceries. I mean, these people were out here chasing these interviews, asking people questions too. I mean, come on, man. Come on, y'all, y'all, they, they, people chase interviews trying to get people to talk negative about, you know, Mr. Kelly just to, you know, bolster their views up. But it's crazy how that, it's crazy how that works though, because this is why it's important to reserve judgment. This is why you should reserve judgment. Because when you jump the gun saying somebody's guilty, I'm trying to show y'all something before we get this show started, man. Let's see. Just listen, y'all. I want y'all to hear. This is some of the shit that these people were saying. Yeah. came over. They seen a dude on top of R. Kelly punching him in his head and punching him in his body. And the prison guard came over and pretty much sprayed him with pepper spray to um, get them apart from R. Kelly. Um, we think about this beat down that R. Kelly allegedly got, and he almost, you know, got stabbed with a pen as well. And um, the dude, the attacker, saying, look, the government made me do it. What's your thoughts on that, Sam? I don't believe the government made him do it. Not in this statement. Now, I'm, I'm a, I love a good conspiracy theory just like anybody else. But in this situation, if the government made him do that, the government will also shut him up. 
he being solitary <laughs> somewhere, he wouldn't be able to make statements. I think he may have done this because he sees R. Kelly's jacket like everybody else. Um, some people love R. Kelly. Most people do. And I'm sure he's in there singing songs and is a fan to a lot of people, but other people hate it. Mm-hmm. They don't like him. They don't like what he does. And a lot of people, if you know anything about jail, you know what they do. They don't like what he does. What What is it that he does? People are still speculating. People are still trying to figure out what is it that he did. They don't like what he does. And a lot of people, if you know anything about jail, you know what they do to pedophiles, rapists, and people who harm children. There's only one rule in there. Man, this man was, was not a pedophile, never convicted of this. But this is the thing. This is the thing that we seeing, but these are you see. I'm telling you, man. So he's in there singing songs, and is a fan to a lot of people, but other people hate it. He wouldn't be able to make statements. I think he may have done this because he sees R. Kelly's jacket like everybody else. Um, some people love R. Kelly, most people do, and I'm sure he's in there singing songs, and is a fan to a lot of people, but other people hate it. Mm-hmm. They don't like him. They don't like what he does. And a lot of people, if you know anything about jail, you know what they do to pedophiles, rape. This, people who harm children it's only one rule in there when it comes to them lifers so this isn't surprising i don't wish it on anybody because as as of right now he is still um innocent till proven guilty he hasn't gone through trial and all uh-huh. this is alleged but you're saying he's innocent now you got to make this make sense y'all make this make sense you say all this shit you said at first then you you say that just to turn around and say well, he's innocent. He hasn't been to trial. But how can you make this type of statement here? But in this situation, if the government made him do that, the government will also shut him up. He being in solitary <laughs> somewhere, he wouldn't be able to make statements. I think he may have done this because he sees R. Kelly's jacket like everybody else. Um, some people love R. Kelly. Most people do. And I'm sure he's in there singing songs. And his- Now, listen to this statement. Now, he's making this statement based this statement here. The statement that he's about to make, he's making this statement based off of how he feels. Um, some people love R. Kelly. Most people do. And I'm sure he's in there singing songs and is a fan to a lot of people. But other people hate it. Mm-hmm. They don't like him. They don't like what he does. And a lot of people, if you know anything about jail, you know what they do to pedophiles, rapists, and people who harm children. There's only one rule in there when it comes to them lifers. So now y'all heard what he just, he just gave the man a whole jacket. He just gave he just gave this man a whole jacket. And when when we talk in jail, when you talk about jacket, that means he just gave this man a whole slew of charges. And then he turned around and say this. This isn't surprising. I don't wish it on anybody because as as of right now, he is still um innocent till proven guilty. He hasn't gone. <laughs> but you just said this man, the R word, the P word. Then you turn around and say he, you know, you know how it is in prison. They don't like people that come in there with those R words and P words on their jackets. But you know he's innocent until proven guilty. Come on, man. I'm telling you, man. It, it, it's easy for people to jump on the bandwagon and go along with the get along. When you see, like, it was popular for people to come out and create platforms that were talking negative about Mr. Kelly, talking negative about the uh, charges, saying, you know, believe all these women listening to the... I mean, this is why, like, I reserve my thoughts when it comes to a lot of things. Because I don't want to find myself... I don't want to find myself having to come back two, three years later saying that, you know what, I was wrong. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Or, or, or I did, I got new info. Now, this, these, these interviews that these guys is doing, this is from, this is three years ago. Now, I'll ask y'all a question. I'm going to ask y'all something. Just from listening to those two clips for the ones that's been in here, how do you all feel about that that platform? Do y'all think that platform, 
you know, was giving Mr. Kelly the benefit of the doubt three years ago? Do you think that platform was, you know, do you think that platform was helping three years ago? Four years ago? If you go back through the history of that platform, most of the videos about Mr. Kelly are negative. Well, they would they would give their negative takes, but then they would turn around and say, well, he's innocent to prove guilty. But we fast forward. Let's fast forward to recent. Let's see what they got to say lately. Let's see what they got to say lately. Right. Right, CC Black. I agree. Let's listen to Now let's listen to how their story has changed as of today. Seven days ago. Level. Trust me. Click that link at the top line. If you do this, you do that. You exercise your power too much. This could happen. It looks like that's beginning to happen right now with Diddy. And ironically, R. Kelly, which I want to play real quick, actually was talking about that as well, which is on like a 30 second clip. Let me play that on Clubhouse. Right. It's crazy. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers gonna be out there laughing and making making comedian jokes and doing all the other shit on the radio and everything else, but they ass could be next. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's what's so yeah, fucked up about it. They're so stupid. They're so stupid they don't even realize the move that's going on. I mean it's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean that's why I don't believe none of this shit. I'm no, not telling you funny. Now y'all just heard what he said. He said that's why I don't believe none of the shit. He didn't specify a particular thing or a particular uh, 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 institution. He didn't specify just, uh, he didn't say, I don't believe none of these women. He said, I don't believe any of the shit. He said, I know, he, he gonna go on and elaborate, but he didn't, he didn't say, I don't believe none of these women. He didn't say I don't believe none of these accusers. He didn't say I don't believe none of none of that. He said I don't believe any of the shit you hear in the media. But I'm gonna let it go. He's talking about the media when he says this. Yo, we just changed the game with this one, introducing AG number two, the newest groundbreaking. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Motherfuckers gonna be out there laughing. Level and it happened right like a 30 second clip. Let me play that on Clubhouse. Right. Lord. It's crazy. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers gonna be out there laughing and making, making comedian jokes and doing all the other shit on the radio and everything else, but they ass could be next. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's what's so yeah, fucked up about it. They're so stupid. They don't even realize the move that's going on. I mean, it's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that's why I don't believe none of the shit. I mean, no, you can I tell me I'm funny. Up, you can tell me about anybody or not. You can tell me the, on the news the weather is, is the sky is blue. I'm not gonna believe the shit, no. He said, "You can, you, you." He said, "I don't believe none of this shit. You could rather it's puff anybody, anybody, anybody." He said, "Anybody." He said, "I don't believe none of this shit." He said, "You can tell me about anybody, whether it's the news, anybody. I don't believe none of this shit." But when people out here debunking the, you know, breaking down the phone call, debunking the phone call. Saying that he he he's bashing accusers and this, that, and the third. The man just telling you the way his belief system is set up based off of what he went through. He don't believe shit no more unless he see for himself. 
What up, Dwayne Elvis? Thank you, thank you, Dwayne Elvis. Shout out to Dwayne Elvis, man. Welcome, welcome to the platform, brother. Welcome to the platform. But see, people take this man's words and, and, and twist them up and try to make it personal and make it personal when the man is speaking in general. He's speaking in general. Do y'all hear a personal attack in what he's saying? He's speaking in general. He say, I don't believe any of the shit. I went through the shit. I, I see for myself what they done to me. Mary, what's going on? DV, what's up? The man say, I know what I went through. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just want to try to just... I want y'all to hear how this podcast, how they all, all of a sudden have changed their their tone. Because I'm in it now. Know what they did. That's interesting. He was talking with Wack 100, like you said, on Clubhouse. Yeah. I ain't hear the clip to now. It's my first time actually hearing it. Yeah. Damn. I, I, heard, about, I heard about it, but I didn't hear listen to it. I kind of, oh, like, damn. What's your um, thoughts on that? You know what I'm saying? I don't believe none of it. That sounds like some real nigga shit, bro. And he said, he pretty much like said, look, it's going to happen to me. I want y'all to really pay attention. Now, y'all heard, everybody in the chat, y'all heard what these guys, y'all heard what these guys were saying three years ago. If y'all heard what these guys were saying three years ago, put a one in the chat before we, before we, before we reveal how they are talking now. If y'all if y'all heard what these guys were saying three years ago, four years ago, two years ago, a year ago about Mr. Kelly, calling him the P word, calling him the uh, R word, you know, saying he was uh assaulting uh young girls and all this shit. Y'all heard how they was talking in the past. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a dive forward and see what's going on now. That sounds like some real nigga shit, bro. And he said he pretty much like he said that sound like some real nigga shit. That sound like some real nigga shit, bro. What's on that? You know what I'm don't believe none of it. That sound like some real nigga shit, bro. And he said he pretty much like said, "Look, it's going to happen to me." Yeah. Woo! That didn't sound like okay. So he's in jail. He's in it now, right? Yeah, Rock Kelly's yeah. at the bottom. At the bottom. That didn't sound like a man that was lying or that was in a situation where he did some vile things. Like, okay, I want y'all to listen to how this guy from that phone call, from that phone call. <laughs> from that phone call I want y'all to listen now this is the same guy who said who said this is the same guy who just said when guys go to jail and they got that jacket on their back and that jacket consists of being the R word or the P word the you know the pedal or you know the R word or abusing young women, X, Y, and Z. This same guy. He said it's it's hard for guys like that in prison. He's but then he say, well, he haven't been he haven't been to trial yet, so I'm gonna reserve. You know, he, he gonna reserve the innocent. But you call you said this man, you called him a pedo. You called him a rapist. You said he was assaulting young women. But now listen to what this guy is saying in 2024. That was lying or that was to me. Yeah. Woo. That didn't sound like, okay, so he's jail. He's in it now, right? Mark yeah, Kelly's yeah. at the bottom. At the bottom. That didn't sound like a man that was lying or that was in a situation where he did some vile things like, okay. And, and I'm just trying to get into the mind of a, of a person that did some wrong shit and got caught. 
you would think there would be a little more contrition and just pain and just, damn, I fucked up. Him sitting behind bars and realizing it. Yep. That man in his heart knows he ain't do shit wrong. And that's the scary part. Ooh. That's the scary part. Now, we can argue. Now, y'all heard what he just said? Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear what he just said? This is the same man three years ago who was putting the jacket on R. Kelly's back. This is the same man who was putting the jacket on R. Kelly's back three years ago. That sounds like some real nigga shit, bro. And he said he pretty much like said, "Look, it's going to happen to me." Yeah. Woo! That didn't sound like okay. So he's in jail. He's in it now, right? Yeah, Rock Kelly's yeah. at the bottom. At the bottom. That didn't sound like a man that was lying or that was in a situation where he did some vile things. Like okay, and and I'm just trying to get into the mind of a of a person that did some wrong shit and got caught. You would think there would be a little more contrition and just pain and just. Damn, I fucked up. Him sitting behind bars and realizing it. Yep. That man in his heart knows he ain't do shit wrong. And that's the scary part. Ooh. He say, he said that man in his heart. He said that man in his heart know he haven't done shit wrong. And that's the scary part. This is the same guy who three years ago was putting a jacket on this man. This is the same guy three years ago who was calling this man a pedo, a rapist, a child abuser. The same guy. Three years later, he said, listening to that audio, he said, man, that don't sound like nobody who, who have done something. Exactly, goddess. Exactly, goddess. Shout out to BV. What's up, Miss Milani? Robert sound he sounded the same way he sounded on when he spoke on Gail King. Exactly. Exactly. That's why they should not have said nothing about R. Kelly, but they were just following the leader. Exactly. It was popular to bash this man. It was popular to drag this man. That shit was popular back then. But see, <laughs> YouTube is your resume. Pain and just, damn, I fucked up. Him sitting behind bars and realizing it. Yep. That man in his heart knows he ain't do shit wrong. And that's the scary part. Ooh. That's the scary part. Now, we can argue in a, this debate of going to the, to, to the cows come home. And I truthfully don't know, because you hear about Aaliyah and you, 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 seen, you talk about the videotape and there's been... There's a little more concrete evidence on R. Kelly than there is on Diddy, but at the same... But when you talk about Aaliyah, when you talk about this tape, bro, why do y'all... Why is that the only thing that these people who do talk about Mr. Kelly in the way that they... They don't talk about Neil, Pauline, Jane Doe, number five, Faith, Holly Calhoun. They don't talk, you don't hear nothing. It always, the only... Con only thing that they can revert back to is a Leah in the tape. You got to make that make sense, bro. You got to make this shit make sense. The man has never been charged with nothing dealing with a Leah. You got Demetrius Smith on the stand who testified that this man had nothing to do with bribing the official in order to get this government ID, but they still charged them with bribing the official anyway. 
come on, man. The man, the man is speaking the way he's speaking because he know that he's innocent. In time, I'm not sitting out there and acting like he did or didn't do anything because I don't know. Right. That didn't sound like a man that was guilty to me. That sounded like a man that got railroaded. And <laughs> did y'all hear that? I'm not sitting out there and acting like he did or didn't do anything because I don't know. Right. That didn't sound like a man that was guilty to me. That sounded like a man that got railroaded. Kelly in there is on Diddy. But at the same time, I'm not sitting out there and acting like he did or didn't do anything because I don't know. Right. That didn't sound like a man that was guilty to me. That sounded like a man that got railroaded and he understands what's going on. And if Kelly in there is on Diddy. But at the same time, I'm not sitting out there and acting like he did or didn't do anything because I don't know. Right. That didn't sound like a man that was guilty to me. That sounded like a man that got railroaded and he understands what's going on. And if you think because your name is Diddy, if you think your name is Jay-Z, don't matter. And you said something, though, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Yeah. Is this the reason why? And I don't know what I think about Jay-Z being radio silent, but it's out there, so I'm going to ask you. Him being killing in there is on Diddy, but at the same time, I'm not sitting out there and acting like he did or didn't do anything because I don't know. Right. That didn't sound like a man that was guilty to me. That sounded like a man that got railroaded and he understands what's going on. And if you think <laughs> that don't sound like a man that was guilty to me, he said that sound like a man who got railroaded and he understand what happened. <laughs> oh boy, the tides is turning. I'm telling y'all, the tides is turning. But come on down, man. Come on down. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Let's get it set up. Shout out to Hip Hop Uncensored, man, for being real and keeping it real. Shout out to Hip Hop Uncensored for being real and keeping it real. But let's go. Man, y'all saw the title, man. Surviving. Barry. And Joe Mo. Hankerson. Let's go. What up, Lex? Man, make sure y'all hit that like button for you, boy. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. Make sure y'all hitting that share button. Let's go. We finna introduce Jomo Hankerson to the live, man. Let's go. Eight forty-one right now. It is Ryan Kevin Show. Uh, Iggy's fancy. Oh, nice! I YouTube. like that song. hundred million views. A lot of views. I like that. Now you know we always talk about the uh, videos mm -hmm. and some favorite videos. Yeah. You know my all-time favorite. About I know. Band. Okay, remember the time. Yeah. But uh, Aaliyah made some great videos. What up with it, Sir Miguel? Happy. What's going on? I just wanted to chime in real quick, man. While I'm driving. I want people to really pay attention. Not only to what Kel said, but mind you, if you look at everything that's going on, it's going to drop down to the common man. Keep in mind, when they use that man, they're basically telling you, fly a girl out and see what happens. Fly a young lady out and see what happens. Number two, you have to be wise enough to understand a lot of people are not going to give people credit because of social media. Somebody can be saying, somebody can be telling the truth, but people will still bash them and say they're lying. Right. What you played on, what you played on, on yesterday when he had the interview with Gary, what did he say? He said, he said I got the truth. Was, I got the truth. <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody else got more sense. Yeah. 
He did. But if I, if I know the truth of who I am and what I do, it don't matter what you say about me, because technically, you really wasn't there. You don't know me. That's what he was telling uh -huh. me. But see, exactly. if you notice, they started with the superstars. You'll see a little, you know, neighborhood drug dealers here and there. But trust me when I tell you, they trying to come after the everyday average dude. Because what you've seen over the last few years, dudes bragging, oh, I flew a girl out. I did this, I did that. You think they ain't going to use that against you? And guess what, though, Unc? What, what, what being flewed out was just popular in 2021? Exactly. exactly. That's it. This shit was trending, getting flewed out. Exactly. They was marketing that shit. They was selling shirts and all type of shit. And mind you, I don't care what people do on OnlyFans, but that's another gateway to get brothers for blind chicks out on OnlyFans. Watch and see what I can. Because if you got a bag and you want to spend, trust me, some people going to show up. Huh? I'm just saying. You ain't got to believe me. Just watch how everything moves. Watch how everything is moving. That's all I wanted to say, nephew. God damn it. Okay, uh, well then, we finna, we finna chop this video up. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be uh, listening. I'm be watching it and watching the chat too. Okay. Okay. Like. Her life mm -hmm. is now about to be put on the small screen, and everybody's not happy with that. Mm -hmm. And in the studio, and and he doesn't do interviews. When he came in, he came and sat and sat on the sofa. I know, right? <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he sat on the sofa because he's like, I'm used to sitting on the sofa because that's not my thing. But uh, Jomo Hankerson, who is a cousin and the president of Aaliyah's Black Ground Records, is, is speaking out. Why, you know, first of all, thanks for coming on the show, man. We know you got a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me. Now, why did you decide... And, and why are people so mad about Lifetime doing this movie? Well, I just, we, we feel like it's really not the right platform. Um, Aaliyah was a legend. She was a, a hugely influential artist on our culture. Right. You still see it. Drake talks about how much influence she had. Uh, Seven Streeter, her, her first single was very reminiscent of Rock the Boat. Mm -hmm. So she's still having an effect on music right now. And I think that she deserves the treatment of a walk the line or a what's love got to do with it, a big major movie that's so a major movie part picture, of picture, right? The culture as well. You know, we we quote lines from Walk the Line. We should quote lines from Aaliyah's life story. And so when when you guys heard about this this picture, mm -hmm. like how did you hear about it? It was like a like a on a Hollywood uh, report. We, we yeah, we saw the press release like a lot of people. did um you know me and at black Round, we released all of Aaliyah's albums and uh so we control the masters for the entire the entire catalogs so right when we saw the movie coming no, no one had come to us for any music and mm -hmm. if they had, did a deal with the publishing right, company right. so you know to me that's like crazy something okay, for <laughs> Okay, we cut it. How, yes. how do they do? How does that work? Well, we control the, the actual master, so that's right. the song with Aaliyah on, on it. Right. But uh, on our publishing company, so Static wrote a lot of the songs, and he would control a lot of the publishing. Not all, right. The Timberland and Missy stuff. Uh, Warner Chapel uh, mm -hmm. controls that, so uh, they were able to kind of do a deal saying for Lifetime the license the records uh, for that. And that's how they're, right. they're able to recut those records. All right, we're going to come back and we're going to ask you about people trying to use verses and putting mm -hmm. that on songs and your feelings about that and some other stuff that's coming up. All right, 845 right now. We got more coming up. 912 right now.
has not done an interview in 14 oh, years. Wow. That's how serious it is. This part right here, y'all, is what I want y'all to really pay attention to because they're about to start asking him questions. And this man hadn't done an interview in over 14 years, you know, and it's been and it had been 14 years since the passing of Aaliyah. So I want y'all to listen, just look at how look at his body language and how he uh responds to some of the questions that he's being asked or whatnot. Is about this picture being made. I know. Okay. But you know what, Jomo, the, the, the question that keeps coming up and what's making all of the rounds is this whole relationship with uh, R. Kelly. And, and you said it off air that, you know, you managed R. Kelly with your company for how many years? 14. For 14 years. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, obviously Lifetime is using this to help pre-promote this movie. Yeah. How do you explain all of this controversy? Because you said when Aaliyah was on top of the world and then this happened, did they get married? Well, um, I let that come out. Did y'all see that? Who caught that? If you caught that, anybody in the chat, if y'all caught that, put, put caught that. If y'all caught that when he asked that question, when he got ready to speak, did y'all see how he had to catch himself? Because the truth down there ran out of his mouth. What up, Tyon? What's good with it? The truth almost came out of his mouth. He was about to start talking too fast. He had to catch himself. He had to catch himself. Man, watch this. He it looked like he was gonna say there was some bullshit. Let's take a look. Is using this to help pre-promote this movie. Yeah. How do you explain all of this controversy? Because you said when Aaliyah was on top of the world and then this happened, did they get married? Well, um, I let that come out. <laughs> hey, he, it's like he hit the Rams Allen, goddamn it! Ooh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, ah! Uh. <laughs> it's like he said, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> that boy, that boy, look like he had trap gas or something, man. Ah, uh, mm, ah, uh, mm. <laughs> Man, it looked like he had trap gas. Mm. Ah, mm. Ah. Ooh, God, dog. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it, was like he, it was like they caught him on guard with that question, man. He wasn't ready for it. <laughs> oh, that boy said, mm. Ah, mm. Ah. Ooh. I'm going to have to let that come out. <laughs> he wasn't ready for that question right away. I guess he was planning on answering that somewhere along in the show. You know what I'm saying? Dude jumped right to that question. Shit. Joe Mo said, hell no, <laughs> not today. <laughs> Help pre-promote this movie. Yeah. How do you explain all of this controversy? Because you said when Aaliyah was on top of the world and then this happened, did they get married? Well, um, I let that come out in the in the in the movie. It, it won't be in this movie, but it'll come out. So why, if now I'm just being realistic, y'all. I'm being realistic right now, bro. I'm gonna be realistic right now, y'all. Just being realistic now. Being realistic now. If. If my cousin, if a grown man married my underage cousin, 
and someone asked me a question about it, I'm like, if I didn't have nothing to hide or I didn't have any involvement or it wasn't no shady shit going on, and if it actually was what they told us it was, I was like, hell yeah, man, that old grown-ass nigga married my cousin, man. He was down bad for that shit. What is the suspense behind telling what went on? What is the goddamn, what is so pertinent about saying, man, hell no, that dude, and man, that, you know, what is it about if he did it, man? I'm like, hell yeah, man. Man, that's crazy. That grown ass nigga married my little cousin X Y Z. Man, that was bogus. That was fucked up. But the simple fact that he like, I, I, I ain't gonna speak on it. Are you serious? That's the problem. Everybody in the world is speaking on it, but the people who were there, who were involved in the shit. They the ones who are making this shit like, uh, 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 you know, you guess who got the right answer. You know what I'm saying? What you say? You know what I'm saying? They making this shit like a uh, wheel of fortune or a uh, 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 a jeopardy or some shit. Every time, people, even even Demetrius Smith, even Barry, even Man, the son, when they asked about did she and Mr. Kelly get married, that is simple. A yes or simply or no. When you want to put, they study want to keep speculation going. This shit, 94, when 24. So 94, 94, 14, 24, 2004, 94, 2000, 10, 20, 30 years later. Yeah, I'm, I'm counting on my fingers. 30 years later. Thirty years later. And you all are asked a question. Simple. Simple. Well, Aaliyah say, okay, hold on. Let's see what Aaliyah say. What Aaliyah say? What Aaliyah say? Aaliyah say, Vi. Okay, let's see. Let's see what Aaliyah say. Let's see what Aaliyah said before we go back to that. Why Aaliyah never avoided answering this question? At least she said no. Dedicate that sock to the ex boyfriend. This is one of the personal right. thing, was it? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a personal experience for me. Okay. Tell me, because yeah, I'm sure. I got a lot of enrichment that you call all the time, and I do it. <laughs> Let's talk about something that went on in your life that a lot of people are not sure of. They have rumors. Got you right here on video connection. You can dispel all the rumors. What was the situation between you and ex producer Robert Kelly, aka R. Kelly? Well, what do you want to know? You, you uh, a lot of folks stuck you all married and. Been annulled and well, was your boyfriend, now husband, and all of a sudden they were like there was nothing going on. Well, to let all my fans know that I have a right, you know, they support me, right. so I'm here to let them know I'm not married. Um, that was a rough time for me to yeah. be honest and be real for me to get through a very tumultuous period, but you know, I got through it, right. and um, you know, my mom has helped me today, and I got through it. Come <laughs> <laughs> the support of my family, right. the Lord in my life, number one. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of support for my fans. And I want to thank them because they sent me beautiful letters and they didn't care about what was going on. They loved me for my music. And um, they inspired me to put my on to the second album. And I'm back now. It's like my song says, Are You Ready? Are you I'm ready? Back. As not that I have a right, you know, they support me. Right. So I'm here to let them know I'm not married. 
um, that was a rough time for me to be honest and be real. And she was for real. It was a rough time for her. She's serious. That was a rough time for her because a lot of people were blaming her and saying that, you know, she she acted a certain way or she carried herself herself a certain way. She portrayed to be a certain way. You know, a lot of people, you know, it was a rough time for her. But why she never avoided answering that question? She never avoided answering that question. But if you ask Jomo, if you ask Barry, they make it seem like that is the forbidden fruit to answer. Fourteen years. Wow. Did when Aaliyah was on top of the world and then this happened, did they get married? Well, um, I let that come out in the in the in the movie. It, it won't be in this movie, but it'll come Jomo. out eventually one day. Fourteen years. Wow. <laughs> did fourteen years. You've never done this. Uh huh. I remember talking about it on the radio. You know what it is, Ryan? It is 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 not my place or the forum for me to really get into that. Okay. Um, so that's mm-hmm. that's why I just beg off that. Why was it such a, a, a big deal, you think, for the, the, the public? Mm-hmm. Because even nowadays it's still mm-hmm. controversial. Yeah. We think about that. That's like one of the things we think about when yeah. we think of her. Yeah. Well, y'all gotta blame the uncle and y'all gotta blame the cousin who's sitting right on side of y'all for y'all still having to think about it why don't y'all put the blame on the people who who need the blame put on versus trying to put the blame on mr kelly why don't y'all hold these people accountable joe mo hankerson barry hankerson why aren't y'all holding these people accountable why aren't they being held accountable? It's easy to hold Mr. Kelly uh, accountable. It's easy to blame Mr. Kelly. That's the easy thing to do. Y'all say years and years and we still dealing with this. Years and years and we still have questions with this. But the people that can answer the question is sitting right there. And what do he do? Mm, 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 mm. Ah. Oh. I don't want to speak on that. I don't want to speak on that. It's easy for that question to be answered. These are the people who were there. But Joe Moe's scared because he know what his daddy did to his mama. He know what his daddy did to the Braxton's. He know what his daddy did to numerous artists that were signed to his dad. He done seen his dad didn't work. He done seen his dad at work. He done seen the shit that his daddy do. So his loyalty in his dad loyalty wasn't to Aaliyah family. They loyalty wasn't to Aaliyah. They loyalty is to them. Shit crazy, man. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a at the time, um, it was she was huge, he was huge. Right. Um, um you had big business uh and, and faith were together. Mm-hmm. Right. So now, now listen, y'all. I want y'all to listen to what he said, and why would he throw that comparison out there? Why would he throw that comparison out there? She said, he said, Kels was big at the time. When he said he was big at the time, she was big at the time. Then you had Biggie. Then you had Faith. So he's giving you, he's kind of giving you the mindset of how they set this stage with Mr. Kelly and Aaliyah. Okay.
one of the things we think about when yeah. we think of her. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a at the time, um, it was she was huge, he was huge. Right. Um, um you had Biggie the business uh and, and Faith were together. Mm -hmm. Right. It was a lot of things going on like that in the business at that time. So I think it was just a, 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 a indicative. He said it was a lot of things like that going on in the business. But if he married her, what would, if he married her because he was in, now look, come on y'all, follow me now, follow me now, follow me when I, when I, when I go here y'all, Follow me when I go here, y'all, because I'm going to make it make sense. If he married her because he liked her, what would what was going on in the music business matter to the situation that they were involved in? What does what was going on in the music industry during that time what would that matter to the situation that they had going on if he in fact liked it her so he's telling us without telling us that it was a publicity stunt to go along with what was going on in the industry at the time they just decided to take it a step further with saying, let's make like a fake license. They wanted to be the first one to say that this is the first rap. This is the hip hop R&B couple to get married. So I guess they wanted R. Kelly and Aaliyah to be the, be the ones to get married. Then next thing you know, you're going to have big in faith. Then you're going to have all these other uh rappers and singers starting to get married after this fact see they wanted they wanted kels and Aaliyah to be the catalyst to jump start uh these 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 artists marrying each other but he's telling us without telling us because if he married Aaliyah because he liked her it wouldn't have mattered what was going on in the music industry during that time period it would have had nothing to do with it. But the simple fact that he said it was just the climate of the music industry at that time, you had Biggie and Faith, you had uh, Jay-Z and um, Foxy Brown. He's telling us what went on without telling us. think about when yeah. we think of her yeah absolutely it was it was a at the time um it was she was huge he was huge right um, um you had big business uh and and faith were together it right was, it was a lot of things going on like that in, in the business at that time so i think it was just a a, a, a indicative of of the times of the chemistry. now you ask yourself now now y'all ask yourself this but what y'all just heard him say, it was a lot of things like that going on in the business at the time. Why is R. Kelly is the only one being looked at as the criminal then? Why is Rob the only one being looked at as a criminal? If it was a, a lot of things like that, If there was a lot of things like that going on in the industry at that time, why was Mr. Kelly the only one looked at as the villain? Why is Mr. Kelly the only one still suffering from this publicity stunt? There was that everybody was doing at that time in the in industry. Why is it only, why did it only stick to him? Why did it only stick to Mr. Kelly and none of these other people that y'all say was doing this? 
Why is Mr. Kelly still having to defend himself? What's up, Meacham? Why? Can't do y do y'all? I mean, do y'all feel where I'm coming from? If this is some this if if this of these type of relationships, as Joe Mo said, was popular during that time in the music industry, why is Mr. Kelly the only one still having to defend himself of these allegations? He the only one. If this shit was popular, if this was the hot shit back in the day, older rappers going with younger females, or older artists going with younger artists, as Joe Mo just said, that was popular. A hot R&B rapper hook up with a hot singer or a hot female rapper. They come together, sell albums together. But why is Mr. Kelly the only one still having to pay a price for what was going on at that time? So all these other people got away with it. So Mr. Kelly had to pay for it for everybody. Yeah, yeah, Rob. Yeah, Rob. You gotta pay, you gotta pay the price for everybody who was doing this type of shit back in the day. For everybody who was doing this illegal shit, as Joe Mo say. This was the popular shit that was going on back in the day during that time. But nobody else had to pay, nobody else had to deal with it but Rob when it comes to the courtroom, when it comes to the allegations, when it comes to this man's name being smeared and tarnished all throughout the internet, social media, the news network, news media outlets. None of these other artists had to deal with it. But Joe Mo say this was a thing at that time. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all hit that share button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you sub to the channel, man. Turn on that post notification bell so that you'll be notified each and every time that your boy Big Vibe is going live, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. I hope y'all having a blessed, peaceful, peaceful, wonderful day today. We getting it in and we breaking it down, man, like we do when we do what we do. You heard? We're going to, yeah, absolutely. When you hear that first album, it was obviously a lot of creative chemistry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, on that record. So, um, I mean, but you know, when people go back and they what well, what was surprising to me is really how after it all came out, it was really kind of like Aaliyah got uh, villainized somehow. Um, yeah, she got blamed. That's true. Yeah, and that's, that's right. the part that I never understood. That was really the biggest part that I never mm. understood. And and that's what made the, the, the transition to the second album very difficult. We were coming off uh -huh. of a multi-platinum debut album. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, except for a few relationships with Jermaine Dupri and puffy it was hard for us to get producers wow. uh, so do you think y'all like record. have been blackballed once people started it, it, it felt like it now nah, y'all say y'all was blackballed after these see this is this is why now when he say this is even more so to me why they wanted to seek revenge against mr kelly because of the stunt that they tried to pull it didn't go well for them. It didn't go well for them. But they stunt, they stunt went tragically wrong. Then they turn around and try to destroy Mr. Kelly. All because of he just told you, man. Man, it got me feel like I want to talk like Dick Gregory now. Now listen to this. Mr. Kelly is no longer, he, he's gone. They artists that they got, he's telling you nobody want to work with her. Nobody want to deal with her. So now they pissed. Now it's, we finna, we finna, we finna, we finna destroy Robert's goddamn career. 
They didn't want to take accountability for the shit that they did. Instead, they turn around and try to destroy this man's life. At times. So I think it was just a, 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 a indicative of, of the times. Of the chemistry, to, too. Yeah, absolutely. When you hear that first album, it was mm -hmm. obviously a lot of creative chemistry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, on that record. So. I mean, but you know, when people go back, what well, is really how after it all came out, it was really kind of like Aaliyah got de uh, villainized somehow. Aaliyah got villainized after this fake marriage came out. Um, yeah, she got blamed. That's true. Yeah, and that's, that's right. the part that I never understood. That was really the biggest part that I never mm. understood. You never understood it because you knew the whole situation was a lie. And and that's what made the, the the transition to the second album very difficult we were, we were coming off uh -huh. of a multi-platinum debut album mm -hmm. and you know uh except for a few relationships with jermaine dupree and puffy it was hard for us to get producers wow. uh, so do you think y'all like had been blackballed once people started it, it, it felt like it that's that's he said they felt like they were blackballed after the allegations of this marriage came out so what you think they was gonna do if you feel like somebody then got away and got over and y'all on the losing side, see, they wanted to be on the winning side of this stunt. But when people was talking about it, see, people wasn't believing it, man. People wasn't believing it. So that's when they came with this fake ass certificate to make people believe that this man really did try to legally marry this young lady. Then when people saw the marriage certificate, now all of a sudden everybody's back in support of Aaliyah, but they dislike Robert. You see what they did? How they how they how they won the people back? Y'all see how they won the people back over? Now y'all see how they won the public back over. They won the public back over with that fake ass certificate. Because they wanted to make it appear as that Robert really did try to marry this young lady. That, that's, that was the purpose of the certificate. Man, this shit crazy, bro. If you listen to this dude, Joe Mo talk, and the more he talk to me, the more I, 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 the more he talk and I just listen to him talk, I'm able to read between the lines with what he's saying and what he's trying not to say. So when they first came, when it, when the word first got out, that it was supposed to be a marriage, it didn't, it hurt it, Aaliyah's image because they made it seem like she was hot, she was being fast because she was talking about age ain't number, the number, this thing, that. They were trying to say that she was, you know, she was wanting to be grown, this, that, and the third. You already know how they do with young girls like that out here in society. When they got these young girls out here that's acting fast and being grown and all up in men facing different things like that. Then they hear something happen to them, and they be like, oh, that's what she gets. She shouldn't have been in no grown man face. She shouldn't have been around them grown men, X, Y, and Z with them grown men, and now a grown man that touched her. She, she did that. She did this. So that was kind of like how they started to look at Aaliyah. But so what did uh, what did Barry and Jomo do? They come out with this fake-ass marriage certificate. To make it seem like that this man really went down there and tried to marry this young lady. So now the public is back in Barry and Joe Mo corner now. They back supporting Aaliyah now because now they feel sorry. They feel bad. Woo! <laughs>
Shout out to Dennis King, man. Dennis King. Shout out to Dennis King, man. A member for 12 months, man. A one-year member, man. Shout out to Dennis King, man. Dennis King, shoot me an email, man. Shoot me your email. Shoot me an email, man. As soon as you can, shoot me an email, man. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make it my business that I get something to you, man. I appreciate it. A member for one year, man. A member for one whole year, man. May y'all show some love to Dennis King in the chat, man. A member for one whole year. Wow, man. That's what's up. Right, Miss Milani. Right, uh, Mr. Libra. Man, one year membership, man. Shout out to Dennis King, man. One year, man. 12 months, man. Wow, boy. That's a long time to be rocking with somebody. That's a long time to be rocking with somebody, man. That's what it felt like. And mm-hmm. never understood that. You know, she was 16 mm-hmm. um, at the time, 16, 17 at the time we were cutting that second album. And uh, I just People didn't understand and why they were upset with Baby Girl. Wow. wow. I remember that. But when you say like when y'all going out and trying to do the second album, mm. were people like not taking the calls? Yeah, it was it was it was not taking the calls, begging off of 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 producing, even demoing. You know, it was because it was the same way. With it's the same thing. What happened to Aaliyah was the same thing with uh, Sparkles. People didn't want it. They wanted a. They wanted a live with our. They wanted our Kelly to be the producer of her music. They wanted Kells to. They wanted Kells to do the producing, man. You know what I'm called? But y'all said y'all wasn't dealing with our Kelly no more. Nobody wanted to talk because that goes to show you, man. Our Kelly was a bad man was it was it was tough to uh get name guys to go, to get in the studio because it, the first question was well is r kelly going to do something on the record? and uh when we would go no it was like okay well we'll, we'll hit you back <laughs> so why See? did they want r kelly to be right, on I, I, maybe the y'all hear it do y'all hear it do y'all hear it for yourself so they had to they had to put something in the middle of Mr. Kelly and Aaliyah to separate them when it comes to the music industry for other people to be willing to work with her and not have R. Kelly work with her as well. So this is how they this is how they drew the separation, man. That's how they drew the separation. With this bullshit license. Y'all hear it now. I'm playing it now. I want y'all to listen. If y'all like me, if y'all like me, and y'all hear what y'all gotta read between the lines of what he's saying, listen at this shit. We were cutting that second album, and uh, I just People didn't understand upset. why they were upset with Baby Girl. Oh. Wow, I remember that. But when you say like when y'all going out and trying to do the second album, mm-hmm. were people like not 
taking the calls? Yeah, it was it was it was not taking the calls, begging off of 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 producing, even demoing. You know, it was it was it was tough to uh, get name guys to go, to get in the studio because it, the first question was, well, is R. Kelly going to do something on the record? And uh, when we would go, no, it was like, okay, well, we'll, we'll hit you back. <laughs> so why did it? So <laughs> now y'all here. It's right there. It's right there. They tried to, they, they, once Kale's left, once Kale, they tried to, they tried to, when they tried the separation, when they try to just do the separation and walk away and take a leer, the industry was still denying them because they were saying, I'm not going to work with her unless Mr. Kelly is doing the producing. If Rob is not doing the producing, then we don't want to work with her. But what they did was they came out Despite the allegations of the marriage, people were people when they were just hearing about it, they were like, Well, you know, I just don't want nothing to do with it. Now, when they go and taking her around trying to shop her to different producers and different people, they saying, Well, is R. Kelly gonna work on the album? They said, No. Well, then we'll hit y'all back later. So here come, boom, the fake ass certificate. Because now they got to try and convince the people that this man actually did try and marry this young lady. Man. And these are my thoughts. These are my thoughts. These and my thoughts aren't actual facts that actually took place. I don't want anyone to take it out of out of context that I'm sitting on here saying this is what it was. I'm just giving my thoughts and my perspective on the things that I am hearing. These are just my thoughts based on the things that I am hearing. I could be wrong. I could be right. But it seems like to me, after they wasn't, after they wasn't getting no calls or they wasn't getting no attention or they wasn't getting no traction from the industry, they had to, they had to come up with something to try to make Kells look like the villain. So, yep, just like Irv Gotti and them made up false orders of protection by 50 that started 50 rat rumors that uh, present on the order did exist. It was fake. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. I ain't tripping, bro. I hear this shit. You gotta hear this shit, bro. This man telling us, he's telling us nobody wanted to fuck with her after the allegation. So what they had to do, they had to convince people that Mr. Kelly was the bad guy. In order for other other producers and shit to work with her. Album. Were people like not taking the calls? Yeah, it was it was it was not taking the calls, begging off of of, of producing, even demoing. You know, it was it was it was tough to uh get named guys to go to get in the studio because it, the first question was well is r kelly gonna do something on the record? and uh when we would go no it was like okay well we'll, we'll hit you back <laughs>
So why did they want R. Kelly to be right, on it? Maybe to juice up their publisher. Maybe they felt like it wasn't going to be much of a project if he wasn't uh, crafting the material. And the, the impact, I mean, that she was having, you know, with the movies and and the style trend she was setting with the, you know, the the the, the, the brief showing and, mm -hmm. and the yeah. baggy. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. she was a a a, a style setter and a, a trend setter. Trend too. setter, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, she was the litmus test that you look for in a female artist. Are the after they do a video or they come out with some visuals, do the mm -hmm. do the young girls copy what they're doing? Right. And she she set the agenda for. I agree you know, nearly a decade of her career. Do, do you get to hear from, I know um, her relationship with Missy Elliott, it was really, really a good relationship. Like that was Millie, Missy's girl. Yeah. Do y'all get to hear from Missy often? Um, Not, you know, over the years, not as often as, as you would like, but mm -hmm. yeah, me and Missy are really cool. And yeah. I agree. I agree with that, Miss Milani. I agree with that. That that very high Jim Derrick got us to keep the bullshit in rotation. I agree. Mr. Lieber say, keep in mind, that's the same radio station that the Savages was on. Wow. That's crazy. Shaking my head. Well, damn, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Diane, what's going on? How you doing, Diane? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Sharika, what's up? What's up? What's up? Man, I tell y'all, bro. Man, I tell y'all, man. One thing about Big Vibe, bro. One thing about Big Vi, one thing about me, I try to bring y'all, I try to bring y'all information that I feel would be, you know, that would be worthy for y'all. We 10 likes away from 100 likes, y'all. We 10 likes away from 100 likes. 10 likes away from 100 likes, y'all. We doing this thing solo tonight. Ain't nobody on here but me tonight. But you know I'm holding it down like I do, man. I'm holding it down like I do when I do what I do, when I'm doing how I'm doing. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's see. Let me see what else I got for y'all. Let me see what else I got for y'all. <laughs> Hold on, let me go over here and look. Let me see what I have. Hold on, man. We're going to take a look at Bear. This dude, Bear Hankinson, look, he look, he look, he look, he look weird as fuck. He look weird as fuck, bro. Miss Milana, you know you family, most definitely. It's like being destroyed. And Barry Hankerson just sat up there and went on the Ricky Smiley show and just put himself out there. He should be a part of this case. I don't know what we can do. We can get a petition. I will call the fucking courthouse and talk to the judge because this shit is pissing me off. Do y'all mean that Barry Hankerson can sit up and or go on the Ricky Smiley show and admit that he had knowledge of an inappropriate relationship. You just made yourself a part of the case, Barry Hankerson. You just made yourself a witness because you just admitted that you had knowledge of that inappropriate relationship. I don't give a fuck if he knew about the marriage or not. He knew that R. Kelly's grown ass was molesting his young ass niece, y'all. So he is a part of this federal trial. At least he should be. And my belief of what I'm looking at I know I'm not tripping, y'all. And then he's not a part of it because it wasn't no fun. The shit never happened. It never happened. 
the reason why Barry wasn't a part of the trial based on Mr. Kelly having a relationship with Aaliyah because it wasn't no relationship with Aaliyah. It wasn't, man. People think, you think they just going, it wasn't. It was nothing but that fake ass uh, marriage license that they presented that showed that they, they names on there, no signatures on there. All of the handwriting was the same on it. That's it. If it was a real relationship, man, come on. That man, Barry, Jomo, Demetrius, all of them would have been locked up. They would have made, the courts would have made way more money. These accusers would have got way more money if all of them was locked up versus Mr. Kelly being locked up. Shit, I'm going to take down one millionaire and I can take down three millionaires. Shit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Shit. Shit. When I got five dollars, I go to McDonald's. If I got thirty-five dollars, I'm going to Applebee. Shit. So if I can take down Barry, Joe Mo, Kells, and everybody. Shit. If, if if this shit really happened the way that it happened, the reason why certain people ain't getting locked up is because the shit didn't happen the way that they said it happened. That's why. Shit. That's why Barry wasn't a part of the trial. Because the shit didn't happen. I tell y'all, man, one thing about this shit. What up, uh? Yeah, man, we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to be getting up out of here. Aaliyah's uncle, the brother to Aaliyah's mother, claims that Aaliyah's mother knew more than they thought that she knew. So let me just share that with you guys, and then we'll get started. Were you aware of the issues going on with R. Kelly when they were going? Hold on. No. No, didn't have a clue. Completely ignorant to it. Do you think anyone in the family was? Um, yes. Yes, I think my sister knew a lot more than what we thought she knew. Were you aware of the issues going on with R. Kelly when they were going on? No. No, didn't have a clue. Completely ignorant to it. Do you think anyone in the family was? Um, yes. Yes, I think my sister knew a lot more than what we thought she knew. Now, how you throw your sister? How you throw your sister under the bus? Now, ain't no, but ain't nothing but one way. Now, what he says to me only confirms one thing. If his sister knew, that only confirms what the sister said that she was always there with her daughter while she was working on her music. The mama said, I was always there. If I wasn't there, my husband was there. If my husband wasn't there, my son was there. But there was always someone there when she was working on her music. So for Barry to say the mama knew, in order for the mama to know, the mama would have had to be around. And the mama said, if I wasn't there, my husband was there. If my husband wasn't there, her brother was there. But there was always someone there when my daughter was working with 
on her music. Boy, Barry, but the but the way Barry look at this age, Barry ain't got long. Barry gonna Barry gonna be like uh Barry gonna be like what's the woman who lied on Emma Till? Uh that Bryant, what's her name? That Bryant, what's I know the last name Bryant. Carol is it Carol Bryant? The lady that lied on Emma Till, they're gonna be Barry Hankins. They're gonna be Barry Hankins. He gonna Carol Bryant. That's gonna be Barry Hankins right there. He gonna be on his deathbed and he gonna admit to his bullshit that he put this man through. So your sister knew. Man, how you listen to anything this motherfucker Wayne say? Their situation, they had a pack of pins and eyeballs, no matter what anyone said, or if anyone said pins in their eyeballs, they would never tell about their relationship. Um, you know, things like that. Okay, so what exactly did he tell you about his relationship with you outside of the pins and eyeballs thing? He told me that they were married, that she was pregnant, that they did um, doctor of the... Uh, now, this is the same... Hey, chat family, can y'all give me a pass? Can y'all can y'all give me a pass, chat family? Chat family, I need a pass, y'all. Can the chat family give me a pass? I need a pass from the chat family tonight. I need a pass. Can I get a pass from the chat family? Say, Big Vi, you got a pass, Big Vi. <laughs> Man, you mean to tell me this old lock ass hoe? This is one of the most lionless hoes that ever walked the face of the earth. This is the same hope that the U.S. Marshals had to go look for to drag back in court. This is the same hoe who got, who perjured herself during the first trial. But people is giving her a platform to go and spew these lies out her mouth as if the shit that she's talking, the shit don't even make sense. This whole don't even make sense. She said because he, she was pregnant, he went and got an ID. Come on, man. If, if, I mean, the, the the logical thing would be is if you're a grown man and you got an underage girl pregnant and you go through the hoops and loops to go get a fake ID for her that to show that she's 18 years old, don't you think all you would do next was give her that ID, drop her off at the abortion clinic and tell her, call me when you're done. So you mean to tell me that Mr. Kelly went out here, he had committed a crime by getting this minor pregnant, and then the only idea that he could come up with was, let me go get your false ID, which is another crime, um, marry you, which is another crime, and then you never had an abortion. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> man, I be trying to hold back, man. I be trying to be respectful. I be trying to be respectful. 
Man, come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. I try to be respectful, but when you hear bullshit, you just got to call it bullshit. You got to call bullshit bullshit. You got to call bullshit bullshit. No, ma'am. You got to call bullshit bullshit. This man ain't finna go and get this girl pregnant, go through the hoops to get a fake ID just to get a fake marriage license just for her to have an abortion. And you mean to tell me this man told you that? <laughs> and if you say this man told you that? Man, <laughs> right, Miss Milan, ladies of the night. But you the same woman. Now listen at this. This is the same woman that was with Rob, stole the watch, stole the tape, left R. Kelly, went got with another nigga, got pregnant, came back with her daughter, asked Rob for somewhere to stay, and he allowed her back. What type of mother are you? That's the question. What type of mother are you? If you knew all of this shit that this man done told you he done done, and you done left and went away to live your own life, sure, what's going on? You done left and went away to live your own life. But this man that told you he didn't abuse other young women and you go have a baby by another man and come back to the abuser that you left and you got your daughter with you and say, we need somewhere to stay. What type of woman are you? What type of mother are you? You got to make this shit make sense, man. And then when we talk about the ID, right? We talk about this ID that, that they got for her to have this abortion with. You see this shit right here. You see this right here. When they talk about the ID, you say the manager reluctantly testified against the singer about how he used how he had bribed a worker at a local welfare office to make Aliyah a welfare ID card, but it but that it did not show her age. What was the purpose of the ID? Hold on. You got to make this shit make sense. So, he said, Cook County, Illinois clerk office also testified about the process of obtaining a marriage certificate and said the type of acceptable and the type of id acceptable by a clerk to apply for a marriage license are at the discretion of the clerk she's lying let's see let's see let's see what kind of id you need to get a marriage license <laughs> let's see
<laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Let's see what type of ID you need to get a real, a real marriage license. Not that full gaze and shit. A real, a real. I say the best documents to bring with you is your birth certificate followed by your valid passport, other government issued IDs, such as a driver's license, visa, or other state issued IDs should also be acceptable. You also should take a current utility bill for proof of residence. So you mean to tell me, <laughs> I guess I might well go when I get ready to get married, I'm going to go down there with my work badge on. I'm going to take my work ID. I'm going to take my work badge down to the clerk and say, you know, this is all I got. You know what I'm saying? I got my work ID. Louisiana, stand up, man. What's up with it, Tremere? Louisiana, stand up, baby. I'm going to take my work ID with me to go get me a marriage license next time. <laughs> I'm gonna take my work bag. Yeah, this is me. Yeah, this is a this is a uh this is a a W4 work ID, a I9 work ID. You know what I'm saying? I pay taxes for this ID. What's up, Wendy Bryant? What's going on? I pay taxes for this ID. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do. This is what I do, y'all. This is what I do. I come on here and I break this shit down. Hello? Yeah. Uh-uh. Hold on, y'all, just a second. marriage certificate so she would say that she was 18 so they could get married and the reason they got married was because um he they felt like if he was married to her and if he said he thought that she was 18 that he wouldn't be charged if someone found out she was pregnant until they were able to get the abortion and get her annulled Did y'all just hear that part of this shit? Did y'all just hear that part of this shit, bro? Listen to what this line helper just said. This is a helper right here. Or what they call a jazzy bill. <laughs> she would say that she was 18. So him and uh, Aaliyah, uh, their situation, they had a packed pins and eyeballs, no matter what anyone said or if anyone said pins in their eyeballs they would never tell about their relationship um the, you know things like that okay so what exactly did he tell you about his relationship man listen at this shit right here y'all listen at this shit right here y'all y'all please open y'all ears and listen at this shit right here y'all i wish both of my ears was working so i could hear this bullshit with two ears but i ain't got but one right now but listen at this bullshit outside of the things that I lost. He told me that they were married, that she was pregnant, that they did um, doctor up the um, marriage certificate. So she would say that she was 18, so they could get married. And the reason they got married was because um, he... They now, somebody asked me this. Somebody asked me this. 
Somebody answer me this. He said that they docked. He told her, she said they docked up the marriage certificate. Which one do you get first? Do you go get the license to get married and get the certificate? Or do you go get the certificate to get married and get the license? <laughs> Don't you need the license in order to get the certificate? I'm asking. I'm just asking. Am I, if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. They doctored up the, they doctored up the certificate. Really? Man, did this woman just <laughs> she said they doctored up the certificate to get the license. That man, are you serious, bro? He told me that they were married, that she was pregnant, that they did um doctor up the um marriage certificate so she would say that she was 18 so they could get married and the reason boy i came with lisa van allen lisa la allen lisa la allen they doctored up the certificate to say that she was 18 What happened to the license process, though? You need to have a license in order to get married. Man. Just a second, y'all, before we get ready to get up out of here, y'all. So, so, what is it? What up with it, blessing? <laughs> right, right, fat tracks. Right. Not only that, fat tracks, she left and went and had a kid for someone she left and went and had a kid for another man which was a daughter and came back to mr kelly and asked could she stay there with her daughter bless it what's up with it So let's see. Y'all know Big Vi gonna go up there and get it, man. So it said, 
you need a you need a ceremony which can be in front of a non-religious celebrant or judge. It's a license to get married. After the ceremony, you get the marriage certificate, which means you are married. So when you hear her say, now she say they doctored up. Now, is she telling the truth? Now she just say he take they doctored up a marriage certificate. If they doctored up a marriage certificate and never got a marriage license, how the fuck could it ever be a marriage? She said now she said this is what he told her now. If we're going off of what she just said, this is what he told her. She said, he said they doctored up a certificate. You know, things like that. Okay, so what exactly did he tell you about his relationship belief outside of the things that I've also seen? He told me that they were married, that she was pregnant, that they did um, doctor of the uh, marriage certificate, so she would say. So, boom. If we take what she said, we know she's a liar, but she just said that he said that they doctored up a marriage certificate. Without a marriage license, you cannot have a certificate. You got to have a license in order to get the certificate. So how could you doctor up the certificate and not have a license? Shit that make you go, hmm. These are the type of motherfuckers they had on the stand testifying. These are the type of people they had on the stand testifying. What up, bless it? Let me drop the link in case uh in case somebody want to come on right quick and and and, and, and share. So we're gonna get off in, in about 30 minutes. We got 30, we got about 30 minutes. Man, but do y'all hear this shit? She said that he told her they doctored up a certificate. If they doctored up a certificate, you need a license in order to even get a certificate. So I said this shit a long time ago. I said Demetrius Smith went and bought a goddamn certificate from somebody who worked at the goddamn Cook County, uh, Cook County, uh, clerk of court. He went down there. He knew somebody, and he bought a bullshit. He bought a blank certificate, and they just filled it out with Mr. Kelly and Liz's information, and then they published that shit in Vibe magazine, magazine, and said that it was a real, a, a fucking real situation. I mean, that's just that's just me speaking. That's just me speaking. You know, I know people, you know, it'd be people out there, they be wanting to correct you, they be wanting to debunk you, they be wanting to uh, 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 chop your live up. But these are just my opinions. These are my viewpoints. This is what I feel happened. You know what I'm saying? So when I say, Ain't a hundred percent right, and what I say couldn't can't be a hundred percent wrong, but it's just a theory. He was whooping her ass. He probably pimped her, pimped her up there <clears throat> to get still. Mister Kelly, watch right to take money from him. Same dude, right? Same dude. And Demetri said him and Barry worked on the marriage license. Kells knew nothing about the marriage license. So how in the hell did Kells tell Lisa anything? Right. Right. You can't make this shit up. 
You can't make this shit up, man. You can try to charge me, but I'm not guilty. Hey. That's facts according to the trial, man. Most definitely. Most definitely. Big Vi, that's what they all that's why they all needed immunity to stay out of jail because they broke the law. I would came up, but I'm at work. Man, no problem, no problem. Bless it, man. Look, man, we're gonna get to run it. We're gonna get to run it. We most definitely gonna get to run it. <laughs> right, right. The shit you make up when you got immunity. Immunity is like a motherfucker high as hell walking in a in a store just grabbing a bunch of fucking snacks, man. <laughs> That's immunity. Hey child, what's happening? Sharika, what's going on? Barry Hankerson take a Lil to R. Kelly so he can help her with her music, but Kelly did not want to work with a Lil at all. My, I believe he I believe that this man was forced to do a lot of things. I do believe that this man was forced to do a lot of things. But y'all already know, man. You know, that that the uh Miss Milani, the that appellate court shit, that shit can take up to 18 months before we hear anything back from the judges, you know, before we hear a decision on the judges. That could take up to 18 months. What case do y'all know with all the accusers having immunity in the attorneys in prison yet chaos in prison? Right. I agree. My brother, check this out. This is how you know Susan Logan was not working with underage girls because she would have a she would have to have some IDs to cast the checks. Right. They would have had to have IDs to cast the checks. They gotta have they had to be 18 to even file a lawsuit, period. Right. Right, right, bless it. But it, it's gonna happen, man. And like that guy said earlier in this clip, this right here spoke volumes, you know. This right here spoke volumes to me. Let me go back to it. This right here spoke volumes to me. I got to go back. I got to go and find it right quick. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me, y'all. This right here spoke volumes to me. And this is what this is uh this is this spoke volumes to me. Let me get over here right here, get the comments up. And if y'all would like to donate to your boy Big Vile Opinion and y'all appreciate the content and y'all like the content that I'm bringing and y'all appreciate it and y'all rock with me, man. Y'all know y'all can donate to your boy at dollar sign Big Vile Opinion on Cash App. Y'all can hit the super chat. Y'all can hit the super thanks. Also, y'all can email me any content you all have. Dennis King, make sure you email me uh shoot me an email man uh you've been a member man dennis king been a member for one year 12 months y'all know we got the memberships available man the memberships ain't nothing but 2.99 2.99 cheap 2.99 for the memberships you know what i'm saying very very affordable man so if you ain't a member if you ain't a member, make sure you go out and go to my channel. Go on my go to my channel. Click in the bio. Click the bio. Boom. Come join the channel, man. 
two ninety nine a month, man, is cheap, y'all. Man, I'm telling y'all. But uh, if y'all would like to donate to the channel, y'all can do so. However, y'all choose to do. I'm going to keep bringing this content. I'm going to keep bringing this truth until they stop me, until they shut me down, man. I'm going to keep bringing it. I'm going to keep bringing it, y'all. I'm not stopping. I ain't stopping, man, because this man was done wrong, man. This man was done un unjust. What he did with these lying people, lying women, lying men, lying prosecutors, it's just crazy. Lying judge. Lying friends, lying workers. I mean, everybody, man, like the man say, now, you mean to tell me not one person had nothing good to say? Not one person? Lisa say the license first, and after you marry, you get the certificate. My point exactly. So why would R. Kelly tell her they doctored a certificate? Most definitely, Aaron, the whole marriage was set up from the beginning. Most definitely. And Joe Mo told us why it wasn't set up. They set the man up with the marriage shit because nobody wanted to work with Aaliyah after they pulled that publicity stunt and it went left. Nobody wanted to work with her no more if Robert wasn't going to be working with her. See, Robert broke up with Barry. And when Robert broke, broke up with Barry and realized nobody wanted to work with Aaliyah if Robert wasn't going to be producing it, Barry and Joe Mo had to think about how could they separate Aaliyah from Robert. So they came out with the fake ass marriage shit. What up with it, TJ? Which video? Yeah, Susan Logan, Susan May. She, 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 Susan Logan's. Sued R. Kelly for 25 years. Dungeon, what's going on with it? Hell yeah, man. It's your boy, Big Vibe, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all coming over here rocking with me every day. I appreciate y'all coming over here rocking with me every day. But I tell y'all something, man. God is moving, and God is moving in a way that we already expected for God to move. We, we expected for God to move this way. And he's going to continue to move the way he's moving. These people are some of the same people who was calling this man a rapist, call this man. That video was, ooh, let's see. That video, I think, let me see. I had to go through uh I had to go back to my history right quick and I'll let you know how old that video was. That video was nine years ago. TJ, that video with, with, with Joe Mo was nine years ago. Lottie, what's good with it? But God is moving and God is turning. He's slowly turning the tide over. Yeah, that man in his heart knows he ain't do shit wrong. And that's the scary part. Ooh. That's the scary part. Now, we can argue and uh, this debate will go into the, to, to the cows come home. And I truthfully don't know because you hear about Aaliyah and you, you, you've seen you talk about the videotape. And there's been there's a little more concrete evidence on R. Kelly than there is on Diddy. But at the same time, I'm not sitting out there and acting like he did or didn't do anything because I don't know. Right. That didn't sound like a man that was guilty to me. That sounded like a man that got railroaded, and he understands what's going on. That don't sound like a man that is guilty to me. That sound like a man who was rail, rail, wrote it, rail, wrote it, rail, wrote it, and he was rail, wrote it, with no caboose. The tide is turning, y'all. So, with that being said, man, Big Vi coming up. We ain't got no special guest appearances tonight. So, let me see what we're going to go out with, man. Y'all know they're going to try to block my video. Boy, they be hating so, so hard on me, man.
They be they be trying to knock me out, but I do be doing some dumb shit sometimes. I do be doing some dumb shit sometimes. Let's go, man. to my favorite girl that's enough jay rizzle what's up with it man what's going on Vi? man i've been over here tearing these motherfuckers up tonight boy i heard you man i couldn't i i was in the bushes i couldn't jump on i had a few other things i had to take care of so i said so i said man they better pray i don't get on this live tonight <laughs> They better hope and they better hope and pray that I don't get on this live tonight. But you heard Lisa Lau Allen, man. Dude. <laughs> for the people that jump, for the people who are listening to this, this the same chick that jumped up and stole this man's Rolex, which was valued from anywhere from, from fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. And she said, when, when when confronted with it, she said. I didn't steal it. He left it there. You bet you wasn't yours to begin with. What the? You know what? <laughs> she knows stealing. She it wasn't her. She just picked it up, but she know was stealing. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, and you know what? You brought up the marriage certificate. You brought up Jomo. Yeah, Jomo was sounding really kind of, kind of iffy there, bro. He was sounding yes, really was. iffy. He's up there when they asked about. It. He said, "Well, I." I'm I, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna let that play out. Like, what, 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 you gonna let it play out? I'm like, I'm like, man, look, hold up. So I don't know if there's any new people in the chat or people that are in the bushes, but I got an angle to this marriage certificate. I got an untold story about this marriage certificate. That nobody has addressed. So, Vi, if you got a few minutes, anybody in the chat who's new or in the bushes, you better call somebody to call somebody to call somebody to tell somebody. To come on over here. <laughs> J Rock say he with the shit tonight. He choosing violent. Because, because uh, what I'm about to drop on here, some of us already. Some of us in here already know what I'm about to say, but the ones who don't, you better, you better, uh, you better call somebody to tell somebody to call somebody to tell somebody. Shit. Because at this point right now, what I'm about to say, it's going to, not only is, is it going to blow your mind, but it's going to connect dots that you've been wondering about all these years. I'm going to let you do your thing, man. I'm going to mute up. Should we have to, um, should we have the Jeopardy theme music for this? I don't know. Maybe we should probably do Jeopardy theme music. I don't know. Because, because I'm at that point right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say it. Now, R. Kelly, Anna Lee, everybody wants to keep jumping back on that whole marriage and saying that they were married back Back when her album came back in 94. Oh, I appreciate the music, Vi. Keep me. See if we can get a couple more people up in there because. Because some people's jaws are about to drop. Hey, 
they got that lifetime background. <laughs> got the lifetime background. Come on with the timeline, man. I know you should have break it down. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and do it now. So here's the deal. Everybody talks about the marriage with R. Kelly and Aaliyah, and everybody bring, keeps bringing it up. Now, Aaliyah's album has supposedly dropped May of 1994, May 24th, 1994. Now, they say it was another date, June 14th, 1994. Um, well, between let's say between May 24th and June 14th, Aaliyah's album first dropped. And during that time, if you notice, when you were around the 90s, when you, when you were around during the 90s, usually what happens when your album drops, there's a six month time frame from the time your album drops to the time to see if you, um, at the end of that six month period, to see whether you are either have enough, if you generate enough to either have, to either have have a be part of a major tour or have your own major tour r kelly's 12 play album dropped november of 93. six months after that would have been may of 94 which would have generated the time for r kelly to go on an album or go on a tour the 12 play tour but if you notice r kelly did not go on his 12 play tour in may because Aaliyah's album was getting ready to drop. So R. Kelly made sure that Aaliyah's album was out and straight before he even went on tour. So the tour was about two months after, two to three months after that, that uh, after Aaliyah's album dropped. So once Aaliyah's album got, got off the ground, it was doing well, that's when he went on his tour, which was his 12 play tour. Now, when R. Kelly was on his 12 play tour, he had a show in Lafayette, Louisiana. While in Lafayette, Louisiana, him and his entourage stopped at a gym called Red's Health Club. While at Red's Health Club, R. Kelly's entourage got into a fight which resulted in an aggravated assault charge which then got escalated to a felony assault charge r kelly left lafayette flew back to chicago to meet with his attorney to deal with the drama in lafayette he then flew back to lafayette because he had to go to court for what happened in Lafayette and KLFY TV 10 in Lafayette, Louisiana had footage of R. Kelly going to court. Now, let's go back to the time when Demetra Smith, the so-called road manager, said that, well, R. Kelly stopped his tour because he said that R. Kelly told him that Aaliyah was in trouble and they had to fly back to Chicago. Bullshit. R. Kelly's tour stopped for one reason and one reason alone. That reason was that that incident that happened in Lafayette. It was an aggravated assault charge, which then got escalated to a felony assault charge. So at this point, you know if there was a felony assault charge, you know there was a warrant. So he couldn't even take, and he still had the show to do in Lafayette. He couldn't even take the stage until he got that issue in Lafayette's straight now before he even took the stage for his show and the reason why i know that this whole thing happened during that time because see this whole incident happened exactly around the same time that that so-called marriage happened you see if you would pull the date up on the marriage it would say about august 31st is when the marriage happened R. Kelly had a show 
which actually was before August 31st of 94. But because of that incident, it pushed everything back. So instead of having that, that show at that point in time, in the last week of August, it turned into the first week of, of September, which, which was Labor Day weekend. And see, I was home from school and I wanted to go to that concert. I wasn't able to go, but my brother and his wife did. They went to that concert, spent the night, came back home, told me all about the damn show. See, that whole time, that whole incident that with R. Kelly, talk, when they talk about the marriage, R. Kelly went back to Chicago saying that Aaliyah and R. Kelly flew together in Chicago to get married. How the hell that happens? When R. Kelly was in Lafayette and Aaliyah was in Detroit. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have an article here, courtesy of MTV, that said R. Kelly reaches settlement in lawsuits. Now, this is dated August 13th of 1997. And it reads as follows. R. Kelly reached a settlement with four Louisiana men who filed a federal civil lawsuit against the R&B singer after a July 1996 brawl at a health club in Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, this is a half-truth article because right here on the date, MTV put in the wrong date. Because that brawl did not happen in July of 1996. Because if it would have happened in July of 1996, that would have been on his top secret tour, which was in 96, which I attended. As a matter of fact, I attended that concert in May of 96. So you can't have two inc the same incident happening two different years in the same city. So it would not have been in July of 96. I was taught the exact same thing happened in July of 1996 and also happened in August of 1994. If you got family members, if you got anybody who was around who's from Louisiana, especially if they're from the, the surrounding areas of Lafayette, Louisiana, and they were around between 93 and 95, I promise you, if you ask them about this incident, they're going to tell you, yeah, yeah, I remember exactly when that happened. Because one of my friends from school called me and asked me, uh, and I asked him, I said, did this incident happen July of 1996? And he told me, hell no, it happened in 94. And I remember when it happened. And one of my friends, he was actually born and raised an hour outside of Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, what makes this this uh, thing so incident going significant going back to the article is that Christopher Mahoney was one of the men who claimed R. Kelly and his entourage attacked him during a basketball game violating their civil rights and he received 110 stitches on the face. And the Lafayette District Attorney reduced the charges in the state case against the Chicago-based singer after researching after research in the civil trial that another man in R. Kelly's five-man entourage was responsible for Mahoney's injuries. Um, and um, Harson, who said, uh, who's the DA, said that if you reduce the felony count of second battery to simple battery. And after pleading no contest to the charge, R. Kelly was, was sentenced to one year unsupervised probation. And the attorney said that that one of the bodyguards was hit with a second battery for punching Mahoney in the mouth. And if charged and convicted, maximum penalty of for that felony would be two thousand dollars or up to five years in prison, five years in jail. So at this point, what that tells me is a couple things. Number one, MTV put in the wrong dates. 
because that wasn't July of 1996. It was 1990. It was August of 94. Because in 1996, R. Kelly had a top secret tour, which featured himself, LL Cool J, Escape, and an R&B group by the name of Solo that was being uh, that was under the production of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis at the time. Now, on his 12-play tour, and here's the killer. When R. Kelly went back to Chicago, I think it was somebody in the chat that said something about, you know, R. Kelly had no idea about the about the marriage certificate and what, what was going on. Of course he didn't know what was going on because R. Kelly actually had a different legal matter that he was dealing with at the time when of the shit that Demetrius Smith and everybody else was doing what they was doing. So how can R. Kelly go up to Chicago, have another, be involved in another potential federal, federal charge involving marrying a minor when he's already dealing with a separate legal issue in Lafayette, Louisiana that stopped his tour which he still got a show he got to do in Lafayette, Louisiana, when there's a felony assault charge involved. You see, KLFY TV 10 in Lafayette, Louisiana had footage of R. Kelly going to court with his lawyer. And the only reason why I wasn't able to obtain that footage is because I got a friend who worked in, worked in radio and TV, and she told me that, it's so, that the footage is so old and archived that I would need a court order to get it. Unfortunately, I wouldn't I wouldn't been able to do that. But guess what? It still did me a favor. And the favor is that they that there is no information about this incident that happened in Lafayette, Louisiana, from none of the local media. That means no Lafayette TV, radio, or print. There's no record of this incident. It's like they just scrubbed the internet. They completely wiped it out. The only piece of information you would have about this about this incident is courtesy of the article that I just read to you in MTV. So you mean to tell me that they just wipe they just wipe and shit away that they don't want they don't want to be out. Oh, absolutely. So, so here, so here's another point to bring up. Now, they keep they stuck R. Kelly with a RICO charge, one man RICO charge, and they kept and they kept throwing Aaliyah in the middle of this drop. Now, why would they not admit? Now, everything I mentioned that happened in this article that said. Felony assault charge, 110 stitches to the face, violation of civil rights, second degree battery. Why was none of that? Why was none of this mentioned as part of the RICO against R. Kelly? All of that information, all that right there would have told you that wouldn't that be leaning on on the enterprise? On being part of a criminal a, a criminal organization? And the fact, but see, I have a theory as to why that they want that they didn't want to do that because if the prosecution, either in Chicago or New York, were to bring this up, it would kill the Aaliyah narrative. So now, because R. Kelly's full in, R. Kelly's intention intent to go back to Chicago was to deal with the drama that happened in Lafayette, Louisiana because of because of that incident that stopped his tour and he had to go back down to court in Lafayette to try to settle that that whole issue so he can get ready to go back go back to court and and uh, go back to do the show in which my brother and his wife went to so he went back to so he went down back up to Chicago to handle that business to meet with his attorney and he and and he did not go back up there 
to marry a minor, a.k.a. Aaliyah. And it's funny how people, how this whole incident never gets brought up. And that's the reason, that's the part of the angle that they don't want to bring up in regards to what happened with R. Kelly. Yeah, man, you went, you, you went, found that article. You had been talking about it. Yeah, I told you, I was, I was going to track it down. And even when I found it and I read it, I said, I said, they done lied in this damn article. But, but, but you know what? I guess I shouldn't be surprised that MTV would lie, lie about, lie in an article about R. Kelly. Because after yeah. all, this is, this is the same MTV that's got a, that's got a network, that got a movie award show, which is the same movie award show. They got a category for best documentary. And it won. And the best documentary, and 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 what one best documentary was surviving R. Kelly. When you had with, when you had all, all those all those lying ass thoughts that's running up, running in and out of that, trying to tell they trying to sell this story to the highest bidder. So I guess I shouldn't be shocked. Man, that's crazy. It's crazy, and you want to know the funny? I, the funny part about it was, at the time, I didn't put two and two together, at first. But once Demetra Smith had opened his mouth, and said that R. Kelly had stopped his tour because Aaliyah was in trouble, that's when I was like, "Wait a minute, what? Hold on, so." And R. Kelly was and R. Kelly was not dealing with Aaliyah at the time of his top secret tour in 96. Because at that point, she was already working with Timberland and Missy at that point. So she was already. So the only time he was dealing with her was the time of his 12 play tour, was it which was in 94. And I remember his tour stopped for one reason, and that and that altercation in Lafayette, Louisiana was the only reason that that tour stopped. Nothing else stopped that tour but that. So yeah, Demetrius Smith jumped on that stand and lied through his teeth about why that tour stopped. Oh, and by the way, also, you, you played some with Barry... Barry Hankerson on Dr. Oz, on Dr. Oz's show. Shout out to Dr. Oz. That's why you got your ass whooped. And it's funny how Lifetime didn't bring up this incident that happened with R. Kelly. Because you would think it would show R. Kelly, uh, R. Kelly was prone to violence. But they completely left that out. So, so I know you had to go by. I was, I want to go ahead and just just um just go ahead and air that out because I caught the rest of the live from last night also when uh when Monty and everybody was on when Monty and Jeff and everybody was on there. So Monty died, probably didn't know about this. So I said, damn, I wish I'd have got the opportunity to go back on. But I said, you know what? But when you brought it up, I said, I said, oh yeah, it's, it's about to go down now. Oh yeah, man. One thing about us over here, man, we gonna keep bringing some shit, and we gonna try to bring shit to the people that we know they gonna like, and you know, we gonna try to dig a little deep. And like I say, we ain't the first ones to talk about certain shit, but we just gonna keep certain things relevant. You know when it comes to the R. Kelly sector, R. Kelly news. Yeah, you know, and, and oh, and and uh, and for everybody, and, and for, for anybody in the bushes, that's he one up. What's up with it? 
This is my first time ever seeing you over here. And uh, oh, and by the way, for anybody in the bushes or whoever, um, yeah. And so, just for the record, congratulations. A lot of people in black, black, uh, black community has has lied on this man for over thirty years, and that's the damn proof. Yeah, and then you know that marriage. This is gonna be the thirty. This is gonna be the thirtieth year. What the thirtieth anniversary of that marriage certificate shit that came out in ninety four. Right. It's gonna be shit in August thirty first of twenty twenty four will be thirty years. Right. Now keep in mind when Aaliyah's album dropped, like I said, it was around May of May of ninety four. It was, it was I think May twenty fourth ninety four around that time. Six months after that would have would have been like the last week of November going into Thanksgiving. Couple weeks after that, you played a video, and it showed that that uh, Aaliyah had an interview. It wasn't on this live, but I think it was like about a few lives back. But you mentioned the fact, but but in that that video, Aaliyah mentioned talked about you know briefly the marriage, but she was talking about her upcoming tour. Uh huh. And the tour, I believe, was starting like about what mid December, or maybe like a week before Christmas. Now, for anybody who remembers Vibe Magazine, that Vibe Magazine that came out with R. Kelly on the cover, they're talking about the so-called marriage. It was a January, February edition of Vibe. That Vibe Magazine dropped about a week before Christmas, which was around the exact same time that her tour was supposed to start. And the reason why I know that for a fact, because I bought the magazine a couple of days before Christmas. So they released that magazine the exact same time that Aaliyah's tour was getting ready to start. But, and people don't want to believe that it was a publicity stunt. Her tour starts, marriage certificate comes out, scandalous story. You get more sales on the magazine. And, and also, you mentioned the fact when you had that video when it talked about Jomo about Aaliyah being villainized. Mm -hmm. Even when Aaliyah was going through that, she didn't say one bad thing about R. Kelly. Nope. So, guess, so, so you know what? That's that's a testament to her character and who she was. <laughs> All I, I I said that shit at the end when he said that nobody wanted to work with Aaliyah, they pretty much put you in the same realm when Sparkle tried to leave and nobody wanted to work with her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now they just didn't have the. Sparkle didn't have the leverage that Barry and them had. Barry and them had leverage because they knew that they they had that fake ass uh, publicity stunt of a marriage. And you hear Joe Mo say that was that was the thing at that time in the music industry. So they used what was going on in the music industry, and and they they capitalized on what was going on in the music industry which that is these uh rappers perpetuating relationships with these female rb singers and shit. and then they came with this when, when when they went to try to move on from mark kelly and nobody wanted to work with Aaliyah if he wasn't producing her so how they separated our kelly from Aaliyah was their marriage certificate yeah yeah, that's that's exactly what they did, because the man because that marriage certificate was uh, basically threw a monkey wrench in that working relationship. Right, nobody wanted to work with her without R. Kelly, so they had to come up with a re they had to come up with a way to separate her from him, and they used that goddamn fake ass marriage. Ooh. Now, see, I, now I also believe something else too. 
I believe they also wanted to uh to sever that relationship because <gasps> I think and, and see I believe I'm start I'm really starting to believe this. I'm starting to believe that R. Kelly was getting was gaining more influence over Aaliyah than Barry was. Yeah, but then the thing was they found out who had the most to gain. They found out that Aaliyah was teaching R. Kelly how to read. Yep. That was a problem for Barry. You can't be teaching you can't teach our slave how to read. Because once you teach them how to read, then we ain't gonna have no control over them. Right. Which is one of the reasons why that whole why the um the project that R. Kelly was supposed to be on didn't happen. And the project I'm talking about was the LSG projects. Now, I don't know if anybody in chat knew about this also, but years ago, shout out to the late great Gerald Avert, may he rest in peace, one of the greatest, one of the greatest soul singers of, of, um, of our generation without question. When, when Gerald got ready to start, start with LSG, one of the first names he, he he called, one of the first people he called was R. Kelly. And see, R. Kelly and Gerald Levert already kind of had a working relationship because R. Kelly had toured with Gerald Levert before. Which was back on this private line tour, which is back in 92. Which brings up another lie because, because they talked about, well, Aaliyah and R. Kelly, R. R. Kelly had sex with Aaliyah on the back of a tour bus. I had sex with back, uh, Leo in the back of the tour bus when he had only one. The only tour he had was the twelve was the was the private line tour with Gerald Levert, and that was in the spring of '92. And see, but going back to LSG, Gerald had Gerald contacted R. Kelly. He called R. Kelly and asked him if he wanted to be part of LSG, and. He was an R. Kelly, and, and according to Gerald, R. Kelly was down and wanted to do it, but his label wouldn't let him to do, uh, wouldn't allow him to do so. And that's what Gerald Levert told Tavis Smiley when Tavis Smiley had that show back in the day called BET Talk. So that, so that killed that, that project there. Because I really believe, because at first I thought, well, he probably didn't want to do it because he probably had so many projects going at the same time. But I'm like, hold up, and 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 now looking back on, it, I'm like, hold up, he he could con he could pretty much control anything he wanted to control because he because he's been able to do so much already. He, he had worked with Tony Braxton, he had worked with with Michael Jackson, he had worked with Janet, he had worked with he had worked with a slew of people already. So it, so that issue wouldn't have been a problem. So I, so I came to the conclusion that the reason why that it happened the way it did was because you had Gerald, you had Keith, you had Johnny. Each one of them has been in the game for at least a decade or longer. But R. Kelly was only in, in the game for roughly about yes, Ms. Malone, that's where I live at. About five years. But if I think the whole thought was if R. Kelly would have got with with Gerald, Keith, and Johnny, conversations were gonna get had. Or conversations were gonna be had. And I think R. Kelly was gonna disclose some of the stuff that he was going through. And Gerald, Johnny, and Keith would have kept it real with him and told him what was going on. And knowing how much R. Kelly would revered Gerald Levert, he'd have took that advice to heart and he would have cut a lot of people off. And I don't think they wanted, they didn't want R. Kelly to be around them because they were, they thought that Gerald, Keith, and Johnny would have dry snitched on them. Which killed the LSG project. 
and just in case people are wondering i've been trying to find the clips i couldn't find the clips of it but y'all can ask tavis smiley because tavis smiley tavis smiley was tight with gerald for years up until gerald's death i know i know tavis got the footage But yeah, you start looking back on stuff now, it's a whole lot of shady shit that went down in the process. And it makes you think, it makes you really start thinking twice and make you revisit a whole lot of stuff that you thought was kind of insignificant at the time. But now you realize it's gotten more, it's more significant than you thought. But I, I feel like when we look at the uh R. Kelly and um let me find it. Let me go to my channel. Go to my videos. When we look at this, like I always say this video here. Yo, Kells would ever if this would have happened for Kells, man. I do. Oh. Let's go to it. And I jumped on a plane to Chicago to our next casting call at the Regal Theater. We see thousands of would be actors. I don't know what I'm looking for. that you find once in a blue moon that talented needle in the haystack i see actors 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 then a singing group auditions the lead singer really has something but where would he fit i had choir boy i had eddie could he be dresser could he be jt I didn't know, but there was something about that lead singer. I called him back into the room again. I kept him in my mind. I, I didn't know what to do with him. Years later, people would come to know him as R. Kelly, R&B superstar, and now infamous icon. Jackie and I. Talking about. If, 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 if he would have went in that direction with his career, man, ain't no, man, ain't no way Dave Ruffin outperformed Kells, man. Man, I'm gonna tell you right now, if, if it probably would have went, went in that direction, R. Kelly probably would have played David Ruffin in Temptations, right? Can you imagine Kells? Being David Ruffin, man, because he already got the persona. I can see it. That shit would have been off the chain. Man, that shit would have been. <laughs> that shit would have been huge, bro. Just in case <laughs> it's not what it may seem. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, man. To flash. How does it feel to be me? <laughs> yeah. Man. But that's why I, that's why I kept thinking and I and I kept uh wondering, I said, man, like I said, last week, you know, last week was Marvin Gaye's birthday. Uh he'd have been 85 years old if he was alive today. Um that's why I was I would always wonder if Marvin hadn't passed away in 1984, if he was still alive around in 94. I promise you, if he would have crossed paths with R. Kelly, I think 
I think R. Kelly would have reached out to Marvin first before Marvin would have reached out to R. Kelly. I think Mar I think I think R. Kelly would have been like, I got this, this, and this. Where is Marvin? Where is Marvin? I just want want to be, especially people in the chat, just sit back and think, think for a minute. What what a what an R. Kelly produced Marvin Gaye album would have sounded like. I just want just want want to chat chat just to contemplate that thought. An R and B album with Marvin Gaye produced by R. Kelly. What that album would have sounded like if Marvin was still alive. What he did for the Osley brothers. What he did for Charlie Wilson, you know the work he would have done for Marvin. What up, Marty? What's going on, my guy? How are y'all? How hey, what's going on, gents? How y'all doing? Man, we Marty, what's tonight? going on, man? I caught the second half of the live last night. When you was when y'all was bringing that stuff up, I didn't get a chance to disclose some of the stuff I knew. I don't know. I don't know how much you heard on what I said. Oh, I, I I've been listening, brother. Man, you listen, bro. I, I'm here to learn as well. You know, I'm here to learn and chop it up and and and, and devise my own. See, see, this is see, this is this is. I, I like panels like this. It's because you're you're your own individual. You're you're your own independent thinker. You're not influenced by everybody else. You do research, you read, you you study. Even this, didn't it, even the Holy Scripture said we got to study to show ourselves approved. So I, I love it, man. I love it. And you know, Monty, you being from Chicago, and uh, I got to ask you about this. Did you remember when R. Kelly had to go back to Chicago when he stopped his tour when he was in when he was in Louisiana? Because there's some people, there's a lot, surprisingly, there's a lot of people in Chicago that don't remember it, or some of them remember it. Was that it. like a 95 or 96? 95? It, it was 94. I remember that. Because see, I think I, I heard somebody, because I was in the, I joined the military. And I think my sister said something about that. You're like, yo, Kells is going through something. I was like, yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? And I heard it was a fight or something. Something. Right. See the fight. See the fight was was at a health was in a was in a health club in Lafayette, Louisiana. When he was there, in, when he was there in Lafayette, because this is the time he had a his tour was still going on. But what happened was, when he and his entourage were playing basketball, they got into a fight, and the fight resulted in an aggravated assault charge, which later got escalated to a felony assault charge. He left Lafayette and flew back to Chicago because he had to meet with his lawyer to deal with the drama with, uh, with with what happened. And then he left Chicago and flew back down to Lafayette to go to court. Now, everything I heard, I, and I remember this vividly because my brother and his wife went to that concert. I wanted to go, but I didn't have the money for, the, for a ticket, but they went. They went, spent the night in Lafayette, came back home and told me all about the show. Now, the crazy part about it is, if you know it's a felony assault charge, you know it produced a warrant. So he couldn't even take the stage in Lafayette to do the show unless that warrant, unless that issue got handled first. And this happened around the exact same time that the so-called marriage happened. You see, see the funny part about it is that Demetrius Smith said R. Kelly's tour stopped because he said that R. Kelly told him that Aaliyah was in trouble, was in trouble, and he stopped his tour, and he and that's why he, he stopped his tour and went back to Chicago. R. Kelly's tour stopped for one reason and one reason alone. And that reason was that was that altercation and fight in Lafayette, Louisiana. That was the only time that tour stopped. It didn't stop for no other reason. So Demetrius Smith essentially lied on the stand 
in New York when he said that. I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. Like I said, my cousin is a, is a trial lawyer. See, see, they were the 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 gut, the feds were very meticulous in how they went about this. They did this in a in such a way to where Kells didn't really have the recourse of what he needed. Because see, I'm gonna tell you this. That's why they that's why they brought the case they brought the charges not the families not the 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 parents of these children so-called children because if had they brought the case oh wait if they brought the case now the defense has subpoena power mm. now now okay kells can subpoena all of these parents that said hey Jojo, uh, uh, Sally, and, and and Amy is of age. We he can subpoena power. That's why the feds did it like they did it. Because if the parents did it, Kels has subpoena power. Now he can subpoena all these parents, and they, now they have to take the stand under oath. And now we get to the truth. But see the feds, see they nasty. That's why they do. That's why they have such a high conviction rate, because they 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 manipulate the scale in their favor. They use the law to break the law. Monty and Monty, you are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. You has no lies detected on my end from what you said, and I'm even going to take it a step further. The incident that happened. Oh, by the way, did you know there was an article about it? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm talking about the uh, the uh, the incident in Lafayette, Louisiana. Are you talking about the the incident that happened in Louisiana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I found out after the fact. Yeah. Now, see, the funny part is the half. It, now, the the article is courtesy of MTV. It's a half truth article. Now, the reason why I say a half truth is say R. Kelly. Now, this is the first statement. R. Kelly reached a settlement with four Louisiana men who filed a civil lawsuit against the R&B singer after a July 1996 brawl in a, at a health club in Lafayette, Louisiana. Here's where the half truth is. That date is a lie. Because that didn't happen in July of 1996, which I already knew. One of my friends from school, I called, I asked him, I said, did that incident happen in July of 96? He said, hell no, it happened in 94. I remember when it happened. And he was, and, and he was uh, in his hometown is, is an hour outside of Lafayette. So I already knew it. And I remember the day when, when everything went down. So I know it didn't happen in July of 96 because in, in July of 1996 was his top secret tour. And his top secret tour consisted of himself, LL Cool J, Escape, and a, and a new R&B group by the name of Solo that was, that, was, that was being produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. So this was, so, the, so that actual brawl happened in August of 1994. And it didn't happen July of 96. And August of 1994 was around the exact same time that so-called marriage had happened. Because they also brought up the fact they talked about, well, well, you know, and, you know, they, they, there's these articles and other people talking about, well, you know, that it happened, that, that, that the marriage got annulled three days later. Let's see, if the marriage was August 31st of 1994, Three days in, in uh, August 31st, 1994 was a Wednesday. Three days later is on a Saturday. You can't annul a marriage on the weekend. Impossible. And and you you need both parties there. There's no such thing as a one signature annulment. So they say, oh, they went to Detroit and did it. Well, even... Even that, they say you can only annul a marriage in the state that it took place in. Yeah, Vi, big Vi, 
Shout out to Precious4568. Say good evening, gentlemen. Good, good evening, everyone. At J Rock, my Louisiana brother, you are absolutely correct about that altercation at Reds, Reds Laros. I live in Lafayette and I remember it like it was yesterday. Man, that's, that, that, but this, it's the reason why they manipulate timelines and different things to try and throw you off. Like, even with the articles that we read, when Demetrius Smith said that R. Kelly and Aaliyah both flew to Chicago together, like, come on, man, it's just, you can't, you can't make this shit make sense, bro. And, and, uh, like Monty said, see what the fans did, the fans, when you go and you hear someone like Kim Fox say they wasn't even investigating this man prior to the prior to the R. Kelly case, and they said what prompted the investigation. Let me see. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, because I seen the lady the other day was playing it, and I'm gonna show you the head prosecutor gonna tell you what prompted the case. They tell you it was the damn docu series because of the docu series that what that's what uh sparked the investigation. Let me see. Is this it? Y'all can y'all can keep talking, but I gotta I gotta find the video because I seen one success. Uh well I tell you what, shout out to uh Precious4568. Thank you, thank you. Because I said this for the past few years, and once I put two and two together and I figured it out, I knew exactly what the hell they did. And I told him. If you ask anybody who was around, who was who was from Lafayette or around Lafayette between 1990, between 93 and 95, they will say the exact same thing that Precious 4568 just said. If hell, if you're from Lafayette, if you're from the surrounding areas, if you're from because see, and the only reason why I, I wasn't able to get the footage of it, because like I said, my homegirl. I got a homegirl who worked in radio and TV. She said it's so, she said right now the, the information is so old and archived that I would need a court order to get it. But the funny part about it is if you pull up the, um, if you look up the information about this incident, this, this article on MTV is the only thing that shows anything about it. Which means nothing from the local Lafayette media has any information about this incident be it tv radio or print now you would think some you would think uh a city like lafayette a town like lafayette that has that that has that ca that caliber of celebrity like r kelly there why would they not have any information about an incident that that that, that he was involved in and why is it not why was it not shown and my belief is the reason why they didn't want to do that because if Lafayette has their information, it would discredit the MTV article. See now you see now you you answer you answering the questions. You know they they ain't they ain't gonna if it don't make if he if it don't make him look like an aggressive, you know this monster that they trying to uh, perpetuate. They they gonna goddamn hide it mm -hmm. and see parish 4568 just said something else he said it was a very big deal his fans was his fans lined lined the sidewalk as he walked into lpcc which would be the lafayette parish courthouse well you know it should be court it should be court documents in lafayette then i i, I gotta try to get in touch with my boy q nondrum and see if Q Nunder can hook us up. Uh, yeah. Checking, yeah, because because Q was stunned when I told him. I don't know if he forgot about it or he didn't remember. Or he didn't know, 
But when I brought this up, he was like, when did this happen? I said, this happened in around the fall of 94. Oh, and also another thing that happened in Louisiana with Oh, and by the way, the uh, the venue that R. Kelly would perform at, it would have been the Cajun Dome in Lafayette, Louisiana. That was the venue. And you had some other accusers that came forward, talked about R. Kelly, essayed them in a, in a hotel in Baltimore in 1995 while he was on tour with LL Cool J. That's bullshit also. Because... Yeah, they had a bunch of bullshit. A bunch yeah. of bullshit, but you know, man, Monty, I most definitely want to get you on here. I'm, I gotta find what I'm looking for, cause I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to go with it. But the prosecutor, the head prosecutor in our killer case, that is now a, an attorney in now with the Diddy shit, and they was uh this guy sidebar some I was on. They channel the other day on one of these on one of the uh successful minded. It's an R. Kelly channel, and they had the video on there. And she was saying, like, you know, she said out of her own mouth, this is a prosecutor, that the docuseries sparked the investigation. Like a docuseries. They telling you nowadays, like pretty much when they hear shit, and I always look at the settlements. You know, I go to the settlements when people like Diddy, Bill Cosby, all these R. Kelly, all these famous guys just settle, uh, just settling these civil lawsuits, just paying them to try to get the shit over with. Man, that's the worst thing you can do. Yep. Especially yeah. the language in that lawsuit saying that you assaulted one of these women. All, all, well, that sets the fuse. That, that that certainly sets the fuse. But like I told you earlier, if your children were assaulted, dude, is, I don't know how many of us are parents. I, I am of you. Are oh, parents. yeah, I am. It, it's, it's your job to protect mm -hmm. your children until they're able to protect themselves, even after. Even after, if these if, the, if these children if these if, if these children were were violated, these pills do of this heinous crime. Why would you go to media outlets and not the cops? Man, you heard. First what of all, it, 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 it's like it's like that Deshaun Watson shit with with him and who was in Houston. The Mons these girls Mons go to the Mons media. They go to the media, not the cops. Like, what do you like? Look, you suspect right from jump. It's like you trying to grab money. You grab him. You, it's a money grab. And guess and what? You, and then, too much. Soon he said he wanted out of Houston. All of a sudden, allegation. He's a sexual, exactly. He's a sexual, he's a sexual predator. Like, dude, they can get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Like, dude, let this man go. He didn't do that shit. Like, like, stop. Like, dude, you, you know, need to get out. When you dealing with a case that involves a minor. No one should have immunity. The parents should be in trial. Absolutely. Just like I told you. If they see that's why they did that's why they did not bring charges against him. Because had they brought charges against him, he would have subpoena power, meaning he would have all their asses on the stand under oath. Mm -hmm. Oh, guess what? And guess what? No immunity. Mm -hmm. I don't have the authority to give you immunity. Now, hey, look at okay. the damn number of. I'm not sure. Do you follow a view, uh, uh, Tracy Viewpoint? Do you follow that? Have you seen that channel? No, I haven't. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to introduce it to you tomorrow. But she she got all of the documents and read all of the documents. From the court filings, and if you got Instagram, you can go to Justice for RK on Instagram. They have all of the transcript documents and every the motions, everything that you, everything pertaining to R Kelly case on their Instagram page. Justice for RK is on there. Anything you want to see, um. And it talks about they had so many bad act witnesses. 
they had so many witnesses in this man case. He was only being charged for five or six women, but they had 45 people testify against this man. Mm. You know what? You know what, Vi? Shout out to Precious4568 once again. She said, facts, j Rock. She said, Channel 10 was there at the correctional center when they aired when they aired the live when R. Kelly was going to court. It was KLFY TV 10 Lafayette, Louisiana. Man, Precious, Precious, uh, yeah, Precious 4568. If you can look into it and you can find some for us. Uh, 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 court documents or anything like that, anything that you can find pertaining to that situation that went on down there, man, we will greatly appreciate it. If you, you have no idea, it. what's up, T is blunt, yeah, man. But I've, I've been on for three hours, we ain't gonna go long tonight. But Muncie, I, I would love to, you know, just get you on, man, me and you, uh just get me and you on and just chop it up man and just you know let the people hear you uh speak man and it's good that you have a cousin that's an attorney you know like you, people that have different questions maybe you can take some questions and you can take them back and ask you know your cousin about certain questions that we may have or you know what that we may have pertaining to the law as far as the law go and maybe you can Absolutely. get us an answer man but then Absolutely. we got our one guy, Q Nundrum. He's 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 a uh, he's an attorney down in New Orleans, and uh, we have other people on here that have legal, uh, you know, his uh, uh, history, experience. experience, and stuff. But we like to really bring people like factual, contextual, full circle. You know what I'm saying? We don't like to come on here and you know make it seem you know just talking. And not being able to show the people, hey man, we 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 want y'all to go here and look up this. And when it says, you know, this, and I understand, like Jennifer Bun Jean pointed out during the brief during this appeal, you know, they they said, well, you know, the statute, the statute of uh the the age of consent is 17, but once you record someone, the age of consent it turns federal, which the age of consent goes to 18, you know. And just different shit like that, just that's something that people need to understand. Like that law, like yeah, it, that state it may say that that person is uh 17, it may say leak, you know, they legal in that state, but once you record them, film them in a sexual activity, then it, it becomes federal law. So that person would have to be 18. So we try to keep people fresh on the laws and different shit, man. So that they can educate their children, especially their sons and their daughters as well. This this case is a lesson for for parents to educate their children, whether it's your daughter, your son, whoever, because it's a lesson in it all the way around. You know, you got to teach your daughter with everything that glitter. You know that shit ain't what's up. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, you got to look at famous people celebrities whoever you gotta look at these people just like regular people but for the most part us as parents we gotta do a we have to take the accountability for putting our children you know best interest at heart that's that's not sending your child if i heard an accusation whether i believe the accusation or don't believe that accusation the fact that it's an accusation i gotta take precaution when it comes to what I choose to do with my child. I don't want to say that you did nothing. I'm not going to sit here and say you didn't do it, but I'm not going to make it possible for if you did or didn't to be involved with my child. And people are sitting around and, oh, well, he said this or he said, no, I'm not saying nobody is guilty or innocent. But we as parents, we are the first line of defense when it comes to our children, when it comes to our brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews. We are the first line of defense, man. And we have to put these, we have to teach our younger, you know, generation, you know, the do's and don'ts, man. Because if we don't, we're going to see this same shit be repeated over again. 
We're gonna be we're gonna be walking with signs saying free this person. Yeah, you got but there's so much shit in this R. Kelly case that we know these females having fake IDs, the mama coaching the goddamn daughter on what to do, uh, sit in his lap, shimmy, wear your hair to the one side, put on your black dress. Oh, I can't wear that because I'm on my cycle. Damn, girl, how long you going to be on your cycle? This is all time. This is a mama talking to her daughter. Boy, that's insane. Shoot, but, uh... How can a fucking parent sit there and talk to her daughter like that? Coaching her daughter on what to do. When you send, when I send you these messages, make sure you copy and paste them and take the forward off and so, copy and paste the message. Don't forward the message because if you forward it, he'll see that it was sent from somebody else. So this is the mama directing the daughter on what to do and how to do the shit. Then the mama out her own mouth say, girl, he ain't trying to hear you saying he want to fuck. And you still. Encourage your daughter to go out with this person. Man, and you mean to tell me you get to walk the streets free? Ain't no fucking way. Well, man, I'm about to I'm about to call it a night. We barking on three hours and thirty minutes. You know I enjoyed it, J Rock man. I salute you for coming over and chopping it up with me, bro. Monty man, I know you got in a little late, man. I appreciate you as well, Lady Earth B. What's up? What's up? I see you in here. Well, I want uh, I want to shout, shout you out once again for having me on. Monty, it was good. It was good the chance to finally chat, uh, chop it up with you a little bit, bro. Appreciate that. Hey, man, I heard you earlier. Hey, man, likewise, I heard you earlier, man. It, look, money look, count only, up? only, and I like it. And I like it. See, the reason I like this panel is everybody's articulate and well read, spoken, and it's it's only adults allowed. You know what I'm saying? You get some some panels that's that's crazy. Right, and uh, and we try to keep it. We try to keep it very respectful. I ain't gonna say I don't like to say try. What we do over here, we keep it respectful because we all men. The chat be respectful. You don't see all that disrespect going on in the chat. And if I have to get out of line with somebody that's on the stream when I'm playing a video, I ask the chat for permission. Can y'all give me a pass before I go and say Lisa Van Allen? You mean to tell me this man told you he altered a marriage certificate, but you need a you need a marriage license in order to get a certificate. Yep. Oh, Vi, speaking of marriage certificate, um did did you bring up the fact about the uh the lawsuit that she filed? Oh yeah, Monty, you knew that. You had knowledge of that, Monty? About about what? Aaliyah filed a law. She was filing. A, she was getting ready to sue Cook County. Oh no, I didn't. I, I did not know that. Do tell. Screen out. You take that case number. And go look it up for yourself. Okay, I, I will do that. I, I see. You, you know what? See, this is this is <laughs> this is see this, this is the bullshit that I'm talking about. See the, the 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 powers that be, they suppress and propagate what they want to 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 push a narrative, and it's not necessarily about truth. So, what, what like oh come on man like how how could you suppress something like that? This is this is this is pivotal. And you know what? And she you know was suing. She suing David Orr. Clerk of court. Well, well, this, well, that's the clerk county department public health. She only didn't include him. She included the the female worker too. 
I gotta find that one. I got it in here somewhere. She but she got what, two, she got a couple of them in there. But but you know what else, Monty? Here's the other part about this that that's really pivotal. If you really look at the case number, you know, the first four numbers are 1997. So you could easily say that that would be the year it was filed, which is 1997. Uh-huh. Now, in some cases, in some if you had some uh some lawsuits, cases or settlements, it could take about what three to four years in some cases on the average, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Now, let's say it takes four years. 1997, four years from 1997 is 2001. And 2001 was the year Aaliyah died. Which means this more than likely would have became public. And everybody would have known. But instead, she died. This didn't come public. Yeah. And what came out after that? That fake ass, fraud ass, phony ass sex, sex tape, tape that yep. came out in February of 2002. Now, now, Marty, here's another question to really ask yourself. Why was that sex tape leaked six months after Aaliyah died? Because if you notice, that tape didn't come out when Aaliyah was alive. Now you got Lisa Van Allen said that they doctor they doctored a marriage certificate, but this right here is a doctored marriage license. How is this a marriage license pertaining to all of the people that was involved in this marriage? But all of the handwriting is the same, except the signatures. Oh yeah, I got a, oh yeah, I got a screen, I, oh yeah, I got a screenshot. This I got a screenshot. I've been looking all over for this. I thought the only I had it. is different is the signatures. Everything mm -hmm. else is the same. You mean to tell me a Lil write the same? Or Kelly write the same? Nathan Edmonds write the same? Uh, Elwood Nathan Senior write the same? Everybody write the same? <laughs> then look at this part right here. Now this is the signature. Now this is what this is when they they got the license. They got the license on August the thirtieth, the thirtieth day of August in nineteen ninety four. Then if you go down here, the state of Illinois on the thirty first August thirty first, nineteen ninety four, is when they when they uh did did the ceremony. So how how did how did he sign it? How did he sign it before they had the wedding? Munchie, I need some help, man. How did how did David or the clerk sign it before they had the wedding? It's a damn good question. Bro, that's a damn good question. What's up, Cookie? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let's get question. Cookie. Uh, Cookie asked. She said she got a question. We're gonna take this question for Cookie, and then I'm gonna get up out of here. But my question is still, how, how in the hell did David Orr sign this? Mary, how did he witness and sign something on August the 30th of 1994? But then the wedding, this wedding didn't take place until August the 31st of 1994. 
I mean, you can. It's so much. It's so much shit you can point out. There's so many inconsistencies you can point out versus the shit that make you feel like you know you can just go with it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. That that's all I'm saying. You know. What's going on, Miss Cook? Hi, Big Bye. Hi, J Rock. I don't know who else is up there. I can't see, but well, hello, panel. Uh, Mom, hello, chat. I, how you doing? I was catching um some of it off and on, and I don't know if I might have missed it. J Rock, um, you and uh, I guess the other gentleman that was talking about the Lafayette uh tour concert and how he had to go through a court proceedings because of a fight that interrupted that erupted, right? Right. But that's the time that they claim that the marriage took place, correct? Right. Because see, that was a because the uh, the marriage supposed to happen around August thirty first, ninety four. R. Kelly was on his twelve play tour then because Demetrius Smith had said, even on the stand in New York that R. Kelly stopped his tour because R. Kelly told him, but then he said he said that he told R. Kelly with another interview that either way that Aaliyah was in trouble and he stopped his tour and, they, and R. Kelly told him that we need to go back to Chicago. And he wound up going back to Chicago. He neglected to, to bring up the fact that he went back to Chicago because of an altercation that was in Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. So he did go back to Chicago, but was it on the same date that this wedding was supposed to have taken place? It was a couple of days before because it was like that weekend. It was that, I believe it was like that Sunday or that Monday around that time that, that the altercation happened. So he had to go. So he flew back to Chicago because he had to meet with his attorney. Uh huh. To try mm -hmm. to get that whole thing square, squared up. Man, we hoping Precious, Precious is down there in Lafayette. So hopefully Precious can go to the courthouse or some get some record pull, you know, pull some records or some because that's going to give us a concrete, you know, time and different things like that. But Demetrius Smith did, you know, he changed his story so much, you know, per. He changed the story per article, you know. Because I was maybe I was just confused because I'm thinking, you know, you can't be at two places at one time. Maybe. I was thinking that his court date was the same date that the marriage was supposed to have taken place. Well, you know what happened? Well, well, here's the deal: the marriage happened August 31st. I think August 31st. R. Kelly was in court. I believe it was because it wasn't it wasn't on Friday. I believe it was on a Thursday that he was in court. Mm -hmm. August 31st, 94 was a Wednesday. So then he had to be in court in Lafayette, which was September 1st, which had been on a Thursday. So that means R. Kelly probably would have left Lafayette. Let me left Chicago probably on August 31st and flew down probably that evening. So if the marriage happened, so he essentially, if there was any type of marriage that happened, it would have been, it would have been early that early morning. In the morning. Jump on that, jump on the plane and come right down to Lafayette at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, you now, know, he said it though in the uh in the mitigation report, but he said it was a it was a publicity, it wasn't a real situation. And you know they didn't think none of it. They used it in and you know if you listen to Joe Mo Hankerson when he was talking about he pretty much giving it away what they did without saying it directly what they did. See when R. Kelly decided when he when he when he was done with Barry and he tried to take a little to other people to work with her, they said it wasn't gonna work with her because of the allegations pertaining to the marriage so barry had to come up with a strategy to separate Aaliyah from r kelly for other people to work with him 
That's when you get the, the down the marriage certificate in in the Vibe magazine. Now people are looking at it like this nigga really did try to marry this girl. So what I'm trying to understand is why wouldn't his attorneys let let's speak on I guess the robbery was for Chicago's trial, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. Why wouldn't Bond Dean? Oh, the bribery was in New York. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't we understand? We probably, you know, if we want to go with the theory that his defense attorneys were they they dropped the ball, right? So, so then when we come to Chicago, Bonjean gets into the picture. He goes to trial for Chicago, and then he he got convicted on that. And now we're going through the appeal. Mm -hmm. So we look at for why wouldn't Bon Jean bring up an issue in his appeal for the bribery so he they could counteract that marriage as well to get the well, bribery the charges was, dropped off. <clears throat> the thing is, Miss Cookie, you gotta look at it like this with the New York trial. See, this is in New York, you had what a trial judge was supposed to take what the testimony was of the people who was testifying who were supposed to corroborate the story that the prosecutors was presenting. But did the trial judge do that? So this is where Ann Donnelly is putting herself in the line of fire. Demetrius Smith said that R. Kelly had nothing to do with the bribery of the mm -hmm. but he still was charged with it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that she can point out. That's something that she can point out because that actually took place in the trial. See, the thing is, she can't put she can't add nothing to the trial that didn't take place during the trial because in case he get a retrial. But they basically going to go off of the things that happened during the trial, the information they had during the trial, whether it was Brady violation or whatever the situation may have been. But the simple fact that Demetrius Smith testified and said that Mr. Kelly had nothing to do with that bribery, but he was still charged with it, that's the problem. So she couldn't bring that up in the, in the appeal? She did. The thing is, the thing is, Miss Cookie, it's a lot of stuff that she mentioned in the appeal. But during the brief, she can't. The brief wasn't about her talking about what she wanted to talk about. The brief was only about what the judge had questions about. And the judge asked them questions to clarify what they were trying to do. You but talking about the oral hearing? The oral hearing that we heard. Mm -hmm. but if you go back if you go and listen to her break down the bad act witness she talks about the bad act witnesses she talks about the jury selection she talks about the ineffective counsel she talks about all of that all the different things that we think that that we think was problematic she talks about all of that in her written argument so right. that's the judges is going to read their written argument and they're going to look at all of these different things. And that's how they're going to, but, you know, put it together. That's why it's take them so long. We may not hear from them until the beginning of next year, probably. You no, know, don't say that. We're going to claim a sooner date than that. We got sooner, but it normally take up to 18 months. Right. That's right. So we should not get so discouraged on how the oral hearing went as far as that little bit of pieces of fight she put forward because it's still the whole brief that they're going to look at of her argument in the written in the written brief the written appeal mm -hmm. here goes somebody say her parents gave her permission to marry if they gave her permission to marry our kid i'm gonna just say this right here see this y'all know i don't really liking this they somebody just put in here say her parents gave her permission but this is the star witness in the case as Smith's story goes, Aaliyah returned home to her family in Detroit 
the day after the wedding and was told and told them what had happened. Her family took charge of the situation, and on September 29, 1994, the marriage was annulled. Aaliyah told her family that she never wanted to see Kelly again. If the parents gave her permission, why the hell would they go get an annulment? And then on top of that, why would it take them a month to get it done? Because the marriage happened August 31st. That's September 29th. That's a whole month. Man, anybody look at this damn marriage certificate and think this shit real, they got this marriage license and think this real, you got to be out your fucking mind. Right. Now, all this handwriting is the same. Mm -hmm. The only handwriting that's different on this motherfucking license is David Orr signature and Nathan Edmonds signature. All the rest of this shit is the same. You look at the date, Miss Cook. I want to ask you. If the wedding happened on August the 31st, why would Dave Orr sign it on August the 30th? Now, who is Dave Orr? He's the, the court. That was, that He's a Cook the County, County clerk. clerk. He's a Cook County clerk in Chicago. How can the Cook County clerk sign a marriage license? A day before the marriage. Well, uh, well, I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's been 16 years since I've been married. I believe when they give you the license, it is signed by someone in the in the, in the clerk of court, and then you take that license to your when you go get married, and when they when they send it off or they give it to you to go back to the courts to get your certificate. If well, I remember correctly, right here. look right here. Now you got you got three different dates on one. You got August the thirtieth, nineteen ninety four. You got August thirty first, nineteen ninety four. You got September sixth, nineteen ninety four. Now if they say now you just now listen at this. Well, what's the September for? This is the I guess this is the, supposed to be the date that it was put on record. Now, we're just looking at this certificate. Based off this certificate, and Demetrius Smith tells us this. Demetrius Smith, Kelly and Aaliyah flew where Smith say he bribed an official to obtain false documents showing that Aaliyah was 18 years old. So hold on. Let's stop right there. This yeah, yeah, yeah. If I stop right there because I want to jump on that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you jump on it, but let me surgically break this down before I go further. Now he said he, he obtained a false documentation showing that Aaliyah was 18. Now here, this is, this is what he tell. Now that's what he told Vibe Magazine, the last clip. That's a Vibe Magazine article. Now this is during the trial. During the first week of trial, during the first week of Kelly trial, his former tour manager reluctantly testified against the singer about how he had bribed a worker at a local welfare office to make Aaliyah a welfare ID, but that it did not show her age. Huh. I mean, this shit. You can't do nothing but ask questions when you read this shit. The diff how is someone's story started changing every time they open their mouth, but y'all put these people as credible witnesses. It and said in the pair had a quick city hall, a city hall wedding in suburban Maywood. The marriage license is dated August 31st, 1994. Now you go read another article and said they got married on August 31st, 1994. Now, now hold on. Even this right here. As Smith's story go, Lil returned home to her family in Detroit the day after. The day after. That means September 1st, she went home. And told the parents about what happened. 
The parents took charge on the situation. September 29th, 1994, the marriage was annulled. But the thing about that, Miss Cookie, we talk about annulments. Hold on. I got it up here somewhere. That's my copyright claim. I'm going to get it for you. Okay. Now, when you talk about annulments, go ahead, J-Rock. Okay. Now, Cookie, there's a quick point when it said in that article, it said that that Kelly and Aaliyah flew to Chicago and then Demetra Smith obtained up, obtained the um what obtained the ID that's what it's saying article Yeah. Okay, Showing so 18. So how can Ali and R. Kelly fly to Chicago? Because because it's saying R. Kelly and Lee, so they so so they're making the assumption that they fly they, they flew to Chicago together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how and R. Kelly and Aaliyah fly together uh to Chicago when R. Kelly was in Lafayette and Aaliyah was in Detroit. Mm. They were in two, two different locations. And another reason why, why Demetrius Smith said R. Kelly ain't had nothing to do with the bribery was because R. Kelly was dealing with a completely different legal issue when he was in La when he was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Because he had to he had to contend with the with the incident that happened in Lafayette, Louisiana, because it was a it was a aggravated assault charge, we got escalated to a felony assault charge. So at that point. It produced a warrant. And keep in mind, he still hadn't done his show in Lafayette. He still had to go back down there to do that show. So right. here, I got it for you right here, Miss Cook. So you talk about annulments, right? One thing about annulments is it's public record. So if you annul a marriage, it will be seen as invalid. Once the annulment, this is if it was a real wedding, if it was a real marriage, mm -hmm. it will be seen as invalid once the annulment is granted by the court. An annulment will stay, they say the annulment will still leave a paper trail since court filings are public records. It says, uh, Stephen Dwight Harden said. There is no divorce or all annulment except through the court system. However, the court keeps it on record forever. Forever. So if it was if it was a legitimate situation, there would be a court record showing that it was an annulment. And all they would have to do was subpoena the court and they could get it. And they're saying hers is sealed. Even if it's sealed, you can't seal it. You know, you can't seal it. You can't seal it. It's public information. You can't seal it. I got something there about that, too. You know, I looked this stuff up. They'll go to grounds for an annulment. You know, they, you know, the grounds for annulment right there. But when it comes to sealing it, Let me see. I got that in here somewhere. Just got to look through. I got a lot of these little notes on here, man. I be trying to keep up with this stuff. So you're saying there's no right. evidence of the annulment? It, because it they claim. It can't. Because you know if it was, you know how you know how they could convict him? If they, all they got to do is go to the court. If it was an annulment, you don't think they would have been went to the court and got the, the document showing that they got a real annulment? Uh -huh. uh, annulment would show that something had to been took, a serious, a real marriage took place. You can't annul nothing that's not real. Well, you know, the other side would always say, why are we talking about it? Because he wasn't charged for it. Well, that's, that's that, he was charged but see, for the funny crime. part about Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. He ahead. was charged for the bribery. But when right. we're talking about sealing uh, a norm, say this is uh, this is to allow this is to allow access to be filed by the defendant. A one signature norm obtained by default can never be sealed. 
So if Mr. You, you see them say her parents took charge and went got it and all. Right. You know, what was Mr. Kelly at? Because when he had to be there sorry something too. <laughs> they don't want us, they don't want us to they yeah. don't want us to use common sense or they don't want us to use our ability to think, which I don't have a problem with that. I do not try to ask people to look at the way that I look at things. I look at things the way I look at things. I do you ever hear me discrediting anybody or trying to discredit anybody? Or right. question anything, anything that anybody say because everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Right. So if I'm sitting here and I'm reading, I'm reading something, and I'm looking at it the way that I'm looking at it. Well, if I want, if 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 J Rock took something from me, if I go to the police and tell the police, what's up, Miss Angie? J Rock, J Rock stole my bike. The police tell me, how do I know J-Rock stole my bike? Well, I tell the police, well, my next door neighbor told me J-Rock stole my bike, but I don't tell my police. I don't tell the police I got cameras sitting right there that saw J-Rock steal my bike. Why would I go tell the police that my neighbor told me J-Rock stole my bike when I can go get my camera footage and show them that J-Rock stole my bike? Right. right. I want to prove you did it. I'm going to go get whatever information I need. And then the thing about it is, Miss Cookie, and it's just the honest God truth. In order for R. Kelly to marry Drea Kelly, he had to have proof that he wasn't even married to that annulment, whatever it was, he would have to provide that decree, that decree Right, you right. That in order to get married to Dre or Kelly. Right. Well, you know, I I just can't understand why, even though he wasn't charged with the marriage, but because of the bribery, it, it baffles my mind that his defense attorney would not have tried harder to the I don't know the right word to use, but to Push that aside. Compress the issue more? Right. Because we got to prove that there's no bribery by proving that, that, or discount the bribery by proving there was no marriage. You yeah, know what I, I mean? You know, uh, but the thing is, they saying, well, Demetri did, you know, he said that he did do that. But the thing is, you really going to have to go back and look at this shit because you got a man saying that this man had nothing to do with this. But didn't he say that Kells gave him the money? No, nah, he said he had nothing to do with it. Okay. Yeah. You know, my I other... Told, I told, I did. This is what he said. I did that. Uh -huh. He had nothing to do with that. I did that. I know, Um, if you want to add on theories, you know, I had this discussion with someone else on a different panel. And they wanted to say that, you know, Kel's got something out of it. He benefited. But the way I look at it, if I want to look at this back in the old way that I used to look at it, is just like we talk about, and I hate to speak dead, uh, bad of the dead, but as far as Aaliyah's parents, I, I'm starting to look at them in the same way I look at the tape girl parents. Um, Deronda Pace parent and the Clary's. You know, it's, it's like a what they call it, a history of pattern. Mm -hmm. Where are the parents? Because even if, let's say, this marriage so called happened and you speak about the parents' consent or the benefits of this marriage with the parents, what did they get out of it? I'm sure J Rock knows the answer. Mm -hmm. What happened with this marriage and Art Kelly's music? What's the answer, J. Rock? Well, one of the things about if you look at if you look at uh, the so-called marriage, uh, now R. Kelly had produced, arranged, composed Aaliyah's debut album, "Ain't Nothing But a Number." Now, there's this whole thing about you know that 
there was a settlement or something involved and R. Kelly was turning over the rights to that album to Aaliyah's family. Now, mm -hmm. now that now that's what's being rumored, but we all know that whenever you have something like that, there and that there's this copyright law that's in effect. So as of right now, anything that R. Kelly produced or wrote would revert back to him as his mm -hmm. coach. So so our, so Aaliyah's album, matter of fact, her album is about to hit its 30th anniversary next month. See, a lot of this stuff that's been happening to R. Kelly, you can set your you can set your watch on that a lot of these times, a lot of this stuff is happening whenever R. Kelly's albums start hitting major milestone anniversaries. Think about it. When Surviving R. Kelly premiered, Surviving R. Kelly premiered, supposed to premiere in a theater in New York, December of 19, uh, December 2019, I mean 2018. Now, prior to that, in 2018, in the month of November, see, R. Kelly had not one, not two, not three, but four albums released in the month of November over the course of his career. Three of those albums had hit its 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. One of them hit its 25th anniversary. It's silver anniversary. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the, the 12 play album hit its 25th anniversary. The, the uh, self-titled album was already past its 20th. And his R double album was about to hit its 20th anniversary. These three albums had already hit milestone anniversaries. Oh, and by the way, TP2.com is about to hit its 20th anniversary in just two years later. So three weeks. So just about three weeks after 12 Play hits its 25th anniversary. Surviving R. Kelly's premiered in the theater of New York. So if it's supposed to be about young black women and girls, why is every move that's been strategically made been centered around this man's music catalog? Right. Okay. So so his her parent, her mother also gained right to his music as well. Yeah, because see Barry, because see, um, Barry had a hand in everything when it came to R. Kelly's music, when it came to uh, to R. Kelly. And like I said, that, you know, R. Kelly really kind of didn't want to work with Aaliyah at, at the beginning, but I think Barry just kind of pushed it, kind of pushed pushed him, pushed Aaliyah on him a little bit, so you went ahead and worked with him and still, and even with that, Aaliyah's album still went double platinum. Even with that, so Barry has Barry has been the one that has been moving behind the shadows on a lot of this. Well, some of the same questions that Cookie have, this is some of the same questions that the grand jury had. Grand jury asked the same shit. You know, y'all, y'all, you know, I don't, the grand jury said, I don't mean to be disrespectful. It say the juror said, according to the transcript, you, when you first bought us evidence, you showed us the marriage license with him and Aaliyah. So if I was wondering why she wasn't, be, why she wouldn't be part of the uh, part of it, if he married her when she was a minor and abused her, right? The grand jury was asking the same question that we had. You know, it's it's just so much. It's just so much when you look at this stuff. It's a lot of, a lot of speculation, a lot of different takes, a lot of different perspectives. And you know, honestly, like after listening to Joe Mo today, listening to Joe Mo and what he was saying to me, you know, for me, it's just that I feel as though when he said that. 
when they came out with the uh when they came out with the publicity about um when they came with the publicity about the marriage shit and Jomo said there was the popular thing going on in the industry at that time but they didn't think they didn't know that it was going to hurt Aaliyah career so he said people stopped wanting to work with Aaliyah and then when they was going around taking other other producers and shit nobody wanted to work with her and they was asking was R. Kelly going to produce the album and they said no nah, R. Kelly you know he ain't going to produce the album so the people was like well then We'll get y'all a call back. So they had to come up with a way to separate R. Kelly from Aaliyah. And I believe, and I believe that they used their marriage shit to separate R. Kelly from Aaliyah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and um, uh, oh, and, and Cookie, just uh just for just for good measure. Um I got the article on the incident that happened in Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay, do um, Big Buy have it? I think I forwarded it to him a couple of times. Okay, I'll put my, um, if you don't mind, send it to me. I would love to read it. It's a it's a fairly short read. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the private chat so that way Buy will have it. I don't know if you already got it or not, but, I'm, but I'll do that right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I've always believed it was a publicity stunt. Um, and then, you know, the more I hear things, I'm trying to make sense of it to make it make sense. Because I just can't understand why none of his attorneys would dig deeper into this, even though he was not charged for the marriage, to, to dig deeper into the bribery part of it to bring out the falsehood of the marriage. You follow what I'm saying? You know, it just. Yeah. Right. But that goes along and with see, everything else think, about the case. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that, a lot of questions that people have, you know, we got to go in, we got to go into the written argument because a lot of the stuff that Jennifer talked about, you know, she put a lot of it in the written argument. And she talked about a lot. It's so much shit that went on in this case. Right. Clearly, you can't charge. You can't charge somebody because you want to charge them just because you want to charge them. When you got your, your cooperating witness that y'all brung in to cooperate this bribery charge told y'all that. He didn't have nothing to do with it, but y'all still elected to charge him with it anyway. So what was the part? If y'all were going to charge him anyway, what was the point of bringing a witness in to cooperate? Right. It's just, it's just, it's just a lot of the shit like that. That a lot of stuff like that. That you know that actually went on in the trial. So that's stuff that could be looked looked back at. But you can't just, you know, because it's an appeal, bring up, bring in shit that you, you know, you can't just bring in stuff you want to bring in. You know, you have to deal with what you got. And like Kel said, love me if you love me, hate me if you hate me. But damn, do this shit right. You know what I mean? Do the shit right. Make it make sense. Yeah. I mean, even with that jury selection shit, man. That, I mean, that's just enough alone. You know, you got four jurors admitted that they watched Surviving R. Kelly and they still was on the jury panel. Like, come on. Them people shouldn't have never even been there. Hi, Miss Angie. What's good with it? I was waiting for um the acknowledgement by the prince himself. <laughs> y'all got me y'all y'all got me late but i'm on here what's going on what's good with it what's good with it hey hey j rock what hey, up, um, excellent. hey what's up cookie and greek hi i heard y'all was up here talking about that god forsaken marriage again lord have mercy jesus 
and I heard some of the um, questions and, and answers and things of that nature. And not that I'm, you know, I just come with the facts and the paperwork and what happened in court, right? So mm -hmm. I heard Big Vi ask um, something about they would have had the annulment records and this, that, and the third, whatever. Where they did, I did not too long ago, I did a whole live, have pretty much dedicated to cracking the case with regards to this um, alleged marriage. And I'm using the words alleged because depending on what side you're on or whatever, I'm not on a side. It was either an alleged marriage or what have you, right? So they did. I don't know if anybody paid attention to the transcripts of what happened in court I got the, or whatever. Or I got the mitigation okay. reports. Right, you got the mitigation reports. So you yeah. know when you read in there that R. Kelly acknowledged the marriage, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just, just making sure. So he acknowledged the marriage, right? And the prosecutors they in the list of discovery which i do have they have a copy of the annulment records the marriage records this that and the third whatever marriage of the birth certificates marriage of you know records of all that stuff they i mean um so i think at this point and then just by doing an internet search you're not going to be able to find a marriage that was annulled sealed and expunged it's just not you ain't gonna be able to do that you got to go down to the court um and to try to get a um a hand of those records so just right. Googling but you it. can't expunge you there's well you you can't expunge a public a record like that it stays on record forever you can go you it, can get it you can get the docket. It's going to always have a docket number. Showing it, stays, that something. it stays on public files forever because that is a, tra a legal transaction that mm -hmm. took place. However, again, you got to go. I just said you got to go to the office. Just Googling it, you ain't going to be able to see it. And, and right. it's not going to be online because of the expunging and the seal the seal um the sealment oven and the annulment right. of it. it's just not something that you're gonna be able to type it in and it's going to come up it's not right. it's not something that even if you call because i i did that too called um and that it didn't you know they said hey we don't have no records of it this that and the third what have you the only way i know that there's a record of it is because in the discovery, that's what the prosecutors used to show that there was proof of an actual, you know, an actual marriage. So, so it goes back to the grand jury asking the question. And, you know, my my argument, and I don't even say argument, my, my viewpoint on all of this is that the different, the different perspectives and that's why I try to make that's why I don't be liking doing like no debates or no stuff like that or going back and forth because my my opinion is based off of the different the different lies that the people are telling. You got one woman just out here and say the man told her that he married her and doctored the certificate so that uh because she was pregnant then you got another man saying the same shit he did it so she can get an abortion those, those are my those are the things that i'll be just sitting here like how are the the credibility of the people that they had testifying to corroborate these stories that they were saying that's my view on it right and you know what and that I'm is challenging the, the, I'm gonna challenge the what the court gonna say when you even sit here and you read the documents of the grand jury asking the same question that we have as regular people, like, hey, well, y'all got this information. Why are we not charging them? You know, that's that. But when you listen at all these people and the witnesses that they drug in and say, the man told you this, and then he told you the reason why he did it was because she was pregnant and she wanted to have an abortion. I'm just sitting here saying, we got to make this shit make sense. 
if I'm gonna go through loop, hoops and loops to get you a fake ID that say you 18 years old, why don't you just take the damn ID and go have an abortion? Why would I keep committing crimes to cover up a crime? You you know what? Exactly. You you correct. You correct, and your thought process is correct. That's why. Can you cuss up him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Then you know that's why I fuck with your commentary because you know you aren't don't purport to have the law right, you know, because you give common sense and not too many conspiracy theories. So, so I can deal with that. You know, when they be way out with them conspiracy theories and, and this, that, and that, which you know, and, and here's the thing, right? When you have a, a witness that is incredible, right? Meaning they lack credibility, okay. I'll try to stop. I I won't use the legal terms, but they lack credibility, right? That's the risk you run, right? Mm -hmm. Only thing you can hope is that the story they tell on that stand match your evidence that you're going to put in the jury's face. That's the only thing you can hope for. But you are absolutely right. You know, why all of these, you know, cloak and dagger, you know, ass type bullshit. Why do all this, do all (laughs) that? And if I'm not mistaken, you could take some uh, a person's uh, uh, to get an abortion, and they don't ask your age, or uh, or if you're underage, you know they don't even care about that. You understand right. what I'm saying? So why not? Saying, you know, that's been my that's yeah. been the whole thing. Like this, it it was never the the it was never the court part of it. It's the the witnesses that they brought and what the right. hell the witnesses were saying, like at the end of the day, you know, if I commit a crime, I ain't finna go commit another crime to cover up the last crime I did. Like this shit, don't it's a crime. It no matter right. how you get right. a crime is a crime. Well, Miss Angie, right. Miss Angie, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. You, okay, so you said they bring in a witness that can collaborate with the evidence that they have. So if Demetrius Smith is saying, I did all this, R. Kelly had nothing to do with it, what evidence would they, because that's their witness, right? That was, uh, Demetrius was the prosecutor's witness, correct? Right. So if he's saying, oh, Kel didn't have nothing to do with this, what evidence do they have to contradict his testimony? And if that's the case, why would they have him or wouldn't they have him for contempt of court or perjury or something like that? So and how could they find him guilty the of the um, bribery? Well, the portion in which they say he did have something to do with, that is what um, they are holding him responsible with. Um, it's supposed to be Demetri Smith's idea and all of that, but as far as the the alleged like actually participating in the bribery like r kelly is supposed to be in on giving the you know giving the money up and and whatever else like he was in on it and evidence of that is he was the one that allegedly wedded Aaliyah, so they can put him in on that bribery okay you understand what i'm saying that's why Mm -hmm. they're holding him responsible for the bribery Right. right. Well, when you go no. to Demetrius' testimony, though, he tell you, Rob, I told Robert, you know, I I did this. He clearly said, I did this. I right. knew somebody that worked at the at the county. I took her down there to do this. Robert had nothing to do with that. But still, right. like you say, they gonna they gonna do what they want to do at the end of the day. Like you say. The trial went the way they wanted it to go, and what they was, and they they said, well, then by the time you go through all the appeals and different things like that, we're gonna be in the got enough time out of your ass to just say, okay, it is what it is. You yeah, know, but you and know what? And a purpose, you know what else, go ahead. But you know what? I was saying, here's the funny part when when uh when you said when, when they said that Demetrius Smith, Demetrius said said I had I done this, Robin had nothing to do with this. And then they, they keep bringing up the fact that stick, and then keep sticking the bribery on him. And like Vi said earlier, why would I go back and be involved and, and get involved uh, with a 
if I did a crime and then I go come back and have to do another and do another crime to cover that crime. But what makes it so funny is I know why Demetrius Smith said R. Kelly didn't have nothing to do with it. Because R. Kelly had a separate legal issue he was already dealing with when he went back to Chicago. Yeah. And that legal issue was due to that incident that happened in Lafayette, Louisiana. Because he was already meeting with his lawyer when he dealt that. So Demetrius Smith and Barry, whoever, had all the time to do all that stuff that was behind R. Kelly's back because he was already dealing with a completely different legal issue already, which resulted in a felony assault charge in Lafayette while he was on tour. Oh, okay. I see, well, I see your point. But it, and another thing, in a perfect world with this bribery, in a perfect world, Demetrius would have been charged too. But remember, he got immunity, right? So right. in a perfect yeah. world, he would have been charged <laughs> alongside R. Kelly because, you know, the law stipulates that anybody that has something to do with the bribery, no matter how small, minute the role or how large the role, all can be charged with it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just by the actions, you know, your actions, and in, which is the role you're playing in. So, J-Rock, you believe that Demetrius Smith and, uh, what's his name, Barry, did all this behind Rob's back and then presented it to him as if they were doing a publicity stunt wedding to get him to the chapel or what, the hotel. That, do you believe that they were, that they convinced Rob and Aaliyah that this was a publicity stunt? Not only do I believe it, here's my proof of it. Now, if you look, now if you remember, during the '80s and '90s, when albums are always released. There's always a six month, there's always a six month time frame mm -hmm. from the time the album released to the time the album hits a six month cycle. Now at the end of the six month cycle, in most cases, it kind of gives get, it kind of gauges the success of the album. And at the end of that time, it either gives you the time to say, well, either that you might be able to be part of a major tour, or you could have your own major tour. Leah's album dropped. About May 24th, 1994. Six months from that date would have been November of 1994, which would probably put around Thanksgiving. Now, the marriage happened August 31st, 94. That's three months from the time her album was released, which is the exact halfway point between the time when the album is debuted and in time the six month time frame ends. So that's the crucial point, and when you try to push momentum to push that album. Uh -huh. So at that point, now comes the marriage certificate. Now all of a sudden, rumors start swirling, momentum for the album starts getting pushed. Now at the end of that six-month time frame, about a week or two after, Aaliyah does an interview. And she does an interview talking about her tour, the upcoming tour that she was supposed to have. Which I believe was supposed to premiere in the mid in mid December, around December fifteenth, or start December eighteenth. Now the funny part is, the time that tour was supposed to start was the exact time that the January February nineteen ninety five edition of Vibe magazine leaked hit the hit newsstands, and I know this because a couple of days before Christmas, I bought my copy. So by the time her tour starts, Vibe magazine hits the stands, instant publicity stunt. So at what time did he fire Barry? Between 99 and 2000? Yeah, between 99 and 2000. Okay. And it came out in 2021. I mean, 20, 2001. What came out? The, the about tape. the marriage that about the man out of marriage came well, out, the marriage came out in, in December 94 going into 95 because because um the vibe magazine broke it but that was in the January February 95 edition of Vibe magazine but that was just a rumor at that time right no yeah. they, they it was a rumor because Joe Mo say when the rumor first came out 
the rumor when the rumor was out, it was you know it kind of people was paying Aaliyah to be the bad person. You know it it villainized her career. You know, and nobody wanted to work with her. Oh, so you're saying that the publicity turned into now a so-called crime because nobody would work with Aaliyah. So it was retaliation to make Kells look bad. Right. That's what Joe Mo. Well, okay. I don't know how long you were here for the live when we just listened to Joe Mo Hankinson interview. He said nobody wanted to work with Aaliyah after the publicity. You know, I did Right. I heard that part. Right. Okay. And then they had to figure out a way to get people to work with her. Because people, the people who was asking, they were asking to work. They were like, was R. Kelly going to work on the album? And they were like, no. Nah. And they were like, well, then, shit, we'll call y'all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and, and facts, and, and facts to D.V. Wild, because he just said, and they posted the certificate in that Vibe magazine. Vibe magazine, yeah. Okay, I follow you now. I mean, it's just for me, you know, you know, the legally they well as far as the court go, they have different things that they that they do. But when you look at the shit that they done put out here for people to believe, I mean, when you look at that license, all that shit the same handwriting, everything. Like the only two only two differences in the handwriting is the signatures between David Orr and the Nathan Edmonds guy. But all the rest of the shit is the same handwriting. And I ain't even no handwriting expert, but it's all the same. You know, but then you look, they say, well, this is what we want y'all to look at. This is what we want y'all to believe. Me personally, like, I'm not finna, I can't, tr I can't look at, me and no, ain't no two people got the same goddamn handwriting. Well, that's four different people. There's three different people that's writing on that paper. You know, David Orr, Nathan Edmonds. No, that's four. N David Orr, N Nathan Edmonds, R. Kelly, and Leah. That's four different people. You should have saw four different handwritings on that on that license. But you don't okay. see four. You don't see four different handwritings on this license. Now, Vi, you're gonna have to um to get your defense together because now you give you giving dueling, um, aka competing defenses right if you're saying it's a publicity stunt then you're then actually you're saying that they did get married you know and be, because they want to present it as a publicity stunt you know they got married they're using it for a publicity stunt if you're challenging the handwriting then you're saying they didn't get married and this is a falsified no, document we no, want to I'm not I'm not I'm not challenging that it didn't happen, but at the same time, when you're in a situation where you know if you know what's going on, if you knew what went on and you went you went along with it, what did it make you? Accessory to the fact, right? Right. So that don't mean you had to fill it out, but you knew what was going on. You I mean you had a choice to make. I mean, had a if you can get it for yourself, Miss Angie, on the stream, you you can't tell me that this handwriting ain't the same. Um, the Nathan M. Nathan M. That's the same. R. Kelly, a Lil. And about that, R. Kelly and Aaliyah. Well, yeah, well, you see, Nathan Edmonds, on, everything on the left side looked the same, everything on the right side looked the same, everything on the left side looked the same. The consistency of the handwriting, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of I can kind of go with that because I like, but you got to look at the different alphabets. So, you can make the A. And look at a little A. Yeah. And that's all I was doing real quick. Um about Yeah, I mean you you got no argument for me about that because you know I mean you can make the H and look at a little H. Yeah. I'm looking at the N too.
that shit don't be that consistent like that. You know, look at, ain't the, no, look at the why. Both of the why the and, same. And but but you know what is telltale? No, it's telltale. I don't know how many people would all wait a minute, blow that. Let me, let me blow it on my side. Hold on for a minute before I say this. Um, do we see it anywhere? Uh, under the name, what does that say? Under the it name, says, under, uh, 85, the, under the 85, line, 8515 Indiana. Uh uh, I'm talking where it says Nathan J. Edmonds in small print. What does that say up under there? I can't even see that shit, Miss Angie. I can't see that shit. Wait a minute. <laughs> does that say? Does that say print? It supposed to say. It supposed to say. This supposed to be signature. Well, it's, signature doesn't have to be in cursive, but does that say print? Because I, I want to. No, it says say first. It say first. Uh, then it say I see first, and I don't is know that what first? that say. Yeah, it say first. I gotta say first. Or does it say print name of does it say print name of it say print? I can't see a goddamn thing. Hold on a minute. Where it might be oh print. yeah, does it say print name of oh. okay? I was gonna say because I don't know too many um too many uh uh documents where everybody is printing. So I, I just that's why I look real quick and say there's gotta be a reason why everybody printing their name. I ain't done it, I've done it. Haven't done it in a long time, so I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, but um, also it does say print name. Okay, that gives a uh, that gives the reason why everybody well, all up is in print. All yeah, because I was gonna print. say why is everybody printing? You know, because <laughs> that's strange. You understand what I'm saying? Right. First thing that make it so to to me. Yeah. When I see it all printed, but when I see it all printed, that would make it look. The only thing that I can see that really just stand out in the handwriting is the the signature uh, at the bottom and the signature at the top in the middle right there. You know, but you know, in, in this situation, it just is all of it. The whole ordeal is crazy. And what I was saying to them earlier when I played the video of uh jomo when he was asked about the wedding like the dude like i mean I, honestly like i'm just me you know somebody somebody married my cousin illegally and and the shit was wrongful man i'm gonna put their ass on blast every chance i get yeah man that, yeah, yeah man that, that grown ass nigga married my Little cousin, man, the shit was out of pocket, whatever. Man, this man down there bit his tongue off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I can't understand the parents. I, I, I just there's a lot of shit I can't understand. You know, you understand what I'm saying? But hey, well, is it possible? Do? It's been so long, I can't remember. Is it possible that the license was filled out by? A clerk in the office. That's why the sick, the handwriting is all the same. And the only people that had to sign it was those two people. And then they take that license. But why would the, why would the clerk sign it before before the marriage? It it has to be signature of the people getting married. Why yeah again? Why would the clerk sign it, Cookie? Why would they sign it? Why would he sign it the day before the marriage? That's what I'm asking. Because you get your license first, well, and then you, you sign. You I believe you sign your certificate, you right? License, you get your license right. Then when you bring your license in, how? I mean, I'm not really sure of the process. I mean. I'm gonna give you your license, but am I gonna am I gonna seal it? Am I gonna stamp it right then and there? You pay sixty dollars. I gotta remember. I know I went to the court. You pay sixty dollars for the license. You take the license in the official that uh, officiate the wedding. He fill out the license. He bring the license back in to the clerk of court. They stamp it. Then they file it for you to get your certificate. 
So we, I'm still trying to understand if they had, if they went paid for the license and took it to Nathan, who performed the ceremony, he filled it out, he turned it back in. That means if he did it on on August the 31st, David Orr should have signed it on August the 31st. Um, you know, the person who marries you can sign it later. I do know that. But you know the strange part about that? <laughs> the minister said at first he didn't know who he no, was he, marrying. He, and, he then, and then he comes back and says, well, and the child said, well, I knew that that, that was uh, Aaliyah because Aaliyah was wearing her hair one side on one side of her face. That's bullshit because Aaliyah didn't start wearing her hair like that until after she linked up with Missy and Timberland, which is about which is around 95, 96. And at that at that point, Aaliyah and Arkell had already gone in separate ways. Arkell, Aaliyah never wore her hair like that before while she was with Arkell. It's just a lot of stuff when you when you look at it. It's just a lot of stuff that you can ask questions about. You know, and even with Nathan, but Nathan also testified that after the ceremony, he gave his license to Demetrius Smith. Demetrius Smith can't file no goddamn license to get no certificate. Well, according to the law in Illinois, the only person who can file for a certificate is the officiating of the person who officiate the wedding. So if you go and look at Edmund's uh testimony, he testified that after the trial after the wedding, he gave the damn certificate, the, the license to one of the people that was with R. Kelly preferred to meet him. Right. Demetrius Smith can't take that that license down to the clerk, the county, and file it for a certificate. Unless it's somebody he know, like he say, I got people that do stuff for me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Demetrius Smith was connected, man, in the Chicago street, so he probably had a little play to do whatever he wanted to do, you know. He mm -hmm. wanted to make happen whatever he wanted to make happen. You know, it's just... It's, just like he did to get that ID. It's just a crazy situation. Yeah. But then if you look at the ID, he tell us during his during his testimony, this still don't make sense, man, Ange. When he say he took her to get the welfare ID, but the ID didn't show her age. So how the fuck was it even good enough? Good. What was the point of it? Oh. Oh, it didn't show it. He said it didn't show it. I don't remember all the testimony. Then right it, it, during, the, during the first week of Kelly's trial, his former tour manager reluctantly testified against the singer about how he had bribed a worker at a local welfare office to make Aaliyah a welfare ID, but to it, but that it did not show her age. Damn. And you talk to people that's from Chicago, they tell you that those 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 welfare IDs is only a picture. Wait, well, what what was <laughs> what did they use? I don't know. Hey, you got this Andy stuttering. All I know is what they came in the court with. I mean, but, what you but if, you, if you buying, I mean, honestly though, if. If you buying everything, shit, what was the purpose of you? If you know people, what's the purpose of even going to get the ID? You know what I'm saying? If I know, if I know somebody who can help me cut corners, what the hell am I finna go do extra shit for? Well, maybe listen, maybe his uh connections only went so far up. <laughs> but my thing is, but check this out. But then it's like um <laughs> Like who, who accepted the money? It, who, right. Who all accepted the money? Because it was they said it was a public official that accepted the public the money, official. Right? The public official had to be that were had to work in that office, right? Uh -huh. Those were the ones that worked in that office. Somebody that worked in that office. 
So I'm like you, you like, why would they need a? He need to go through all that to get an ID and all of that. Oh, I, no, man, I, that's, I, man, Angie, what? If, and Miss Angie, if you worked in the county and I know if in the DMV or something, and I need a license or something, and I know you perceive you say, "Why I can get you one." I'm not finna come down that motherfucker with my birth certificate and shit. I'm coming straight to you. Right, right. <laughs> I'm so coming when straight to you. Oh, now, when you they needed something for the actual records. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a like a, a voided looking, you know, because you need you need they need copies <laughs> of this, that, and the third right. for the actual records. And need unless they need to put something in the records, like some paperwork. Right. And that's and that's the whole my whole thing. What I I try to tell people a lot, you know, with what I do, I don't come on here. I don't like. I don't come on here to try to call people a lot. I just look at some of this shit that I read, and and I'm like, man, what the hell? Like, yeah. I guess I wouldn't be good at it. I wouldn't be good as a criminal. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's just certain shit that I'm just not going out my way to do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's easy if they need to get something for the paperwork. If they, if they need to go down there to get something put in the paperwork, that would mean you would have to have like a birth certificate to state their age. They only have a real government issue. What they what they consider government issued IDs, birth certificate, yeah, government ID, government drive license, passport, visa, shit like that. Not no damn public. A welfare, I never heard that shit. That a welfare ID is equivalent to a library card. No, I'm talking about to get the ID. You said, you know, when you talk about the public official that he went to to get the ID, and you said he would no, have to. Not a public official to get the ID. He went to the no, welfare office. Yeah, the public official to get the, that they brought the license. Them. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He went there to get the license, but he went to the welfare office where they give out food stamps to Section A. He probably saw Roshona ass down there. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, big man. Oh, they're going to get you in the morning. You're going to go You're going to go viral. You gonna go viral. <laughs> no, I hope I don't. I hope I don't go viral, man. Viral. I, don't really, I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to. Uh, I ain't trying to call no insurrections at the White House. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm, okay. Hey, listen here. If these, you know, Kanye Weston got sued, and I done paid my twenty not twenty one dollars and eighty cent for this book, this civil suit, and these uh um so and sos out in Los Angeles, they they system is really crazy. They make you pay for everything. You know when you're trying to get the documents, and now I can't I can't get it. And they close now. You know I'm about to listen. I don't want to go off tonight, but listen, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna go viral. I'm gonna cause an insurrection. <laughs> I'm my paperwork. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy though. It, 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 it's this whole. But you know, one thing I can say that I've learned since you know, since dealing with this case and following this case. And it's you know how important it is to have people around you that have your best interests at heart, man. And when you dealing it, one thing about life, we as people, you know, we can't we can't deal with life as uh as a, a forward moving object and just not not look at the things that we put into the universe. That not look at the things that we've done. Whether right. those things were right, whether those things were wrong, whether they were indifferent, don't matter. But a lot of us, especially us as men, you know, we don't we I don't think we as men get enough. We understand how important it is to address certain issues at the point of the issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, and I, and that's something that I had to I've I've grown to learn and grown to understand. Sometimes you have to address shit where you meet it at, because if you don't, that same issue that you saw a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, <clears throat> some of this shit will come back five, six years later, 
and you like, damn, where the hell you come from? I thought I was done with it, you know. And it's it's very important though, you know, as men or as women, whatever we do, we need to make sure that we are ending and finishing things the way that it's supposed to be to make yeah. sure that there's an understanding that hey, I'm going my way, yeah, your way. No hard feelings here. You know, mm. I wish you the best. Whatever the situation may be, and we separate and go the way we go. But when you don't have that, when you leave that shit open, man. Yeah. You leave, you leave, you leave uh room for you know, you leave room for things to grow. You know, right. and, and that's just that's something that I've learned. You know, over the last five years, uh, just being on YouTube, looking at some of this stuff and looking at some of these different cases. And that's why I never I never chose to make it my point to debate people or go back and forth because everybody's entitled in my in my eyes, everybody had their own opinion. I don't I don't want everybody to think like me or look at me but if i can sit here and see something and say well then this ain't making sense i'm gonna say it don't make sense to me well right. then, explain right. it to me and say well then you maybe you ain't look at this or look at that but i just recently got the mitigation report uh sent to me and i have you know been reading it and going over so you know a lot of a lot of the other shit that i didn't understand I, I understand a little bit more now, but then at the same time, I just I'm looking at things that just based off of the trial, how you know we talk about bad act witnesses. You know, what is a bad act witness? What do a bad act witness look like? When you talk about people come and give victim impact statements who wasn't even a part of the trial. Like what? Yeah. I get it. I mean, you know, I, I definitely get it. So, but I have I've never been I've never been um I've never been um I was never too much um I was never too much into the uh this type of shit before this trial came about. Who is Lisa Trash? Say who is that clown talking? I don't know who that is. Mm. Who is Lisa Trash? Cause I'm finna put a foot dead up your ass, up out of here. <laughs> ain't nobody over here, no clown, man. If you ain't, I ain't, I ain't finna sit and say if you coming in here respectful, I'm finna get your ass up out of here. You gone. <laughs> Yeah, ain't gonna listen from the outside. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, how the cage! Oh, how the cage bird sing! Oh man, you know what? Right, you know got down woodpecker really pick. Oh shit! Well, you know what? And here's the thing, right? Where sometimes where a lot of how a lot of um defense attorneys win their cases, right? Because you have prosecutors that commit to a storyline. They said, this is how it happens, happened. And because they have to make all of that, you know, just like that whole story about that marriage, they have to make that, and I hate using this term, make that make sense, right? then you have if you have a a um a real shrewd and a crafty defense attorney they're gonna be like wait a minute hold on you know mm -hmm. well this don't this don't make sense how y'all said it happened and the difference maker in the jury in a juror juror's eyes would be hey if what the prosecutor said doesn't make sense regardless of the evidence they put forth we're gonna have to side with the defense because 
if it doesn't make sense in us in in our minds that will invalidate that evidence you know what i'm saying so it's all kinds of sometimes you got to win your case by that (laughs) you got hey a win is a win you understand what i'm saying Mm -hmm. sometimes um you know you you at if you ask the the jury if the prosecutor asked the jury to use their common sense Mm -hmm. and if understanding that story and the evidence that they're using to support that story doesn't make sense then the jury may go just with the fact that hey this don't make no damn sense right but how do you i mean i i i kind of and i i know it's it's kind of late but i know like with the with the with the jurors and i know with whoever did the jury selection you know how like how do you how do you even how do you even allow you know for someone to say you know yeah i watched this docu series but i feel like i can be fair and impartial like there's no way you know the funny part about that violin you said that because i remember there was one particular juror that was asked um i don't know if it was a uh, defense or the prosecution and then they said well uh you know uh do you think it can be fair and then and then this person said well i can give it a shot ain't nobody asked you to play no damn video game <laughs> it's a damn man's life online up there talking about i don't know i'll give it a shot <laughs> see and that's the type of shit that you got going on with these jurors in this trial and everything else talking about like like like, like they're gonna be so cavalier about it like it was a damn joke when you got all this stuff that's going on all this corruption you got you getting convictions overturned based that's on right. evidence and people been in jail for better part of 10 years or more some some, some 20 and 30 years when dna or, su- or suppressed evidence come up and then overturn the conviction i just don't like the way people be so cavalier and so flip about it well that's the biggest one of the biggest uh money grab the, the biggest money thing that's going on in the united states right now is overturn convictions and the simple fact that in chicago is where's the you hear a lot in chicago chicago i think louisiana up there too because i've been but louisiana they got some shit going on with the laws down there now the 10 it's called 10 2 or some shit like that they try to abolish it or somewhere you know you had to be found guilty on it. Well, a unanimous, ju- you know, everybody has to find you guilty or whatever, you know, in order for you to go to and go or whatever the situation may be. That's the stuff they got going on down there. But just, you know, I look at this shit. I just, for me, if it the less, the less would have been more persuasive for me. I feel like it was just. The more shit that they did, the more that they accused, and the more that they came out with, and the more they alleged happened, it kind of like it made me, it put me in a different, it put me in a different spot with, you know. What Overkill. I'm yeah, the less probably would have persuaded, it, it convinced me more. But the more when when you look at the people though, the people involved, you know what I'm saying. If I got cousins that still motherfucker, you ain't coming in my house unattended. I gotta watch your ass. You need to flip all your pockets out the whole time you over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I need to see your hands in the front of you. You know, all these people who were criminals, and like the man said, you mean to tell me I haven't done nothing good for nobody? You mean everybody I ever met, I was a monster to? All right. It's crazy, man. I'm the one that's broke with no money, but everybody I met, <laughs> everybody I, met I was a bad person too. Yeah. You know? And see, and Vi, it's funny that you say that because if you really look at it, everybody is making money off his name except for him. Mm. Don't say that too, fag. They'll say I'm making money. I'm over here, bitch, living in a hood. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> you know what you know like when it comes to the picking of jurors and things of that nature um i mean me personally i wouldn't have 
allowed somebody on no on no juror that have seen any type of you know any type of documentary about about him however it probably would be kind of hard to take you know strike somebody because they know him or uh, and know of you know his alleged history but seeing that that documentary i mean you know i don't know how many people roughly seen it so and you know that would be striking someone for for cause and and you know i think then you you get unlimited strikes for that meaning you can remove somebody cause they seen the documentary you know with uh, um so with that i don't know i don't know why his team i, I can't i'm i'm i'm, I'm, you, I'm not gonna ask you about Andy. can huh? you i say i'm not gonna ask you you tell me uh you know what i'm saying you know you know i'm not gonna ask you you tell me well why i saw i saw i saw i saw what the, they put out about you you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna ask you where you think you could be uh unbiased about you know the situation you know what i'm saying because some of the shit that these people gonna testify to might be some of the stuff that you heard in this damn docu series or whatever so I'm not for the actual thing you do the job. Hell no. But that's actually a part of the process. So you got you gotta if someone says, Hey, you know, um, well, you don't really have to have to, but that is the subset of questions. Like when you when you a juror says, you know, hey, um, I've experienced this or this, that, and the third, whatever, your next subset of questions is like, can you still be impartial can you still be distant because you're supposed to be you're supposed to aid in that guarantee that that mm -hmm. person can be fair to that defendant okay it's on that's uh that's um that's what their constitution allows and then that can come back on you during the appellate process or whatever so mm -hmm. um yeah you, know, you, you know, know, me off of jury before that. and mm -hmm. They struck me off a jury before. They had they called me to do jury duty, making my home time. But the guy, you know, uh, you know, when they when they when they presented, you know, what the little shit to us. Well, I knew the well, it's a, we were from a small town, so when you knew when they send you, when you go in there, you they tell you what you're gonna be looking at. I knew right away that I was going to be fucked up because of the because it's a small town, man. Everybody know yeah. everybody, but at the same time, oh. this particular guy he had he had jumped on my uncle like it was oh, like no. <laughs> like it was it was past yeah. it was some it was some time had passed you know you know oh, okay. it wasn't no relevant it wasn't no recent stuff but you know but still. It's a small town. The sheriff been the sheriff twenty some years, oh. you know. So everybody know everybody. The police, the police is drive their cars home. They park in the yard. Everybody know everybody. Oh, okay, so, yeah. you know. I guess they, uh, you know, I, I wasn't able to be on that jury due to the uh, conflict uh -huh. with my uncle and the guy, whatever the situation may be. Uh -huh. Shit, I ain't get. They didn't even ask me if I could do the job. <laughs> Hey, they already took you on up out of there. Yeah, my home, my, like, my, my nah. homie, my homie my, but my homie, I have a friend. He he was actually he 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 got to serve. They gave me what it was fucking uh. They 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 sent that shit out one time, another time before. But ain't you know with the town being as small as it is, man. Shit, ain't too many people who can fucking go in the courtroom that you don't know. You oh, know, wow. You know, really? so it's it, that's just how that's how it is. Everybody, when we had that's why I don't come on this internet, you know, and do all the stuff. Well, you know, the back and forth and different stuff like that. Man, I grew up, we fought every day. You had a problem with somebody, you saw them. It was one high school, yeah. one, two elementary schools, but you got one middle school, one high school. Your ass either knew how to fight or you got your ass beat up. 
Yeah. Every day. Until until somebody say, man, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I'm done with that. So, you know, but I, I appreciate, man, like I say, my biggest thing if don't uh, what if for everybody, for everybody on here, you know, whether you for our Kelly, against our Kelly, in the middle, whatever. Man, hopefully you didn't. Hopefully people just didn't learn stuff from this information that's yeah. been put out. You know, what I'm saying, learn the laws and understand the laws and all the different things like that. Understand what's going on. What's like, especially now we see the shit with P Diddy, and you know, in the in the list going to continue to go on. So at this point, you know, for people out there, you really need to be sharpening up your tool. With mm-hmm. you know, with this type of information, that's you know, with these laws when it comes down to certain things, you know, uh, because like this woman said, right now, women, women, when these, when a lot of these women find out that they ain't got to bust a motherfucker t- windows no more, they ain't got to cut <laughs> no ties no more, it's over with. <laughs> They busting windows and cutting ties, putting stuff <laughs> in the gas tank, going to jail. Now all they got to do is come and say a motherfucker made them have sex, forced labor. Yeah, yeah. You know, he flew me. He flew me out of town. Had sex with me. Stop answering the phone for me. Now you got a sex trafficking charge. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? That's crazy. That is crazy. That's really um, where we at. And, yeah. And a lot of women, it, oh, it's a lot I mean, of women it's, don't it's understand that because, like, um, they don't ever understand. When when I was in the game, of course, I, I was in, in the game on the other side way more than, on way, way, way more than the defense side. That was pretty much um, public defender work. But um, it, it the, the, the uh probable cause has just dropped and like what you know what you usually had to take to you know to secure or an arrest to secure a warrant anything was like mm-hmm. up there right now it's pretty much you can just go on to the bench say hey judge hey hey, hey. uh i'm gonna need you I, mean, I need you to sign up on this right quick i need to go yeah, get this real quick it's yeah. sensitive out here right now. We we yeah. live in an era where you know people don't people don't want to you know this ain't an era we want to people wanted to see. And yeah. now you got you know you got you got people out. You got a lot of shit going on in the world, and now women or men you know aren't being made to take accountability. You know, for choices that they make. You know, so I I, I just want to keep enlightening myself with the information and freshening up on the information. You know, people people gonna have opinions always. You know, what I'm saying I never tell somebody they wrong. I never, you know, I let I let people speak their opinion. And I stand on my opinion, and then you know that's that's respect, that's agreeing to disagree, whatever the situation may be. But I appreciate you, Miss Angie, for coming over. And see, people, you come over here, people get to see another side of you. And I and I had to take my hat off to you, but when you come over here, you turn it down a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling you, big vibe. I appreciate I appreciate the <laughs> respect that you have, and I respect you for what you know for how you come over here and we have our conversation and we talk about certain things. But you know it'd be hard to come to certain when you got you know people they know what they know where they can turn up at and different things. But no, I appreciate you know you coming over here and explaining some different things to us. And hopefully, people. I always tell people a lot of time, we have to, we have to get out of the, we have to stop worrying about the messenger, and start listening to the message that's being put out because it's the information that's the most important. 
if I allow myself to say I don't like somebody, now I'm gonna tell you, I got certain places I never go. Now I'm telling you that that that's for sure. Certain <laughs> a certain certain people I would never deal with. That's but at the same time, I'm willing to listen to a message because, like you say, man, I can't allow this guy. To, if I look at this guy, man, that's my enemy, man. Fuck him, I know. But what if he telling me, man, hey, man, you might not want to go up the street, man. You might get caught in a crossfire. You know, me, man, I'll fuck that nigga. Walk up the street, get shot. Now I'm in the hospital bed wishing I would listen to him. All right. And see, the ignorant mind would, would only think that I wrote the law. I didn't write it. <laughs> I didn't write none of it. And some of it I, I do, you know, have a, have a problem with. Like I said, I'll never agree with anybody being tricked into a crime you know lying about your age and all that type of stuff uh-uh okay because i know how sensitive the law is when it comes to people under the age of 18. you understand what i'm saying i mean that, that i mean with contract law is it's crazy you know you know when you enter into a contract with a minor that you didn't know was a minor and so on and so forth you understand what i'm saying right so um, and they get on payment um, plans with you, and then they don't want to pay no more, and they still got the product. I yeah, I listen to you. Yeah, you know, I listen to you. Yeah, you know, I listen to you. You know, I listen to you. During that oral argument, you know, with Jennifer, you know, with Jennifer say, yeah, the age of consent, yeah. the age of consent in certain states is 16, 17. But once you record someone, it becomes federal. Mm -hmm. So on a federal consent, you have to be 18. You know, so right. this person has to be 18. Federally, mm -hmm. consent when you are feminine. So like adult content, you know what I'm saying? So that was something I'm like, damn. But, you know, how, how many people... Man, it's probably millions of people out here that didn't know that. Yeah, they can be. Yeah, you can be charged. At that point, you can be charged both in the state and federal. Yeah, but it's. I mean, it's just. A, it's just a lot, and and you know, most times I don't have to. You know cut the fool and stuff like that no more whatever but you know i i will <laughs> no. so you started with me baby it's gonna be on yeah. and popping you even though oh, yeah. you you know over there somewhere i'm like listen i can still hey you call my name i will answer that i mean like like what we doing but um yeah but Hey, and it's just, and and that's why I always wanted it to be. I wasn't going, and there, there, there's not too many attorneys I know that, that have come out and spoken out on the case that picked the side. Not unless they were just. I've heard like um two on um you know Infamous Channel that picked the you know picked the side or whatever. But for the most part, they are um um. Uh, if anything, they gravitate to more of the defense side because um, of the appeals process and things of that nature, whatever. So, um, and you just, you know, um, I, I'm not supporting anybody. So I'm not looking at it through the eyes of a supporter. You know, I'm looking at it legally because that's where he's being held. And I'm figuring mm -hmm. out either how to get him out or to keep him in. Either, either or i'm gonna read you know i'm gonna read the paperwork and we're gonna do the exercises and we're gonna have the conversations to support both you know what i'm saying both trains of thoughts not just you know one side and the other mm -hmm. you know whatever and i don't have nothing against nobody that do do it whatever but i i can tell you there to me that there's a lot of junk commentary when it comes to the the case whatever because it be just packed with a lot of conspiracy theories and stuff like that and and i just can't i can't hear too much of all that foolishness you know what i'm saying and that's why i always say i love listening to your channel i love 
now listening to provoke because um i think db turned me on to him um db turned me on to a lot of stuff but you know and i'm like yeah well i can listen to people that have common sense solutions to the law it might not be fit into some kind of statue or whatever but these are common sense solutions to the law and you just don't know how law, how many laws were amended to mm-hmm. fit and accommodate common sense solutions you understand what i'm saying if that makes sense so yeah i i love that um you know i love what y'all be talking about oh yeah you know but people you know they always you know they take the stuff and they twist it and make it to what they want no matter what you say and how you say it people gonna take it and twist it to what they want to twist it to but you know with these type of dialogues is what people don't this is not what they want to see they want to see the back and forth they want to see you know the cussing and all the different stuff like that but you know that 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 doesn't solve anything. That doesn't get us nowhere. You know, right. we trying to, we all trying to learn. We all trying to, you know, learn something from all of this stuff. Whether you know we a part of it or not a part of it, you know, we never know when this information that we learn through research we may have to use one day. You just right. never know, right? So that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, cut y'all. Go ahead. No, you good. No, I like I always say, I say I want everybody that you know that have an encounter with me. And when I mean encounter, like listen to me talk about law, whatever part I explain, to be able to assist yourself or a family member or a friend. If you ever get an indictment or a piece of paperwork and you go to look at it and be like, okay. I want you to be able to go right there and look at those elements and say, okay, can they prove this? Can they prove that? Can they prove that? Because you know what you did, okay? And you know what you didn't do. And you'll know if there's if there is any evidence out there to suggest that you did. You understand what I'm saying? And if you can look at that indictment and say, okay, I did this or I didn't do this or they can't prove this or whatever, you become the greatest assistance to your attorney. You just don't know how much. You just don't know how much. You understand what I'm saying? You want you want to be just, just I mean, so knowledgeable about the law. I mean, you just don't know how how um attorneys love clients who are some at least have some kind of inclination of what's going on about the paperwork if you're going to just look at that paperwork so okay look at these elements turn it uh sir a uh, sir ma'am hey look at these elements right here so and so so and so so and so you know you going over with them they be like okay we can work on this case together and and you have a general mm-hmm. understanding of what's going on that's all i be hoping for that's it well we know how it is man you know, we get to the cookout. Somebody gonna have gin. Somebody gonna have vodka. You know, motherfucker gonna have Bush, Two Eleven, Steel, Old Loco, Mad Dog. You know, there's too many people drinking different shit and going down eventually. You know what I'm saying? But right, you know, at least everybody's sober. <laughs> you know right, <laughs> right. I, I try to keep the people sober over here so we can have a good conversation, but. Right. <laughs> I go down. I go down when they leave. Then you know. Now don't go get no DWI when you leave here. Now. Okay. Okay, baby. Yeah, you know, they be man, on it. Man, I want to say, I like I said, man, Angie, man, I really like I said, I thank you for coming over. Thank you for hopping on and, uh, you know, explaining some some of the things to us, you know, and for some of the people. You know, and I really appreciate it. Like you say, man, I, I can't anytime people come over and they respectful, you know, we can always, you know, respect each other's mm-hmm. opinion, regardless of what we stand in, in the middle. As long as we know these conversations we have, you know, most of the time when I get off of here, I may not be on this YouTube or doing them, but I think about the stuff we talk about 
and some will click in my head. I'll just make a little note, say, man, let me go and look this up. You know, let me go look this up when I get on the laptop tomorrow and try to see what this, you know, information lead me to. So J-Rock, uh, Lex, Miss Cookie, and Miss Cookie, and she, we know Cookie always have questions. So, you know, <laughs> she had questions and we sparked the continuation of this live. You know, this is a six hour live. So, you know, I'm going to do, I got a 24 hour live coming up. You know, I want to do this 24 hour live in a way that I want to do it in a way that this shit is going to be special. I mean, it's going to be electrifying. So it may be, it may consist of some shit that I'm, I'm going to talk to my guys. So, and I'm, and I'm going to get in touch with you. If, 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 and see what they think about this format. And okay. we probably can do a 24 hour live and, and we probably can make this shit look like, you know, like a, like a, like a courtroom, you know, like a, a okay. court setting type. But, you know, I don't want it to, you know, we have to make sure we get, we doing it with mature people who going to have a yeah. uh, <laughs> mature conversation. Because we don't we don't, we want the people to hear the the information, not the you know, not all the other stuff, you know what I'm saying? And and that that that's gonna and a lot of this shit is gonna gonna show like man, people can come together, you know. That 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 uh -huh. the biggest thing right now is they don't believe that they they don't believe in people being able to come together and right. make it happen, you know. Right. Uh positive manner and like you say man i i got a lot of different ideas in my head when it comes to this youtube stuff and in ways that it can help it can help all the way around the board you know this yeah. this shit is it, so much we can do on youtube to to benefit you know and whenever you know whenever i Whenever we talk about it and think about it and try to put it together, uh, put it together and then see what we come up with. But most definitely, I most definitely reach out, you know, reach out to you and see, you know, what we could do, you know. And I know a lot of people, but a lot of people, I, I can guarantee, I know a lot of people follow my platform just simply because of the way that it is. You know, yeah. it, ain't, it ain't a lot of commotion going on. Right. So, and that's 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 the thing that I enjoy the most when I come on here. So and Miss yeah. Cook, shout out to you. Be peaceful. You know, sometimes I gotta check some people, but other than that, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. but like you say, if, you know, if I'm like you said at first, if I'm called for I I respond, you know, and yeah, and that's the thing. That's how that's is your platform to run the way you choose to run it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And people have to understand that. Like for me, I don't. I'm not gonna let nobody that come on my channel get disrespected, and, and it's vice versa. So if I set the tone as respect is the number one thing on the platform, then if you've not been if if somebody's not being disrespectful, it's not okay for the people to be disrespectful. You know, it's just you have to eliminate it. And when you do that, and people understand, even if it's not, even if it's people that you don't like, you still can reserve your opinion. You know what I'm saying? Because at the same time, you know, we didn't did the back and forth. We didn't did the the fighting, the battling. It. Well, I haven't ever did it, but I'd have seen it, you know, and that just me watching it is what gave me the idea to do it the way that I do it, you know. Um, Miss Cook and DV, I don't know what's going on with y'all. Been waiting on y'all. I ain't seen y'all in about a month. I know. I, I was going through some personal stuff with my grandbaby and my daughter, so I'm I'm getting back into the routine. Okay, that's what I got y'all for, so I can see my voice alive. But I sure appreciate you allowing me on your panel. It's always a pleasure. 
Most definitely. I can't wait to y'all get y'all y'all show on the road. You know, y'all y'all been missing in action, but I know y'all will be back on the road soon. Oh well, yes. My brother uh provoked thought. I ain't seen him tonight. I ain't see or uh, Sir Miguel came in earlier. My brother Lex, Uncle Muse, you know, he, he got some personal things going on, but he'll be back, you know, and um I say man, it, it, I can't say it enough. You know, I this was a great lie today. I hate that Miss Angie came late because early in the live we were listening to uh, you know, Joe Moberry, you know, listening to Barry, Hank in itself uh listening to who else do we play j rock i think it was oh yeah hip-hop uncensored just showing how you know years ago how they how he was speaking about mr kelly versus uh you know how they recently came out and spoke about mr kelly totally different. But, you know just oh, different wow. stuff like yeah. that. how people change you know they they, they were saying one thing back then and now they and some totally different. Oh, and wow. see, you know, go ahead. Oh, I'm, uh, well, and, and see, that's what kind of made me jump on because after the hip hop uncensored and everything, how their opinions change, but still wanted to hold on to the Leah marriage and the tape. And my and my thought process has always been, if you debunk them two narratives, there's nothing left you can hold on to. They don't even talk about hypnotic and password at all. No, 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 no. They ain't gonna talk about hypnotic. Let me tell you something. You and and I told you, and I told you to your face. I said, why am I gonna go out there, get all the video, do all that research, do this, and Big Biden already done it. Uh-uh. I said, do all that. <laughs> I'm just gonna pop him in. <laughs> he ain't gonna listen to Big Biden. <laughs> hey, he's, he's done the work for me. Like what? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, and and that's one thing. I, y'all don't know. I listen to you and provoke when I be at work. I don't supposed to be doing that. I put y'all in my ear. I be like, oh, okay. And then you know, you you be showing a video, and I pop my phone. Out. I say, oh, okay, because uh, I don't know. I don't get knee deep in into all this. Stuff. I don't know all these different people and all of that. I don't know these people. You know, I know them when I hear y'all talk about them. That's my education. I get from y'all. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, the one chick. The one chick said, uh, what she said. Oh, uh, she said that she was drinking hypnotic before it came out. And then the other chick said she went to the airport and gave the people a pass code. And and she she went up to Minnesota. Then she got back to Georgia. Then she went up to Chicago, and all this other shit, you know. And then, and then you had somebody else talking about that they was at the Black Expo at one year, and then it was a totally and, and it was a totally different year at the one that they was at. Yeah, she went to the Black Expo and saw Coolio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, but oh. well, that's it, y'all, man. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, man. It's twelve thirty one my time, so. Man, like I say, it, it, it was a good live. When them lives had you don't want to get off, you know it was a great one. You know, wow. it, but I'm going to yeah. get off and get me some uh, shit out. Y'all know I got these goddamn braces in my mouth, so my goddamn mouth raw as a goddamn dog right now. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go clean them and shit so I can get ready to lay down. Money caps. I see Angie. Well, I hope you feel better, big, big, uh, big five. Oh yeah, I, I, man, I'm telling you, I had it. I feel like a motherfucker stuck me and punched the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> got that ear ache. Almost took me out. I had to go to the ER, boy. They gave me them antibiotic ear drops. Boy, I'm back now, though. I'm back. All right, praise God. YouTube ain't gonna YouTube gonna get this work, motherfucker. Thank you. Uh, I might <laughs> too well, but I'm come back. You know what I'm saying? What what that mm. motherfucker ain't smoke it, Craig ain't smoke it. How much money y'all get? How much money I got? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we got about two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, but you know, but Big Bad, you so fun. Honey, I had the one the my favorite. Now my favorite cut, not to cut you off, but my favorite cut up moment is when that child calls you old cold. Honey, I hollers every time I put it on. <laughs> Cause Look. I listen, I wasn't checking your your pressure, but I can feel that it was going up through the phone, honey. <laughs> you know, man. I'm I say that. <laughs> Like that girl, man. I don't wanna, you know, and that's, know. that's yeah, the type uh, of person. That's the type of person I can't talk to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, I can. You can't talk to a, a one a one track minded person. You know what I'm saying? You sometimes you have to sit the ass out in the road and let the traffic get them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, big boy, did Miss Auntie tell you my theory about what? About oh, your, your girl. No, nah, she did. I, well, I heard she I, hit a motherfucker well, well, with a shovel, man. I think <laughs> J-Rock will did. agree. I told Miss Angie, and I want you to think about this. You know how old girl is always telling us to listen to Demetra Smith? She's always trying to tell us we ain't paying attention to Demetra Smith. Uh -huh. And remember when you did a live and you talked about the marriage and you said how the minister... Um, was around 75 years old, about the age that maybe Demetrius, that maybe they might be friends, uh -huh. you know, since he know people that know people. So I got to thinking, I said, she keep telling us to pay attention to Demetrius Smith. And if you think about the baby that was supposed to have been happening with Demetrius Smith and the Dude. other young lady, <laughs> you think that might be the child and she's Demetrius' <laughs> daughter? And hey. she's hey. Hey. Oh Oh, I'm tell yeah. you Let me tell you something. I seen that mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna say this. Have you ever seen look? Hold on. When I seen that mug shot, this was the first thing that came to my mind. I'm gonna tell you, man. Hold on. I seen it on somebody's page, and I said, "What the fuck? That can't be real." <laughs> and it was real. I'm telling you, that's his child. She oh. she mad at him about something, and she trying to tell us. That's why she always tell you, pay attention to what Demetrius is saying. Pay attention She's telling on her daddy. She. Uh, man, look at this. Is the first thing I saw right here. <laughs> oh my God, Big Boy. <laughs> Damn. I don't see that yet. You don't see it, Miss Angie? Uh -uh, I don't see that yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, you know, Lord, I see it. <laughs> Baby, honey, oh, my goodness. Oh. I say, how the hell? She look like the goddamn shovel attacked her. <laughs> <laughs> but that girl kept fucking with me. You know, I, I don't have I nothing. To, I don't have nothing against her. But, you know, I when she came on, I asked her nicely. I said, are you going to, you know, apologize for, you know, and like I say, I don't have nothing against old Cole, but you not yeah. been, you know, if I'm from the South side and I'm repping the South side, you know, it may not be best for me to go on the West side. I ain't trying to get hit with no lock in the sock. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have the same reaction with people that try to, Put me in the the old code, whatever. Not, I mean, it's just I don't want to be put in no group. I have the same reaction. If you put me in any group, mm -hmm. you know. In the you fact that she double down on it, like, oh, I got the text message. You got the text message just saying that you text me and I wasn't responding. What the fuck? Are you yeah. here? That was crazy. Then when she said, and I said, okay, now she is being being known as a little liar. Man, I blocked me. her on all four four phases. YouTube, <laughs> X, 
formerly Twitter, formerly, <laughs> ex formerly known as Twitter. My 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 call in number and my goddamn email address. That's right. <laughs> Oh, oh, she got four levels of defense on her. Ass. Uh, uh, that was crazy. She said, You text me. I was like, Oh, baby, this is gonna get good. I told her, Put the text up. She said, I don't know how to do that. She I don't told to do that. Lie. Then, lie. I say, Well, I text him, he wouldn't respond back. So I just, just because a person don't respond back, they may be in the middle of something. Mm. You know, I don't have to respond. I pay this motherfucking bill every month. I choose to respond back to who I want to respond to. Right. Right. That was crazy. That was crazy. I said, of all people, she said, big value? <laughs> oh, yeah. on, <clears throat> well, I tell the pen on when I when I open a message from my kid's mama, depending on what to say, I might text back if that motherfucker say a couple, two or three hundred dollars, I might have to wait to respond. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me uh, come up. Let me come up with it first. Then I hit you. What's up? <laughs> but she, uh, okay. but she had, like, I just had to respond to her. But she got her ass gone. You know, she go do Mary had a little lamb somewhere and chill. You know, but yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like doing stuff. I don't like being that way because yeah. of you know, I care about it. But at the same time, I ain't gonna let you disrespect. First, you disrespect me, but you showed me you had some nuts because you hit the link. You come on my on my page. Yeah. <laughs> link, yeah. I'm like, you know, we gotta straighten the business out first. See, I can't I can't front you nothing when you ain't paid for the last shit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you gonna apologize? <laughs> you did tell me that. I'm like, baby. Now, when you she hit the, you did tell me that. I said those words would never come out of Big Rise's mouth. That's when you know somebody is lying. You are Man, lying. So many people, you know, I heard so many, you know, people say, "Man." They they got the video and they like, "Man, look, Big Vibe, I know for a fact." That ain't big vibe, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> There's so many Thank you. shout out to all of them people who you no, know, I, I told people I remember one time, you know, somebody uh my girl, one of the old good girls, truth, she came over here, she did a whole live by me. Somebody made a fake page, went over there. And she said, uh, even people in her chat, big vibe ain't coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> right that's like huh out of all people that's the light i mean that's the lie you gonna come out with? girl by now, oh, now you getting crazy i said i said baby you ain't getting crazy that motherfucker been crazy yeah yeah but she been crazy but yeah. i said now you are only i said then i then when i heard Poe Derek, um uh no, no. <laughs> I, I, and i got to go back and find the live because i i didn't hear the whole thing but all i heard because i was at work listening and i heard him you know how he had greet greeted her it was so dry he about, mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so different but the reason why motherfuckers don't want to come on your platform is because she over here <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do some. I gotta do some. Man, that one. That one. I say, dude, we got a wrench too. Boy, I better tread lightly. <laughs> oh, oh, she had a wrench over on there. Oh, she had one. She her car broke down when she fucked with me. <laughs> <laughs> there just didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> Oh hey, no! He, he went and found a fucking shade tree mechanic. He <laughs> <laughs> oh, ain't no. He ain't no. Oh man, that thing was fun. Man, to my brother, he was like, "Now, nah, Aldra, I'm gonna need you to chill out now. Keep on." <laughs> 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 she said. She said, I ain't asked for it anyway. Then nigga Derek said, all right, you gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to go see that last. I ain't hear none of that. 
I got to go see because on thing I heard with him saying, "Oh, she don't have a wrench no more," and what he was telling about what happened. I was like, "Well, what she done did to Paul Derrick?" I was there when it happened. <laughs> For real, I was there. <laughs> Derrick left her ass on four flats on a Cadillac. Uh, uh, I remember that live when she came in there like, mm hmm. Uh, he was talking real dry to her. I was like, okay, but I didn't know. Then, then um, I heard him say, you know, tell what had happened with her. I was like, oh lord, oh that's funny. That's funny. She just going. I'm like, baby, you ain't gonna be able to go to nowhere but two places, honey. Two. She I mean, all in another sector cutting the food. Yeah, even up there, she need to she need to go to she need to go on MySpace or something. <laughs> she ain't gonna be she gonna be that by herself ain't gonna be on MySpace. <laughs> That's why I mean that. That's why I said it. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. I ain't about on MySpace. Oh, uh, I'm like the girl already in another sec in the Nesto sector mm-hmm. cutting the food, and the people yeah. come right off and say, "She said that girl, that lady said something wrong with you." I said, uh-huh. Yeah, that motherfucker, first motherfucker got 30 years of back pay for being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 30 years. Oh, Lord. This is crazy. I'm like, huh? Oh. I don't think about when they said she hit somebody with a shovel. You know, they had that Mimi going around when the white woman hit that woman with that fucking shovel. <laughs> oh no, uh, uh, it's a meme like that. Oh it's a no, meme like that. I matter of fact, I gotta I gotta go back and find whoever lie that was and take a mug shot. And then you know I could put on Pinterest form and put her on that woman. Yeah. Oh Lord, he's a, and then try oh I'm trying to tell you that's why paperwork is a must. She gave that story, and I'm like her version of the story. Get the paperwork. And I, it's a totally different version of the story. Her and now we know that she lied. It was her okay. version. It's her version of everything. Yeah. Then she, she talked, she would talk in first person as if she was right there when the shit was going on. Like she grabbed the dick and put it in herself. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> where are you at? Well, I was in, well, then shut up talking to me. <laughs> yeah, you that's me like goddamn what's her name uh cheryl mack mojo whooped the thing gotta start sucking it right in front of her. come on yeah that's a, come on man she want to come out here that girl that girl audrey man i hope she get the help that she need before she elevates yeah. from this planet man because yeah. uh that sister right there bro i can imagine yeah, the people who live with her and then, then you, when you go to a YouTube channel, she got the last name of the man that uh, you know that uh, the man that don't uh, well, he married the other the woman that he hit in the head that she hit in the head with a show. Yeah, like, yeah, that's crazy. That man, that man was on that nine one one call sounding desperate. You know when y'all be in a jam. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, I can't even find a YouTube channel. I can't look a name up. I done blocked her ass so good. Oh, no. You know, I did that live. I played it all, honey. That man was desperate. That man was like, did you say your last night? Did you say your last night? That man was desperate to get it straight. Damn. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh. He was like, did you say your last night? Did you say your last night? And she stood that same old monotone non-assuming attitude like yeah you know, like everything is fine i'm like girl everything isn't fine you crazy and the cops are on the way yeah hitting people in the head yeah man that's crazy that's some bad business there though well mm. you know they got a place they got a place for motherfucker like that called insane asylum she go in there and, yeah man, Put her ass in the muzzle with the fucking arms in the front, cross to the back. <laughs> you know, anybody, she, anybody who who public defender negotiates you a misdemeanor charge, get get you down to misdemeanor. 
no jail time. You and your crazy mind say, I, I want to take it to trial. Huh? <laughs> and they end up with a felony and jail time. Are you crazy? Yeah, you crazy. Yeah. Who does that? Nah, ain't nobody doing that. You know. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody doing that, but I, I'm for real. I'm for real. He say Vi actually older than me, so he needed. I ain't older than you, DV. What the fuck? How many drinks you done had over there? I'm a Aldra M. Yo, and I'm going to start calling it the Aldra M when I get ready to block somebody. I'm going to Aldra M. Yo, and. <laughs> DV, chill out now. Cause I was out, I was over at on Ashland when I came back through Chicago. You, you was over there grilling, saying you didn't have enough meat on the grill for nobody but you and Cookie. Oh, what did you say? What did you say? The meat. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I, I, my bad, dog. That was old girl, bro. My bad. I'm fucking up. What I miss? He cheating on me? <laughs> Apparently he is, honey. He ain't got enough lead quarters to give to everybody. <laughs> he ain't got enough lead quarters, baby. He ain't got enough lead quarters. I don't know, honey. I don't know if he want to deal with all of that. He want to deal with all of that type of loving because he ain't got enough lead quarters. Hey, Man, I, was, I was in Chicago. Me and Unk, me and Unk went to Sharks. Got some fish and shit. I told D.V. I'm finna swing through on my way back. I'm gonna come when I come back through Chicago. I'm gonna be like, yeah, man, I'm over here, man. I'm cooking. He all on. He like, man, he had collard. That nigga had. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't eat greens. I don't know if they were collard green. What that motherfucker looked good though. He had green hot water cornbread. Oh, he cooked like a woman. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, he said he could cook. Go ahead on, oh, yeah. You have some hot water hey, and some whole cake. Hey, Angie, the nigga took uh -huh. the top off the grill. That nigga had four pieces of chicken. <laughs> 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 hey, he, he wanted to make sure I knew it was just a personal day. It, it wasn't for the family. <laughs> Just, just for the people that's him. You yeah, yeah. Four pieces of chicken. That nigga had about four brats on there. Uh -uh. <laughs> four burgers. Uh-uh. DV. Uh-uh. DV. Y'all don't go listen. DV. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, gonna, you know. I'm thinking I'm about to stop and get a plate. This nigga say shit. This is all for me. <laughs> oh man, DV, you come putting on on that real quick. Oh lord, we can't. We can't do it, man, y'all ain't gonna play with me. DV, you know I'm gonna put your name out. I'm gonna never TP, I'm don't listen to me. TP. I'm why you say? Why you say I had about four leg quarters? <laughs> He had them cowboy beans on that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but look like the cowboy was on the pig. He had oh that Lord, that, that was a that was a personal meal that day, bro. <laughs> See, it's, 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 all <laughs> just all I heard he just said, did he? No, he told me. <laughs> no, he told me this it's personal, man. I'm like, man, you can't get a happy meal. <laughs> he said I had about four leg quarters on that motherfucker. I had hot water, cornbread, greens, <laughs> cookie. I wouldn't invite you. I don't want to you know. hear you. Ain't, you ain't invited me to cook cook for me yet. <laughs> you did. All the I, junk I, you talk, you ain't never said. Then come on up here and get you a meal. Every time I'm, I, I've been inviting you, baby, but you've been busy for about a month. That one cookie that was over there. No, nah, that wasn't her. See, I told y'all he was cheating <laughs> and left me with the babies. <laughs> left me with the babies. Hey, look, bye. Like me, all you gonna be able to get is love because that's the only thing he can afford. Hell, he can't even afford no more goddamn leg quarters. Listen, listen, I, I, I consider myself a big girl, you know. Hey, uh, look, yeah. hey, look, bye. No, that one. That. That. Hey, bye. No, they want cookie over there. That was my cousin. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I thought hey, 
Hey, hey, hey, hey, hey DZ. What's good? Hey, What's good, girl. J-Rock? What's, What's up, bro? Girl? Was your cousin named Mrs. Jones? <laughs> it was just me and Mrs. Jones, though. That was him and Audrey M over there, motherfucker. I know that's right. That was crazy. But you know what? Next time, but you know, next time, we're going to do it big. Man, I'm, I'm yeah. coming. We're going to do it big this summer. We're going to have a couple weeks. We're going to have to plan something because we're going to do it big. He, you got the plan to get put a, uh, extra, a leg cord on there? <laughs> yes, yes, T.T. Hey, he's going to get the family back. He's going to get the family back. Hey, T.T., I'm going to get with... You need to make sure you get the family pack next time. I am. T.T., I'm going to get with... I got to let him know ahead of time, man. You know what I'm going to do, T.T.? I'm going to get with Uncle Hot... I'm going to get with Uncle Hot Rod, and we're going to do it big. We're going to... I'm telling you, we're going to do it for this 4th of July. And everybody can be invited. We gonna have real tips. We gonna have all the leg quarters. Everybody hey, can want. You gonna have to have a whole other. We, we gonna have. Food hey, food look, food. Bye. Right, you talk room. about you talk about a whole nother grill, like in one whole nother grill. I'm talking about, bro. We gonna, gonna have, have so. It's gonna be so. It's gonna be so grill. many grills out there, bro. You yeah, ain't gonna girl, believe girl. it. It's gonna be. What's it's up, gonna girl? be. It's going to be so many grills out there, bro. Man, you ain't going to believe it. You have a pork grill, a beef grill. A beef grill, all that, bro. It's going And we're going to go live. And we're just going to do it. We're going to show and these people sure. how we do it. And make sure you have a grill with the men that don't want to put, that, that don't put the um the sauce on the meat while it's, while it's cooking. Because I like no. the grill with just the, with well, the seasoning then. on the meat. With the, yeah, with I don't the, like you know, y'all black men love well, Love, TT, I don't like that. Well, you already got your. Like, I don't like those. I don't like eating bar. When I eat barbecue, I like to eat good seasoned barbecue. I don't yeah. like barbecue sauce. Yeah, I like. Well, TT, you already got your nephew for the, you already got your nephew for that, TT, because I do mine without the uh sauce on there. I don't put the sauce on there. Yeah. Cause I let people put their yeah. own sauce on there, cause everybody don't want the sauce on there, no, and like and mine's don't be real. Your, your barbecue good. I had to taste that right. The sauce. Yeah. Now you hey. see me. You know what I mean? You see me. You know what I mean? You grab the barbecue sauce. Sauce on there, and I'm putting and then put it on the grill. I'm like, oh. Uh, hey, you know what? You know what be killing me? You know what be killing me, y'all? Listen, I be hating when people be making a meat too salty right and then they say well hey, we're gonna throw some barbecue sauce on that so that's gonna suck up the no motherfucker you trying to give me right. half love let pressure, me tell yeah, you bro. something right now i'm gonna tell y'all you all i'm gonna let you know this right now this is this is this is something if i if i you cooking and i'm eating your food if you see me grab the barbecue sauce your shit nasty your shit nasty if you see me grab the hot, if you see me grab the hot sauce Oh, you about oh, need to dip it. Okay. It's too much. Yeah, it's too okay. much salt on there. You about need to dip it in some water before you put some goddamn yeah, barbecue sauce on it. No flavor. It you be sure. No flavor. And I bring my own bottle of Louisiana hot sauce with me everywhere I go. Texas mm -hmm. Road, mm -hmm. Applebee, everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna you got your own. I'm gonna refresh with my own uh, Louisiana hot sauce. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> See, but I like all that spicy shit. I can't do all that. I don't man. like it too spicy. I just like the loser and the hot sauce. Man, but I can't. I don't, I don't mess with no hot food, sauce. If the food you know is what? not good, if you know how to cook and season food, then that's yeah. something totally different. Man, I grew up in the house with my grandma, man. She cooked in cast iron skittles. You had to have some good ass food to cook in cast yeah, iron. Yeah, I, I cook. I cook mine like in between, so it don't be salty, and it don't be too less of 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 seasoning. You know what I mean? Because everybody, because I mean, a lot of people. You know, some people you got your family members there, and then some of the people a little older than others, and some people just like you know they don't want high blood. They got high blood pressure, or whatever. You know what I mean? Some young people got high blood pressure, so you can't make stuff like salty like that now. You know, not now these days anyway. So it ain't like that. You know, I cook my shit good, just right. And look, hey, look, TT, Uncle Ra, he be, oh my lord, his shit be so loaded with so much meat, it don't be making no sense. I be like, I be like, uh, oh, I be like, Uncle Ra, I be like, man, you selling some of this food? He be like, yeah, now I will if they want to come and buy it. He be having more meat than sides and shit. I be like, oh, you, you. you 
You ain't got enough size for this. Well, that's they that's their job. They they supposed to make that shit. I'm like, uh oh, man, you <laughs> mm. <laughs> he be he be t -t, he 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 just supplied a he be supplying their meats and he supplied a, and, and the firework and we go to work and we do our thing. I'm telling you, I shit better than they be pair. I promise you. That's cool, honey. Yeah, I'm he telling done, you. He done got all the meat up. Yeah, the Negroes. But but, but it be. But too. T T, we got we got. But like me, I'm a cook too. So I be out there with I be out there with like one or two grills all the time. We been doing this like twenty some years. Man, so you I, have to have two yeah. grills. You can't see yeah. meat on the wall. You show no, me. No, it, it's so. <laughs> but but that it's so many. It's so many, it's so many of us out there with grills. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just like it's just me and him. It's just, you know, me and him just the ones who mess with, with YouTube. You feel me? Everybody else is just family and friends that, you know what I mean? <clears throat> we don't care. We go live, we fuck around. We, you know what I'm saying? No, we we do our thing, you know. It's it be live, it'd be good though. But we, you know, I'm trying to get it together, you know. So everything be ready. You be wild experience, y'all. Yeah. Man, look, I'm, I'm finna, I'm finna exit the, I'm finna exit the stage y'all as though. I know. He ain't like TT. Oh, look, TT is so many times, but I know, I know, Miss Angel might do the late night show. Hey, hey, Bob, yeah. we gonna get you to, we gonna get you to be like, we gonna get you to do like TT sometimes, right? We gonna let you, we gonna be like, go on ahead, Bob, just go on and go to sleep, goddamn it, and lead the live up, and we gonna, we gonna okay. hold it down, we gonna hold it down <laughs> for you, Bob, since we already over here, and we, you know, what I'm saying, and we gonna keep everybody up all night, so everybody can have, y'all can have y'all drinks, you know, if y'all wanna roll up, you know, what I'm saying, whatever you wanna do, you know, y'all wanna go take a nap or whatever, and then come back to the live, you feel? me you can go ahead and do that everything is all good in the hood over why, here why do you want to ghetto up a um, big lives channel and stuff that we do that over there why i'm at them <laughs> no ghetto up this man oh, you know i'm gonna keep it I'm a, you know i'm gonna keep his ass in line over here this like the, the we can keep you your we can keep your live hey, going bro we ain't no live. problem we're over there threatening people lives and stuff <laughs> yeah, 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 we do I we do back. though bye we do bye Look, I come back. Not me, bro. I share the love. Hey, hey, I didn't tell him. I said, you come in here. I got a bullet with your name on it. <laughs> hey, TT. And I'll be like, back. You need to go check it out. I'll be like, go listen. Like, go go back. Go listen. Go check it out. It'd be funny as hell. I wake up. ain't got no but a thousand subscribers. What the hell happened to the other 1,400 people, DV? No. No, it ain't going to be like that, bro. No. I'm telling you, bro. What done happened to my channel, man? <laughs> what done happened? Like, hey, we done got to with everybody on the, on the YouTube streets. Man, you know we'd have been knocking that. What he had? What he had? He got a two. He got a four drink minimum after that fourth one is up. That's a wrap. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. And that's if I go to four. And that's if I go to four, by You already know I ain't doing it. Nothing to do all that on live. Look, y'all stop that shit. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, bye. Man. Thank you so much. I yeah, enjoyed yeah. you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Too, man. Most definitely. Most definitely. Hey, we we gonna get this thing. That we gonna get this thing together. Uh, by and do this shit. Jimmy J. Rock. Yeah. I plan on doing. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm about to. I'm about to go ahead and jump off myself. But like I said, yeah. once again, bye. I had to jump on a little bit. Uh, I know mm -hmm. it's a little later coming through, but but there's a couple of things that you uh you dropped, and I was like, okay, I I gotta address it. <laughs> so that's why I had to jump on, but but uh, appreciate you uh, once again for having me on. Cookie, much love to you, Lex, and you as well, J Rock. God bless. Most up, most up. DV, you know what it is, man. That's right, baby. I'm always here, man. If I ain't here, I'm in the chat. You feel yeah. me? So. Oh, really? And oh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Much love to y'all. Definitely can uh, definitely catch y'all on the next one. Most God bless everybody. And I thank you. All right, All right we gonna go ahead. Yeah, we gonna so, go ahead and drop down because let that do his uh, outro and stuff, y'all. So, yeah, all right, I appreciate it. What up, Lex? What's up, man? I'm gonna get ready to say my little outro as well, man. Uh, I just want to say, if anybody didn't know anybody with no teeth, do not let them eat no buffalo fish because it's gonna be problems. <laughs> get them to the doctor. <laughs> Give some water and some bread. <laughs>
<laughs> Give them some bread. Plenty of bread. <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to get up out of here. I'll catch you on the next one, though, man. All right, man. No problem, man. Thanks for coming, huh? All right. Oh, son. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I want out. It's hard. I need answers, Mama. Robert. I need answers. Son.